let you know that, you lazy bitch. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are officially live. Aaron, fuck your life. Thank you. Let's start there. <laughs> hey, love it's you 12 too. next week. <laughs> All right, you guys, so let's um, get into some things. All right, so Little Nas is now the most streamed male rapper on Spotify, surpassing the baby. He has officially reached. 52 million monthly listeners. That's a lot of fucking people. God damn, a month? Shit. Yes, a month, That's child. That's amazing. That's amazing. And isn't it ironic? First of all, I didn't even know that the baby was number one. Like, the baby passed, he passed Drake to get that spot, and now Little Nas has just passed him. But I'm gagging that the baby was even in the top spot to begin with. Like, that many people listen to that nigga? Wow. You know what? No shade. Even though he has acted a fucking buffoon and a coon. You know, about, you know, the LGBT, about our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Um, Before this, you know, I kind of saw it for him. You know, I first got introduced to him through a motherfucking co-worker that um, I, you know, who I fell out with. And if that motherfucker got hit by a car today, I would not fucking care. Wow. Um, Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, but I I saw it for him. I liked his music. I liked his music videos. And I was like, hmm. Finally, a fucking rapper who don't take himself too seriously. And, and Aaron, why you why you always got sound? Why you always got sound? Why you always got sounds in your background? I'm actually trying to hook up my diffuser. Okay, is that okay with you? I'm just saying. Every time you go live, bitch. Every time you go live, I hear I hear shit coming from your audio. Every time. Normally, it'd be the pots and the pans clicking in the background. But today, I'm like, what the right. fuck? All you got to do is sit. Y'all really, sit. y'all really trying it with me. And I feel I'm, like the odd man. I feel like Cinderella and got some evil stepsisters. Fuck I'm just saying, baby. bitch. Every time we go live, you got. I'm hearing like chips in the back. Like you, you ever hear a bag of chips that crinkle up? That's what I hear from your your your, See, your audio. See, y'all keep fucking correlating this shit to food, and y'all really playing on my motherfucking time. But at do the I same time, though, trap. When we be on, when we be on Bigo, it be sound like you be giving niggas lineups in the bathroom and shit. I'd be like, "What the fuck is going on?" We well, I be in. Well, I have. I, well, I have. An, I have an excuse though. I be in the bathroom with um the air thing on, so th- th- there's sound coming out. What the fuck is Aaron's excuse? He in the living room sitting the fuck down. What's the problem? I told you, Aaron has his own orbital pool. Okay, so it brings a lot of debris that scratches the surfaces her. around I him. I really do hate her. Anyway, we love you. <laughs> anyway, so the. Little Nas, number one. How do you guys feel about that? Go ahead, Aaron. I I'm so 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 happy for Nas. Um, when was the last time a gay rapper ever been number one? Never. Have we ever Never. had a gay Never. rapper? Yeah, this, this is history, bitch. This is history. This is fucking history. I'm so fucking proud of Nas. Um, we need to keep uplifting him and 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 all of his buffoonery and his trollery. Bitch, and it's real entertainment. In his, you know what? No shade. His music is kind of good. So, I'm Girl, gonna bye. Nas and congratulations. That's no the shade, shade of it all. I'm, I'm kind of mad it's him. Like no shade to him, but I hate his music. Right, but I, I think the reason like why it. I think the reason why he's number one is because once again he's controversial. Like the situation around him recently was very controversial. And especially since we're kind of entering into a more pro LGBT era where people are starting to be more accepting and willing to look past that, like they're seeing the wrong shit. And it's just so, it's not even ironic. It's really just. Hey, girl. Hey, cousin. How it's so crazy. The baby was talking all this shit. And here it is a whole homosexual has surpassed him. That's the funny part. That's the gag. It's like, bitch, you said all this shit, and here it is. You have all your shit taken away from you, and then the same people you're talking about are the same ones who are sitting in a spot that you once sat in. Ain't that so funny? But I do agree with mm-hmm. Trap. Like, if he was really number one material, he would have... Well, he was number one for Old Town Road, was he? Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. He, he passed Mariah's record. He passed... Hold on. He passed One Sweet oh, Day. I'm mad, bitch. You know I'm mad as a motherfucker. He passed one sweet day with boys to men with old town fucking road. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? But I also, but I think he also admitted that he's also an industry plant. <coughs> like he's an industry plant. He's like a something that was created for the industry to kind of maneuver and manipulate and 
control and stuff. So and he's I love old. his I love his antics, but the music is trash. I think he's the greatest troll, the internet troll of all time. I love his trolling antics. I do, troll. I do too. I do too. But the music is God I cannot get into his none of his songs. Nah, I like Panini. Panini is catchy for some reason. Yeah, I love Panini. Um wait, I love Rodeo too, the one with Cardi. I love I that song. We know you like panini, bitch, because it sounds like food. I got it. Oh, my God. Such a late-ass bitch. Oh, here we go. Here we go with the bullshit. I agree with Kaza Love. Kaza Love says they love that little Nas is ticking off the other rappers. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, Shake right, the room. Rightfully so. The gays are here. We're here. Like, uh, no, just, despite what the fuck y'all feel about it, we're here, and we're going to tell our own story. So... I'm gonna get used to it. Sorry. And then now, I'm talking, a lot of these niggas in the industry doing gay shit anyway, so it's just time to expose the shit. Everybody First of all, a lot of the niggas, a lot of the niggas in the industry are gay. Let's talk about that. Exactly. Let's, uh, I mean, I for real, the in been the been light, there. bitch. Fuck the dark. Do it in the light. You might like it better. What's up, Scotty? What's going on? Now, here? speaking of rappers, um, Erica Banks, um, delusional, delusional. She says she is the greatest. Story. She says she is the greatest female rapper out now. Girl. Girl. Really? And I'm taller than Aaron. Really? Aaron's 120 pounds. Erica fucking Banks? Like, are we kidding? Like, what is wait, going wait, wait. on? Hold on, hold on. Let me. Oh, wow. What's up now? It's the little Kim, man. I'm not bad. Wow, bitch. <laughs> Erica Banks. Hey, you, Scotty. Bitch. Like, who the fuck are you, bitch? Like, that is true, first of uh, all, Kaza. That is definitely true. First of all, can we just say, can we just give it up to the the female rappers who are doing their thing right now mm -hmm. and, and who are really, like, really putting it all? Because, you know, in the, in the industry, they only give probably one or two bitches some shine. So shout out to Dream Doll, shout out to Nikki, shout out to all the female rappers who are really putting in fucking work. Erica Banks, girl, the industry did not see it for you. The general public did not see it for you because they thought you was trying to fucking come for Megan, trying to down Megan, you and your motherfucking label, all that situation, girl. Like, we didn't see it for you. Soon as Busted hit, that shit transcended on TikTok really did numbers for you, bitch. And then you was doing yourself, putting out every, every you know, here and there. Bitch, and then you had that song with Dream Doll. In my opinion, it's a fucking cold-ass song. I might even go cat. But bitch, you really feeling your motherfucking pussy. You really feeling your clitoris, bitch. You really feeling your patula <laughs> patula, bitch. Yes, for the man You're in really the boat. Yourself. You're really feeling your 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 your, your hard perky nipples, bitch. Uh, like what is wrong with you, bitch? Right. You really think you something special, bitch? You're a country bumpkin, bitch. You are country bumpkin. I can barely understand what the fuck you're saying in your raps. It's cute, but I can barely understand. Don't oh my god! god. Hey, the bitch starts to feel it. I hate when the bitch starts to feel it. Now these you gotta bring that bitch back down the sides. I'm so sorry, but these motherfuckers fucked up my ice mask. You know what I'm saying? I knew something was wrong with it because the beads were missing. And I'm looking at the mask like, these motherfuckers done put a hole at the bottom of the mask. B you, bubs, bubs, bubs. What? See what I'm saying? This is the shit I'm talking about. Bubs, 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 Hold bubs. up. You can't leave shit you at your family. I left, I left my. Bubs. Shut up, Aaron. Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> I left my ice mask. I left my ice mask at my at my family's house in the freezer, and I just got it back. And there's a hole at the bottom of it. I was looking at the mask like, why is the bead missing? Oh my god! Bang, oh my look god. at this. What's the handy so, 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 ladies and gentlemen, wait, can I just say, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I, ladies and gentlemen, wow. this display right here, this display right here. Just emphasize why I call this bitch a late, a very late ass bitch. Cause we're literally doing a topic about a motherfucker <laughs> called Erica Banks. He's talking about a raggedy ass, funky ass, 
motherfucking discounted ass, clear ass, motherfucking ill produced ass ice mask. Can I first of all, bitch, the fuck I said. First of all, bitch. See, you like to bang with a nigga. I'm not banging with your dusty ass tonight, okay? That's what's not going to happen. Okay? And what that was about was I was just about to put the ice mask on my face. And I was like, wait a minute. The bottom part is missing. So anyways, continue dragging Erica Banks. Leave me alone. I said what the fuck I said. You know what? Hey, Rachel. I said what the fuck I said. And Erica... Bitch, you better tread lightly. Don't start the feeling on our motherfucking time. Bitch, That's just stupid. keep rapping. Hold on. Wait, wait. wait. Yuri. Deals. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad. Are you done? I'm sorry. You still you finished or you want me to stop? I'm good. I'm about okay. to fuck up. Well, we can go ahead and pass on her because once again, um, exactly. We don't know what's going on. It's whatever it is. No, but in the comments, Yuri Elder said Lil Nas X is trash. The whole world is laughing at blacks losing. I want to know how is it blacks losing? Wait, who's that? What? Excuse me. In the comment section. Here he go with shit. Can you can you elaborate just a little bit more? Like just bring a little bit more clarity about the blacks losing because little Nick's out. Little what are you talking about? We losing. The blacks is actually winning because we have a gay man at the forefront. No, 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 no. no, no. I just want to hear what his perspective is. Like I just want to understand where he's coming from with that. That's it better be some good shit. You better say some good shit in the comments. No ignorance. <laughs> I mean, if he does, that's okay. I mean, that's why my that's why I'm here. That's all right. <laughs> I'm all, I'm all for. <coughs> Ooh, Bitch, why the fuck I thought this hoe had food in her mouth? There you go, choking. There you go, choking. Well, choking on something. Trying to talk and eat at the same time. Choking on something that's not. Choking on something that's not dead. Aaron, the food ain't going nowhere, bro. Let it. It's all right. Bitch, I'm sparking up, hoe. Oh, Y'all better get out of my face. First of all, speaking of Erica, let's talk. Can we talk about Erica Mena and why Safari and her just won't go away? I don't know yeah. these hoes, so I'm gonna let y'all talk about it. <laughs> I'm about to go in the bathroom. Listen, but... Listen, let me tell these bitches. You know what? I have one thing to say to both of those hoes. Girl, Erica Safari. Dear Erica and Safari, I'm gonna take it back to um the Scorpion show days. Cause I live for them. Dear Erica and Safari Samuels. <laughs> Shut up. Let me tell both of you raggy, washed up, weak ass parents. First of all, we have a psychotic Latina who have like the bitch is the schizophrenia, allegedly. Yes, yeah, schizophrenia. The bitch has ADD. She has all the mental health issues yeah, she in got the ADD. motherfucking world. She loves to motherfucker argue. She loves to get in the bitch mug. She likes to fight. Bitch, with, like, she burned. First of all, can we just say that she literally did a motherfucking Angela Bassett in the motherfucking. Uh, 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 wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, Aaron. I need, I need this. Oh, hold on, Aaron. I need this. I need the jury guy to come up here. Yeah, because he is saying a lot of dumb shit in the comments. No, 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 I'm not here not, for it. Let's, wait, 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 wait. let's not say it's dumb. Bitch, let's not say it's, it's dumb as fuck. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Listen, y'all. Another, a more perfect way to put it is ignorant because once again, this is the situation. Be, and be careful too, because if you show a dick or something, your whole channel getting uh, terminated. Why would you even say that, Bubs? Anyways, uh, uh, I'm just trying to put you on game. You're, you could you could have texted me that, Yuri. Um, uh, uh, please click that link, sir, and come up here because I would love to know what you're talking about. What no, do you mean? No, if that's the case, Yuri, can we get a conversation with the comment section? Exactly. I want to know. I want to know what does he mean by glorifying it to young blacks? Like, what are you talking about? I'm tired. I'm tired of these people saying that the gays are glorifying. We're just being ourselves. Oh, we will have a conversation about. It. That's why I said ignorance, because ignorance means that you don't know. This is an individual, from my opinion, who is just regurgitating facts. But that's okay because you're on the you're on YouTube now with three homosexual men who would love to have the conversation about what really goes on in reference to LGBT. Wait, three? Not what you believe. Wait, three? You said three? No, oh I'm God. Gay, bro. I'm straight, you bro. Straight, straight to the plate. Yeah, straight, straight to the bro. bread. Straight to the calories. Straight to the uh food section, bitch. Straight to the uh motherfucking. Straight uh, to the back of the line, shorty. 
You back have to the be line. Back, back, to the back of the line. Back of the line. Back of the motherfucking line. You have to be enough to get on the ride. To ride this motherfucking ride, bitch. Can you get on the ride, bitch? I can get on the ride. Can you? Can you get on the ride, bitch? I can. Is everyone else safety, bitch? And, and, and compromise because your big whale ass is on the motherfucking thing, bitch. I didn't know whales were allowed to be on fucking rides, bitch. And supposed to be in the, in the... Fuck you, bitch. Yeah. First of all, okay, my, my whole thing is, listen, we, we live in an era now where there's called parental control, okay? That is true. That is true. Your kids... Your kids don't have to have access to regular YouTube. There's there's literally an app called YouTube Kids, okay? And you could call your local um, cable provider, Wi-Fi provider to block out certain content. So I don't understand why y'all saying it's targeted to kids. But if, not- your ki- if your kids are watching explicit content, that's because you're not doing a good job as a parent and you need to do better. Or what it could be, or what you could do is you can teach your children and say, hey, guess what? There are people in the world who are going to be different than your mommy and your daddy or whatever the case may be. Prepare your children for the world. It's not just what happens in your household. That's your household. But once they step outside, they're going to have to go to school with gay kids. They're going to have to interact with gay people. They're going to come across gay people that you didn't even know was gay. So it's like we have to learn to teach tolerance and understanding. That's what it is. And then on top, you can't stop kids from watching shit. Kids gonna do what they want to do. We've all been kids, and we've all done shit that our parents probably do not prefer us to do, but we did it anyway. But at least if you educate your children, so when they make those decisions, they'll have the best informed decision. It's like kids having sex. Like, there are kids and teenagers who are going to have sex. I would rather my child use protection as opposed to keep them shielded from the birds and the bees conversation, and then they end up getting pregnant. Like he really said, he really said the world loves. He, come through, Yuri, he really on. said the world loves stand up blacks like Ali, not bend over blacks like little not. What the fuck do you mean by that? And who the fuck is Ali? No, y'all talking who about the fuck Ali? Ali? Muhammad Ali. Wait, wait, can we just get a hashtag? Who the fuck is Ali? <laughs> right, who the fuck, who the fuck, is, fuck is Ali? He was talking about Muhammad. Uh, is it Muhammad Ali, the, the boxer? That's who he, I think he said who he was talking about. But my thing, it's so funny that he talk about bend over blacks, but if it had not been for Bayard Rustin, who was very, very important in the whole civil rights movement, motherfuckers wouldn't have been able to organize the March on Washington. See, okay, that's why know, I say ignorant. He is not talking, he, he is not talking about Muhammad Ali. Wait, wait, wait hold on, I got a, I got a, I got a great response every for that. Every civilization. I got what a great segue gay... for that. Go ahead, go ahead. Can I have a great segue for that? Um, a party just hit me up and they want me to shake down for money. So I'm going to be a dancer and shake this ass for some cash. Period. Eric, Bitch, you could have texted that in the group chat. What are you chat. talking about? Yeah, that's a group chat thing. Who was Ali? One of the most stand-up blacks in modern history. But my thing is, uh, despite what you feel or not feel, I mean, Lil Nas X is making history too. So all these people are making history. He said, what happened to every gay civilization that was gay, gay's been gay since. Gay's been gay since the beginning of time. There's nothing new under the sun. Like, this whole infatuation with homosexuality as if though it's new, it's always been here. It's just that y'all catching up to it. Because once again, y'all have been conditioned to believe a certain perspective and narrative about LGBT people. And you feel some type of way because now the LGBT people are getting up, taking the pens and the pencils away from you and are writing their history. Ted this Bundy, cloud, hold on, this cloud Ted, said Ted was straight though. Ted, Ted Bundy was made, all right. I'm convinced he's trolling at this I'm, point. I'm, I'm with it. First I'm with of all, the fact because that now, that now he says, so now he says, is now he says girl. Ted Bundy made history. Ted, yeah, but First also all, Ted Bundy was a, a heterosexual. Troll. He was straight. Wait, Ted wait, Bundy was wait, straight. Wait. So what does that say about straight people? What okay, no gays so could make no shit like that? It's y'all doing? niggas doing that. And y'all the ones having gay ass kids. So but, maybe y'all should close but, y'all fucking legs. But stop let's let's go on with the topic. Let's go with the topic because we know that he's clearly a troll. Well, I'm built so for conversations like this. I ain't got no problem. I'm, I don't mind telling hoes the truth. It is what it is. Cause some no, I just learn. don't go back and forth with trolls. Like, you want to have a conversation. Yeah, have a but sometimes you just not gonna you know, troll. You gotta get a hold together. And, you know, if you're gonna be talking dumb shit, you just can't talk dumb shit. Like, all right. Now, speaking of speaking of LGBTQ issues, what do you guys think about the DL pastors? Because kids don't have sex. What in kids? The a lot of kids have sex. Are, do you live in a cave? Um, 
Do you live in a cave with Muhammad and them nigga? Like, is that the Ali you talking okay, about? Okay, like... so how do I feel about the <laughs> DL pastors? Um, can we can you point me in the direction of the DL pastors? Because <laughs> I would Atlanta. love one. I Peace would book. love one. If um I hope that Marvin Sack is Ugh. um available. I hope. Um yeah, who else? Who else? Who else? There's a lot. Oh my god, Don is it that bitch named Donnie? Is it Donnie? Howdy McClurkin? Oh bitch, you got a better chance. You got a better chance getting that nigga. Donnie McClurkin. Who else? Who else? It's a thick, it's a thick, it's another thick black one that I really like. Yuri, Yuri, come up here because you're not making sense in the comments. Yeah, what I'm white. if you're I'm white and your pronouns are master? master are you going to call me Matt? Bang, master. What does that Matt? What does it have to do with anything that we're talking about? Are you still talking to the troll? Yes. <laughs> oh girl, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. Oh, oh, he's white. He's white. Oh, he's a Caucasian. He's a pale bitch. He's a nigga that has a small dick. Oh, I keep so you're 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 pressed by the gay no, niggas so that big ass dicks. Uh uh, we're not gonna no, we're not gonna race shame over here. We love mayonnaise. Bitch, I'm talking about this particular one here. I'm talking about this particular one here. Bitch, I ain't everybody ass, bitch. I know what white people have done. Fuck all that. So <laughs> they give me miracle right, with cheese. The next y'all can get on and lead ever. an ass for a white girl. I'm staying. I'm. I'm gonna be faithful and loyal. Okay. He says you better call me massa, yo. He is playing on our motherfucking time and he's got. He is nervous, <laughs> yeah, the the, 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 the yo yo male. your wife your wife was he's calling us massa, real bitch. Because when the master went out to go get shit, trust me, the the mistress of the house was getting that long thick dick. You know, something you can't give her. You gotta fuck this bitch with your arm, nigga. So I understand. I'm sorry, Wigga. So that's your problem. That's okay. You're intimidated by blacks. It's all right. This you know what? You know what, Bubs? Bubs, I'm happy you said that. Let's talk about that real quick. We can we can, we can get back to the pastor comment, um, the pastor stuff. But yeah. I want to know what is white folks and their fetish with black people like having sex with us? Like that's weird to me. Because because once again, something different. We're we're built differently. We we are raised with long schlongs. Some of us, not all. We cannot be prejudiced. Um, Nobody's and, scared of blacks. Um, are you sure about that? I'm just saying, like White we're like that's what they think of us. They, they think of us as BBC, like we got these long, long schlongs, and we're like animalistic in a way. Like we're really gonna pounce on them and really take them over and take over them and treat them like some pale white trash on the motherfucking floor <laughs> because that's what that's where they belong. Um. Anyway, yeah. So <laughs> trust and believe, I get hit on by a lot of white men on these apps. It's actually getting kind of creepy. And when you do reject them, they call you a fat nigger. And I'm like, you just want a response. You really you want to go take back over your own you. lands. I mean, well, if I, if I was working with the girl, devil, I, I mean, can't. I would take over people's lands too. Why are y'all giving this person so fucking much? Let's go on to the Because, bitch, I'm with it. Look, so bitch, I'm tipsy and I'm with it tonight because, no, Bub's the guy. I like what Kaza Love said. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like what Kaza Love said. Kaza Love said Pornhub did a map of the USA of porn content and found that BBC was the most watched in the South. And I and guarantee also, you, you're and has also in people. the South, that's the most racism. Yeah. The Yuri racist folks black love people. black people. Africa. Yeah, no, y'all ancestors, y'all forefathers was the one who created rape, bitch. Y'all came over and raped. That's what y'all did. Bitch, I'm with it tonight. I'm with it, girl. I usually be quiet. I usually be practicing the peace role. First of all, I'm with it today. Let's Yuri, Yuri, oh, I I'm sent you, you to drink I, some water. Yuri, I sent you the link. Yuri, you're not going to come up because you're scared to come up here because you're scared of black people. So his dick much. Not ours, bitch. Eric, That's I'm about to mute much. you in a second. Okay, because you're carrying. I'm really giving him a lot. Who you mute, Neri? I'm about to. I listen. Me, all me and Bob's are doing is educating a man, okay? Yeah, all we do is educating him. That's all. He's a Something fucking need to be educated. Bro, you don't Aaron, want to be you educated. You go smoke your weed and eat your time. sandwiches and we'll be all right. <laughs> Bitch, I'm going to sign some cookies like a bacon. See, see, bake your cookies. Just don't fall asleep this time. 
Anyway, so back to DL pastors. Aaron, you want a DL pastor? You want a DL pastor? Why? Yes, it's just the 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 fantasy of it all. Like I really want to fuck a pastor. Have a pastor fuck me. Either way it goes, we could do a flip flop set. I feel like he could, you know, whisper Bible scriptures in my motherfucking ear while he's found me from the back, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> or he could, um, motherfucking, you know, while he's on his knees and praying, I hate he him. could be praying on my dick. Like, it's Amen. okay. Like, it's all right. Like, all right, Aaron, Aaron, can, exactly you, right. Aaron can you cam up for me real quick? I really want to see you real quick. Just real quick. We all better cam up, ho. I just want to see you real quick, Aaron. Girl, I just want to look at. I just want to look into your eyes real quick. I gotta tell you something, okay? Girl, I got high eyes right now, bitch. I don't. I just want to look at you. I just want to look at you real quick so I can tell you something, okay? Tell me it now, bitch. No, I want to see you when I tell you it. Okay, I want to see you. No, see me it from right now. We the people want to see you, Aaron. No, no, and I said what I said. Okay, what I want to say to you is, bitch, whatever that extra noise is in the background, bitch, I'm going to need you to get rid of it, bitch. Okay. Thank you. What is that? I don't know, bitch. Figure it out. Hold on. Hold on. Now, Bubs, would you want to, would you date a download pastor or just have a, mm. or, or just have sex with one? Hmm. Uh... I would probably just fuck, honestly. But if it is a down low pastor, like it would have to be a pastor who is single. I can't fuck with no nigga who got a whole family. So I can't do that. Now, if you by yourself and you do your own thing, it's cool. Because some people do practice just, you know, being discreet. Is it off it's now? just a sexual is thing. That's now? all that matters. So yes, it is, and uh, I agree with Yuri. Um, Yuri said, "Aaron, get your mug on here now." Oh, now you agreeing with the colonizer? Okay. Well, that's the one thing that he said that was correct. Listen, <laughs> right is right, right is right, and wrong is wrong. Did you say white? You know right, what? Bitch? I said you right, right. Okay, uh, you know what, Yuri? Do a motherfucking Dre Stills and stick a motherfucking bat up your ass. Who you stick a bat up their ass? What? The girls is nasty. Oh, wow. The no, girls is was, nasty. No, because listen, let me tell you something. I was just telling uh, Trap and Aaron this earlier. Like, I did this interview on Instagram. With this individual gave me more of in-depth stuff about what happens in the gospel industry in reference to like behind the scenes and there's so much homosexual act activity going on to where it's like bitch i'm about to go back to church i'm about to give my life back to jesus again just so i can see what the fuck is happening in the church it's a lot of freaky shit going yeah on. like so, i want to i want to uh, listen i want to get fucked in an altar like i want to do that i want to get fucked and plowed behind the pew mama while dying like bitch, like can we you. just do that like I wanna fuck. First of all, first of all, first of all, Yuri. Wife is listening. If White was right, y'all wouldn't be aging as bad as y'all do. Okay, yeah. let's talk about. Let, let's talk talking about, about George Floyd. Let me put my cock in your. Since you white people love cock, we put my cock in your mother's mouth and get George Floyd her ass, bitch, from the inside out, <laughs> bitch. So and if, black dick, the oh, last and if, guy. And if yeah. White and if White was right, you wouldn't be on an all black YouTube channel talking to black people. Yeah. Exactly, okay. exactly. Because mm -hmm. y'all failed, y'all. You know. Us escaping slavery wasn't part of the plan, so you whole ass niggas fail, girl. That's it. First of all, the fact is, y'all bitches <laughs> admire us. Y'all want us to, y'all want everybody want to be a nigga, but don't want to be a nigga. And that's okay. That's all right. Y'all want our right. talents. Y'all want our goals. Y'all want, want our dick. Y'all want our, y'all want our want DNA. Our you want our attributes. You want our dancing. Want everything about. You want our food. In you want fact, our heritage. You want our hairstyles. White people are very you narcissistic. And the, is, and the fact is, y'all know that y'all can get it and y'all can have access to it and y'all can we get away with it. No, we freed ourselves. Makes it even bitch. more annoying to me. We freed ourselves. Y'all bitches are not original. Y'all bitches are not the makers of the motherfucking culture, bitch. Y'all will forever be reigned. Y'all will forever be number two. Because first bitch, of all, when you think yes, first of all, yes, you, uh, Kaza with Sylvester, exactly. White people, white people are so narcissistic with the whole "we freed you." Well, you wouldn't have had to free anybody if you didn't enslave black people in the first place. Like, free. I right. don't understand. I don't understand y'all. Y'all are weird to me. These okay, these, these are individuals. 
You admire us speaking of this. Use our electricity technology, Rolls, planes, cars, and the Gucci, Louis, Ferrari, Lambo, Bentley, Rolls Royce. Well, let's talk about that real quick. Um, there are. It's the, it's also, ignorance. Let's man. talk about it. Your ancestors. You know one thing that you white people love to do. Y'all love to steal. Talk about us. Y'all love to steal. You stole a lot of things from black people. A lot of modern mm -hmm. inventions that black people have created. See, that's what y'all do. Let me tell you. Everything he said was. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. White heritage is this. This is what y'all do. Y'all rape, steal, and pillage. That's what y'all do. Y'all hoes really don't have no soul. Now, there are some white people who do have souls and understand humanity. The rest of you bitches don't have no souls. You hoes are demons. But that's okay, because guess what? Yo ho you hoes are going to be exercised, because bitch, you're talking all this shit. White people about to become a minority now. So the role is switching. So, bitch, if I was you, I would be sucking all the black dick I could, eating all the black pussy I could, bitch. I would be motherfucking doing all I can to help black people, girl. Because the way that karma and the universe is going to get on y'all white asses, y'all going to be tanning like a motherfucker to escape white shit, bitch. Y'all going to be doing some reverse Michael Jackson shit, girl, to try to escape it, girl. And guess what? Guess who's going to be there watching you hoes while you go through that? Us, bitch. We gonna be on live talking about it, bitch. Making money off it while your bitch ass still in the comments, girl. And you don't even got enough balls, bitch, with that small white shrimp cock. That goddamn Roman noodles ass shrimp cock that you got, girl. You can't even come up on a motherfucking panel and talk to three niggas that you have more power and privilege over. Come show the power and the privilege, bitch. Come do it, girl. Start talking your shit and get up here, girl. If that's what you want to do, bitch. Girl. We here. We here. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on yeah. bitch. We here. Black people here, girl. We moving in your neighborhood, you girl. We, you we girl. Guess what? Your, your little your, your little beautiful daughter, she don't want to be a prom queen. She wants to be Daquan's trap queen, girl. We will have them white bitches in the cook in the kitchen, oh, bitch, cooking it and whipping it up, bitch. Oh, now what? Now what? <laughs> now what? Don't be mad, bitch. You hate us. We taking over your sports, girl. We're taking over your, we're taking over your, your industry, girl. We're taking over everything, bitch. You feel some type of way, girl. You feel some type of way. It's all right. You gonna be good. You're in USA. You got more privilege than me. Oh, you ain't seen shit yet, bitch. Just keep, just keep waiting, girl. Just keep waiting. Y'all got Halle Berry, bitch. Y'all need to be motherfucking getting some talks trying to figure out a fountain of youth to stop aging like milk, bitch. You hoes be aging horrible, girl. Y'all faces be sagging like a mother, sagging more than goddamn Aaron's titties, bitch. Just sagging low as hell. Anyway, so um, Rachel says, would you let the pastor take you on a date in the church van? Hell no. Oh, Perini. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I want you to devour me, bitch. I want you to motherfucking take, baptize me with your nut, bitch. I want you to motherfucking take that same cross that you think that is going to make us delivered, bitch. I want you to hold it to my face and crack me over the skull with it, bitch. And fuck me to ecstasy, bitch. Give me, take me to motherfucking paradise. What did LLJ, LL Cool J say? Take me to paradise, paradise. Bitch, take me to paradise, bitch. I want you to motherfucking, like, bitch, I want you to ya 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 science, ya 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 all that yabba yabba do shit, bitch. I want you to motherfucking sing to me, bitch. I want you, bitch, I want you to motherfucking you want, you want to speak, out of me, speak tongues on it. Yeah, bitch, yeah, speak in tongues, bitch. Like, do that shit, bitch. I am screaming, not not speaking tongues, bitch. Yeah, speaking tongues while you just bobbling on my shit, bitch. Like, oh gosh, I got a fantasy. But wait, can we get into can we get into what Kaza said though? Kaza said there was a singer, um, Sylvester was passed around his church for sexual favors when he was younger. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Who singer. Fuck is Sylvester? It's a gay. Listen, it's a gay bitch, can I tell you, girl? Listen, oh, Sylvester okay. was a gay singer, I think, in the late uh. 70s, early 80s. Oh, whatever. Oh, he died. He's the one he died, right? Of age. Yeah, he passed. He passed. Yeah, he, unfortunately, passed. Yeah, he passed away. From oh, that. I, um, think I, saw, I think I saw a video of him. But that's what I was saying. Like, when he was talking about being passed around the church for sexual favors, like, even in the church now, motherfuckers still doing it. Like, they still fucking with people. Like, Oh, you want to sing on the praise team for this big artist? You got to suck my dick. It's like they be doing shit like that in the church. 
Like, what the fuck? But wait, 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 Bubs, hold on, hold on. We're going ahead of ourselves for it. So, Sylvester, okay. Was he gay before he was passed around, or or did he? Yeah, he was gay. You could obviously tell he was gay. Yes, yes, he was. He was gay, born gay. It's oh, just that wow. he was taken advantage of because once again, you could tell he was gay. So there was more predatory work going on there. What can we do to get? What can we do to get? I'm over religion. No shade, but I'm over religion. I'm over. Talk it. about it. Talk about it. Like the guy I had on my on my interview. I mean, on my IG earlier. Like he's an individual who has been in that sector. Like he still is. He's an independent gospel artist, but he's been around these people. He has told me tonight, like all the shit that's happening. And I told him, I said the only way that things are going to change is if people talk about and address it. There's a YouTuber on YouTube named Larry Reed Live. He's kind of very popular in the in the uh, black church sector where a lot of this shit is going on. He talks a lot about it. Like there needs to be more people like him speaking about these things and exposing it because it's happening very it's happening a lot in religion because it's the last place a lot of people think that would happen. And it's so crazy because like a lot of religious people end up doing the most nastiest, sick, de demonic shit ever because they're being they're given this illusion that they don't do that. I'm separate from everybody else when they're actually doing it. It's crazy. First of all, there is first of all, there is a thing as being born gay, Yuri. Um, I'm an authentic gay person. Like, and what I and what I mean by that was I didn't see any images growing up. You know, there all I saw was straight images, and all I did was straight activities and things of that nature. There was never there was never anything I saw that was gay around me growing yeah. up. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Okay, cool. But that's the thing. Like, th once again, these are these people are ignorant. Yuri's ignorant as fuck. He's spewing his ignorance. That's what ignorant people do. They regurgitate all this dumb shit that they say, but yet they can't even face us on fucking YouTube. They can't even come to fuck up here and have a, a, a real ass conversation. So Aaron, can't back up, bitch. It is what it is. Ain't nobody pressed by no goddamn Yuri, bitch. You're this dick in your mouth, home. But yes, Larry Reed is not scared to talk about it. He's not. Like, he really exposes those things. Like, y'all think gospel industry is just perfect and pure and all this stuff? If you really knew. And then one thing I'm thinking about doing is that um, eventually when these uh, conventions come around, the dude that I interview, he wants me to go with him. I'm going to get a first-hand experience of this shit because, bitch, I'm trying to fuck on some church niggas. I ain't going to hold you because some of the niggas be fine as fuck and I'm pants and they ass be sitting up right. And I know they be sucking dick real good because they be singing real high so their throat be clear. So I really want to try that. That's why you're my motherfucking brother because you motherfucking know, buzz. I'm just no saying, it's like, shade. and then I on top of that, I could probably give like some of the church tea away for TTB. Like, bitch, girl, we, we, first oh, of we all, doing I, wrestling, we doing gospel, we should doing all this shit, girl. I grew up, am I the only one on the panel who grew up in church and went to Bible study and everything? You said bitch, what? I never cared. I never cared. Am I the only one who grew up in church, church and went to I Bible study cared. and everything? No, I did too. I did. I went to no, Bible I, I, was I went to Bible study too, but I never cared for it. I always slept. Right. We love you too, Jalen Pratt. Jalen, thank you. Bitch, take them fucking uh glasses off. Yes, for no, the Mary J. Blige glasses. Yes, for the Mary J. Blige my, glasses. My eyes is so sensitive. Aaron, Aaron, go get a scarf. Go get a scarf. All you gotta do is go get a scarf. And you're gonna have Mary J. Blige. I ain't gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry tease. I wanna see it. Bitch, I don't have a motherfucking it. scarf, bitch. You black and you don't own a scarf. This is black and you own bitch. <laughs> this is this is disrespectful. Oh, not I knew the Kojic was full of gays after Andrew Caldwell, but we don't we don't we don't own. Uh, you know Andrew what? Caldwell. This bitch is such a lady. We don't own bitch. him. That's he does not represent the community. He is a creation from the Kojic Church. That's they bullshit. Don't belong to us. Yuri you're, you're called you Cisco, Aaron. Say what? it again. Yuri called you Cisco in the comments. What the Cisco? Rico called me Cisco. Yuri called you Cisco, the white man. Sure, I'll take it. If he was smart, he would know Cisco would have white hair, platinum blonde hair. But he he's like not a, smart. Oh yeah, Aaron like a fat ass uh blade. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> I love I Aaron, hate brother. brother. Bub's caught a blade. I'm crying now. I can't unsee it. I can't bitch, unsee it. Bitch, I'm sorry. I'm tipsy as hell. So that, that's why the, the other shit coming out. You tipsy? What was you drinking on? No, like from my, I had this kickback on Friday. Me and my sister did a little kickback, bonfire kickback. 
And she made this Long Island. This shit is weak as hell, but I got a big ass cup. And it's my second cup. So a nigga a little bit tipsy and I'm high. So that's why I'm like low key mm. with the shit today. Because normally I wouldn't be with it, but today I have the energy. So it's not a problem. So. All right. What do you guys, what do you guys think about size queens and the L, size and height queens in the LGBTQ community? Aaron? Um. Like if your dick is not a size two. We always need them. We always need them because I'm not a size queen. I I I prefer boyfriend dick, and y'all already know boyfriend dick is like nine and below, like nine, eight, seven. Those those are boyfriend dicks. Um, mediocre dick is like a six and on down. Um, but you know the big dicks I'm not really here oh, for it because. I like my walls. I like my anus, and I like having it not reconstrued, chopped and screwed. You know, flip upside down, break. You know, is I don't want my hole looking like a crash dummy site. Like I don't. Got you. Got you. Like don't have my hole looking like that. So I love the size thing. Get all the big dick that you want. Because <laughs> they will, I, they will they will not. Bitch, near, you know not you want to suck my dick, bitch. Come near suck me. my dick hole. My dick is so good. It tastes no good. Shame. Fuck, bitch. I will never. You want it across them thin ass goddamn Donald Trump supporting white lips, bitch. Them cracked bitches, girl. You want this BBC in your throat hole. It's okay. Y'all got it's to right, pay bitch. You're not the only one. You're not the only one. Got to pay your You're not the only one, baby. It's okay. It's okay. You know you want to suck bubble the God's cock, girl. You can have it. Bitch, it's okay. Not hemorrhoids, girl. Rachel, please. <laughs> damn, damn. Not Rachel, hemorrhoids. Rachel, it is hemorrhoids. And Lil Boosie, you got hemorrhoids. You my friend. Is that my baby, Rachel? No, that's my baby, Rachel. Okay, you back the fuck up. No, when when Rachel ass came through and read that one time, I said, Rachel. Bitch, I know bitch, you could do all that. that you been all sweet and modest. I did not you know so. either. Rachel, I was like, she's like, so oh, sensitive. she's so. She's so, she's so like, it's like, oh, Rachel. Blue on his neck. But bitch, when you I want this I'm cock, like, you, you want this cock in your throat, ho. Yes. So, All right, but but listen, when it comes to the size queens, it's different for every community though, because you know, in the black community, our our our, our sizes are different, you know, compared to the white community. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, the white community, bitch, their average wanna... is five inches. Like, you know. That's average for them. Okay. Average for the black community is like seven. Right. Y'all well, wanna know what my nigga gave to me? I told you blade, didn't I say that? And you and you just almost cut your fucking face off just now. Put it down. This is blade you on the slow button, bitch. He literally gave this to me. As soon as he came in, bitch, I was close like, that up. Going? Close that up. Close so that I up. have I have a story time. Close story that time. up so you cut yourself. This motherfucker, this motherfucker that I had a over here today, this morning we Poppers. both took off today. We both took off today. The Kaza, of poppers and drugs. Here. He came in today, bitch. Don't interrupt me, bitch. Anyway. Well, let me mute you, bitch. <laughs> let me mute you, bitch. Mute it. Anyways, um, responding to Kaza real quick. Um, <laughs> Kaza, um, it's it's. Poppers and drugs is how the adult stars take all that dick. Now back to Aaron's late, tired, dusty, musty, crusty. Aaron's about to about to stab only, about to stab himself in the eye with that motherfucking knife. Ass. Aaron's the only bitch who will use that damn knife to cut some food up with. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. <sighs> late ass bitch. Anyway, you, know, you ain't gonna be late with that knife. Hey man, I was like. He already was like, oh, let me go in the back because that's what he normally do. He'll go back in the room or whatever. I was like, uh-uh. Get in that motherfucking living room because I'm in the living room right now. I said, get in here. Took <laughs> off his motherfucking shirt. Took off his motherfucking pants. Spent him around. Threw him on his motherfucking couch. And fucked him caboodles. Wow. Bitch. And Ew. Oh gosh, it was amazing. I it am disgusted. Amazing. And we just we just cuddled the entire day. We took a shower together. We cuddled, and he gave me this knife. Wait, you guys both fit in the tub together? Amen. Bitch, move along, you weak bitch. <laughs> I'm gagging. We love you, Aaron. 
I love my new blade. I love it. You need to learn how to use it. So anybody in a motherfucking tri-state area of new motherfucking New York or Brooklyn, bitch, come near me. It's your ass, bitch. The bitch, I ain't cutting nobody. I ain't <laughs> shooting, bitch. Cut for what? Well, it's good over where y'all at. It's not good over here, bitch. We get life over here, bitch. We, got bitch, a we shoot left. bang, bang. Bow, 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 bitch. Well, Bubs, how do you feel about the height queen? Because you know you're, you're um, a little bit, really a little bit shorter than most. So how does, how does that affect you in the dating wise? To be honest, it really don't. Because once again, it's about your energy. I done had niggas that was like six one, be trying to get at me. It's about the energy. That's why I talk the shit that I talk and walk in the level of confidence that I do. Because it's like, despite what, see, you might not like me because I'm sure, but that don't mean everybody don't. There's going to be somebody who's going to like it, and all I need is one. I ain't no freak hole like that. So, it, it is yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying, have you ever, have you ever liked somebody like you had a big crush on them? You're like, oh my god, I really want them, and then you start talking to them, and they're like, well, you're too short for me. No. Okay. No. What about you, Aaron? How, what, what, what do you like? Do you like guys taller or shorter than you? Um, it doesn't matter because I'm always the more dominant one. Unless I find somebody who's more dominant than me. Mm -hmm. If somebody is more dominant than me, I automatically become submissive. Mm -hmm. Because I like that aggression. I like that aggression. I love that shit. I love when somebody is more dominant than me. Because I will literally, if you're submissive, I will walk all over you. And I love short dudes. I love tall dudes. Um, both get my attention. I love to look up at a nigga and be like, how you doing, Danny? You know, type shit. Like, you know, like, what's what's going on? You know, blah, blah. And I love when a short nigga just Amen, looks up bitch. at me and be like, how you Now know, you said you, you ain't want hemorrhoids no more. You better Hey, die. daddy, some shit. So it's like, I love either. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I have what never do you gone through that. Like, you're too tall. You're too tall or whatever. Actually, what do you mean you're more... I kind of like tall niggas. Right, but what do you mean you're more dominant? Like, this, describe describe a, a, a normal day in your life in a relationship. How are you more dominant? Hmm. Interesting. Question. I'm more dominant in a sexual type of sense. Hmm. Like when I tell you, like I just described, like oh, this nigga wasn't. First of all, the dude is like twenty times my age. <laughs> so this Did nigga is in his, like fifty. Nigga's in his fifties. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. Um, no shade. He's kind of a cop. Um, kind of a cop. But he, I, he, he's kind of a cop. But Fucking literally, he, was, he. So he literally, every time he'll come here, he'll go straight to my room, and it's like at this time I was like corny. As soon as I got off of work, literally ripped his fucking clothes off. I ripped his clothes off. And bent him over and just fucked him on the couch. Like, was he white? It was like, no. I, first of all, I don't like white guys. Like, no shade. I don't. So like Yuri white wouldn't guys. have a chance. I don't like my meat raw. So no, Yuri wouldn't have a no, chance. No, at me? all. At Damn, all. Yuri, at fuck. All. There was only one. There was only one white guy that I really was attracted to, but I just couldn't go there. But yeah, I like all my niggas tall, black. I like I like them beefy, you know, thickies, you know, thick ass, thick thighs, you know, got a belly. How do you feel about how do you feel about him being a how do you feel about him being a police officer? Um, I live for it because I like that, that shit. I like that kinky shit. If he had his uniform, if he had his uniform, it would have been even better because I would have choked him with his own baton. Amen. Would you let would you let him handcuff you? Hmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I've never been handcuffed before, but that it and girl, if you saw him, girl, if you saw him, you know what I'm saying? I would let that nigga do anything. Mm -mm. What's up with you and older guys? Uh, you're all you're always love, with the 50, 50 always, or I've, Do you I've have daddy? Do you daddy. have daddy issues? Mm -mm. You know, I always said. I think that's the that's the that's the um thought that comes to mind mm -hmm. when a young a very much younger guy is into older dudes, like way older than them. But it's like no, it's just like you love maturity, you love 
somebody who is consistent and know what the fuck they want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they're not into the factory of it all. Like, if we, if we fell out, you don't, I wouldn't want my news on mm -hmm. the fucking internet. Okay. Right. I wouldn't want my business spread all across a fucking America. And have mm -hmm. people look at me a certain way and be like, oh, we know what you did last night. We know what you did last summer. No, that's some faggotry <laughs> shit. They, like, my, the dudes that, that's why I'm kind of glad the dudes that I go for is not into faggotry. That's why a nigga has never said that my pussy is whack. My dick is whack. They would never put that on out there to the world because I mess with like private, private dudes who all about like whatever goes on to the bedroom stays in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So you basically, what me? you're saying is they're not they're they're not saying that your shit is whack publicly, but they saying it privately. Okay, gotcha. Basically, basically. Is it, no, no, no. What I'm saying is. You know, you I know, know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You know, I'm just playing. You know, I, I, I know, know what you mean. But for the people who don't, it's the fact is somebody after like it's a good time before the fallout. But once mm. that fallout happened, it's all kind of your pussy was whack or whatever, whatever. Mm. Your pussy was whack. You you painted me, you knowing damn well <laughs> you know the motherfucking truth. You know this motherfucking bussy was gushier than the bitch. Okay, bitch. Was gushier than motherfucking wet motherfucking too much. release, bitch. It's too much. Bitch, like, it was giving motherfucking, too like, much. Dolphin World. Like, you know, Great Adventures, bitch. Um, yes, Free Willy. What else? Like, motherfucking Shamu. Water World. Like, what is the water? Water something? Yes. Sea World. Sea World. Like sea that, World. Yeah. Yeah, Sea World. Is that it? Sea bitch, World, yeah. it's giving Sea World, girl. It's getting very much Aquafina. Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, dolphin. Yeah. Wait, can we speak about? Can we speak about that though? How, why? How, why do you? Why do y'all call y'all hoes bussy? First of all, I don't call my shit bussy. I call my shit an ass. You just I, called it a bussy. You just I said bussy. No, but that's the that's the term bussy. that I put out there. You know, just because it's a, like a popular thing. But I don't call my for the sake of conversation. I don't call mine that. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I don't yeah, mind. It was like nigga, conversation. If a dude yeah. say "fuck this bush," I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna stop yeah. either. I don't I'm attracted fuck, to feminine but... energy anyway, so it don't really bother mm -hmm. me like that. So it's more so <laughs> it's, it's more so masculine men that I kind of have to work with because I'm usually the more masculine one, so it's different. I just think it's weird, and I feel like it fits into the narrative that gay guys want to be females. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't really like that narrative. Or it could just be the fact that they just honor their femininity. Like that's it. Like a lot of us. What's that got to do? What is? What does that have to do with you having a, a butthole though? What, what? Like you could you could honor you could honor your femininity without calling your butthole a pussy. That's true. In I mean, my opinion, pussy. let people do what the fuck they want. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, if they want to call each other pussy, you're lag You're lagging. You, me, or motherfucking bug. Yeah, I'm lagging. No, you good now. You were yeah. lagging. Yeah, you were lagging. No, you good. But not like um, it has. You know, I mean, there are gay. I mean, there are gay men out there that wear makeup and have beards, and there are gay men that wear feminine clothes out there, and they still accept the fact that they're still men. It's just the fact that the expression happens to be more on the feminine side. So, like me, like people say, well, if you like feminine men, why not go be with women? They're not men. <laughs> it's just that these men happen to express more of a feminine. Submissive. I'm even being rude with that because there's some feminine people who are dominant, but they're they're giving more of a feminine energy that kind of balance things out in my in my sense. So if you want to call the bussy, call the bussy because it's gonna be some niggas who's gonna be deep in that shit. Okay, so that those. Are I like my little diffuser. I kind of like my little diffuser. Yeah, I never got I never got into it. They're like boy pussy. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? I don't like the term boy pussy because it I man pussy <laughs> mussy. Ugh, now that sounds worse. Mussy. You want some of this? That's mussy? a white shit. White shit call they shit a boy pussy. Ew. You already know all about that. He got that. He got that wussy. That oh, white like, okay, that so next topic. Next topic. All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. Hold on. The next topic. Um, the baby has deleted his apology towards the LGBTQ community only one week after he posted it. How do you guys feel about it? 
Um, I don't feel shit. Um, the baby, <laughs> I need you to go. Uh, you know what? What I'm about to say is really like fucked up. Bit sad. But I need you to go back to where the fuck you came from. Cause your career is gonna be very hard. Um, you need to like when you I, bumps go before I really cause I could say something really fucked No, up. you might as well go ahead and say it. Like here's the thing about the baby, like I mean I'm not shocked. Um, again. I could really go say ahead. something fucked up to like where it's going. It's like, death. bitch, you said, like, you said, you said what the fuck like, you said. You said what the like, fuck you said. Yeah, bitch. so it's like, at this point, baby, at this shut point, shut the fuck up. Shut up, at this bitch. Point, just shut the fuck up. The bussy. Shut, shut up. the entire fuck up. The bussy. Because we saw that motherfucking video with mm-hmm. you playing touchy feelies with some niggas. Oh. Can we talk about that? We oh. saw that motherfucking video, you download faggot. So Ooh. let's let's let it be known, the baby. The you're bussy. part of this community as the well. bussy. Yeah, the bussy. And the bussy. you're literally the plus because Ooh. we call the plus. <laughs> you're the plus. You're the plus. You're the plus. That's a you're the motherfucking plus, bitch. And let me tell you, you're a down yeah. low. You're a down low queen. Mm. You live for us. Mm-hmm. You want to fuck us. Yeah, but you also want to talk shit in public yeah. to us, yeah. bitch. You can't take us, and none of you motherfucking gay ass rappers who are not even out yet, bitch. Y'all really, y'all really gonna eat y'all words because when shit comes out on y'all and y'all do that shit in the dirt, there's always that one gay that don't give a fuck, and they're gonna spill your motherfucking tea. Exactly. So I hope you save your motherfucking coins. Anything you have, because bitch, you will no longer work in this motherfucking industry. That are uh, in the music industry alone. Bitch. So you best, bitch. you best be motherfucking safe. Bitch. Your Let me tell you bitch. something. Let me tell you something. For the rest of these niggas who got problems, good gay niggas, day in hell. I'm just gonna assume that y'all gay. I'm just gonna start calling y'all little bussy, the bussy. Y'all won't dick. That's the thing. Like now, y'all mm-hmm. so desperate for dick that y'all calling out for. It. So we gonna give it to you. So at this point, every nigga that got something said is homophobic, bitch. You are my sis, bitch. You are my good Judy, bitch. You all this shit, you know, bitch. You throw ass mm-hmm. back, bitch. You take swallow dick, bitch. All that shit in the baby. You just mad because didn't nobody want a motherfucking sledgehammer. They cocked through them goddamn Steve Harvey horse Cheshire cat teeth you got, bitch. That shark mouth mm-hmm. with them thousand rows of teeth in your mouth. Mouth teeth bigger than your face, bitch. All that type of shit. Girl, fuck these niggas. And I'm Literally. just and I'm just itching. Literally. I'm just itching Literally. for the motherfucking day that a motherfucking homo thug from the That's same it. motherfucking prison or jail Ooh. that little pussy, little pussy, no pussy, bitch, little pussy, little pussy. I'm waiting for a day that one of these homo thugs comes Dude. out. And do a fucking interview and say that he fucked little bussy in the shower because he <laughs> dropped the soap. I am just itching, bitch. I am getting cracked things right now, bitch. I am itching, bitch. I'm just itching for the day that it comes out, bitch, that you got, you got <clears throat> dick down. You got pinned over that motherfucking stool that nasty ass toilet boat and got your motherfucking cut fuck fuck them the hemorrhoids bitch. right on the end bitch yeah just bitch slapped some motherfucking mayo bitch on the dick Listen, and just went the motherfucking this motherfucker said this bitch nigga said, some tiger type cheese, bitch. no listen this nigga said if you have hemorrhoids you have a friend in me now there are two different ways in my opinion that you get hemorrhoids either your ass is pushing too hard or something pushing too hard against you <laughs> Let's take a guess of what the fuck little bussy all them bitch. This girl, if you don't sit your goddamn diabetic raccoon I ass down somewhere, bitch. Mind you, my thing bitch, is I've never, never I've never met his late ass. I've never met a straight guy who was concerned with gay issues. Never Word, straight. Never. They don't give a fuck. And it's so crazy. This is not his first fucking time. This is not his first of course offense. Not. Of course not. It's been so many motherfucking lives. 
on that good motherfucking internet, bitch, of you talking about another mm-hmm. gay. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Gays in general, bitch. Y'all remember when when Lil mm-hmm. Boosie said the whole thing with um Dwayne Wade's Gabriel Union uh trans daughter. And he and his yes. daughter, and they were saying, Oh, don't cut the dick off, don't cut the dick off. Let me tell you why. Cause don't nobody know good dick. Like Boosie, Lil Boosie, no good dick, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Lil Boosie, no good dick, bitch. Little so when Boosie. they was talking about cutting the dick off, he felt hurt. Because he like, why yeah. would you cut off something that <laughs> brings so many people joy? He's speaking from personal experience. This They're ignorant because that, that, like, that person is too young. That person is too young to even have that operation any fucking way. I know, but I'm just talking about the fact that, and I shared this on my Instagram, Lil Boosie don't miss no chance to speak about no dick. He don't miss no chance to speak about dick. Whenever dick is in the conversation about LGBT, that nigga lips is there, bitch. Every single mm. time. If a nigga show up this much at gay events, bitch, just come on in. We'll let you in, girl. We'll let you in for free, bitch. It's your first time. Can we hashtag little bussy in the comments? Lil bussy. The bu- all these rappers are not only going to get bussy added to their name. When you homophobic, little you bussy, bussy at the end. Yeah, bussy. Straight bussy. They're going to say, hey, sis. Straight you, bitch, we know you one of us, girl. Cunt. It's okay. We know a self hating gay when we see one, bitch. It's all right. Bitch, I can, uh, bitch, I can, just, I can just visualize little bussy <laughs> cunt being pounded. Girl, I don't want to see nothing about little bussy getting fucked by nothing, bitch. Get it, motherfucking it's like fucking a mummy. Cloud it's like proud, fucking a horse. I might as well watch the thriller <laughs> if I want to see bussy ass, bitch. Period. Straight fucking skeleton. Just fucking bones. Bitch, damn. <laughs> and you know he don't got no ass, bitch. He look like straight, like straight fucking um from the King of the Hill. He you? like a male ass Hank mama Hill, D, Hank bitch. Hill? He a male bitch, ass mama D. This bitch look like Scar, bitch. Tea, bitch. A trap fuck ass. You star. saying, bitch? My thing is, y'all heard I about what he did. To, y'all, heard, y'all heard what he did to his son, right? Yes, of course. Oh, we saw we, yeah, we definitely yeah. and that's why and I'm and I, this is allegedly, but it's how I feel. That's why I feel like your son is gonna have a little experience with somebody from the from the LGBT plus community. Watch, mm-hmm. watch. Whenever you push your children, push someone away against something so hard like that without really explaining it, you know what happens? That sets up a natural curiosity. What is this? Why do they want me to be away from this so much as opposed to letting children and people grow into who they are because it's their own life experience. And I wouldn't be surprised that on down the road we find some sort of article or something where little Boosie son and had a run in with a gay boy or a trans woman and some shit done popped off. And then you know what's flaws. speaking of getting pounded and things of that nature, Amran Wilds Out TV. I want to hear a story time from you. When was when was the first time you got pounded and what made you want to experience getting fucked in the first place? Like, what made you wake up that day like, let me get some dick? Bitch, let me get my drink for this shit. Uh, wait, a day that made me want to, like, I, I wanted to- Like, your first, your, first your first experience, your first experience getting fucked. What made you want to get fucked in the first place and how was it? Mm. Okay, first of all, my first experience was horrible. Mm. Um, um, a motherfucker. I gave my virginity to a motherfucker at a. Sad to say, I think I did a YouTube video about this on my channel, but I'm gonna talk about it. Um, I booked my virginity at a fucking sex party. Oh wow! Shut and, up! You went to a sex party, you yeah. freaky bitch. Story time. Story time. Yeah. yeah, it was my first time, so it's like I never been to, and I always wanted to go. And when I first. It was actually on one of the apps, and the person that I wanted to go with really, I liked, I liked him. His body. Ooh, okay, was, wait. Let's let's paint the scene. So, how old were you? What were you wearing? Give was it hot outside? What month were we in? Give us the tea, bitch. Oh, this is juicy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I th- maybe it was like in the fall or something. I think I don't know for sure, but we were we were both like I think he was in Queens. I was in Brooklyn. We literally went to this um this popping uh How old were you? Brooklyn. Um I was fresh. I was really, really fresh. I feel like I was like 24, 25. Okay. He was older than me by two. Um, but anyway, um went there and 
like first of all, let's let let's set the scene. I was really into him. So and I was actually scared because there was it was dark. It was really, really dark. You couldn't see people really. And I don't think a lot of people were wearing condoms at that time. There was oh there was some there was some who, who wore condoms, but it was just it was just scary for me. So I and I knew for a fact that I for some reason I didn't want to drink or eat at this party. Cause you don't know what type of shit that people have. But um but yeah. I, he was fucking on somebody and I was jealous and then when he went to mess with me, actually this man taught me how to dish and everything. He mm-hmm. taught me how to dish or whatever. So Wait, you a nasty so, ass man. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. So he was fucking with somebody else at the party and then he saw you and was like, let me teach you how to dish so I can fuck you no, next? No, we went no, we went to the party together. This is a sex party where everybody is like doing each other or whatever. So he's doing somebody else, and then I get jealous because I'm like, damn, we came here together. Why are you fucking on somebody else? You came here with me. Then he fucked with me, and I'm not going to lie. At first, he was doing good. But then um, the second the second time we went, that's when it all went awry. This motherfucker hurt me so bad. It was re- like the worst, worst experience I've had. Mm. Everybody around him that was watching really like egged him on to hurt me even more. And I told him to slow up and everybody was just egging him like, go, 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 go. When mm. I tell you, he hit a motherfucking spot like when I tell you a thousand motherfucking needles back there, like stabbing mm. the fuck out of me. When I tell you, I feel so disrespected. <laughs> Everybody's literally fucking. That's not fucking funny, bitch. That sounds so like everybody's rape, like fucking. Okay, like, it's not like fucking rape, egging him on. Everybody fucking, and I was like, I would kill everybody in here, bitch. Okay, bitch. And I right. literally went to the bathroom to wipe, and bitch, it was just blood. I was like, this motherfucker really hurt me. I literally, at that point, I was so over him. I wanted him to get away from me. I literally left that fucking party. I literally left that party. I, I can't believe, I, I can't over. believe I you let, me. I can't believe you let him fuck you after he fucked somebody else. That's the nasty part for me. And how many people were at that sex party? It was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. But you also got to understand the mindset that Aaron was in when that happened. He's already young. He don't know what's going on. Reference to the whole gay thing. This is something new to him. So, you know, this is a different yeah, experience. You know what I'm saying? This so, nigga was 24. He was old enough not to go. That, that don't mean it's No, it was not. It was. Shit. That don't mean nothing. That, that don't mean it's something totally thing. new. Like, the gay scene this was totally new to me. When I found out there was an actual party that you could have sex at, I was it's already dark. I was like, it's already dark. So what would have happened if Aaron yeah. fought back? Like all them niggas low key wanted that to happen. So he could have low key got gang banged if, if, if he. I'm just fighting. saying, I I wouldn't have went to begin with. No well, that's shit. Yeah, that, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, definitely right. But it's like I'm. You have to understand that I'm always the type like, okay, I'll see what it's like. Even though I never done it before, I never I don't know what the fuck this is, but it sounds intriguing. Let me just go check it out. If I don't like what's going on, I'll leave. Type mm-hmm. shit. But it's like it was like something it was something. What's the word? What's the fucking word? Something, something new and exciting. You want to experiment. Something mysterious that I'd never done before. So it's like it was exciting for me. Exactly. But right, you definitely. The outcome was horrible. It's one of the worst fucking feelings that I would... And it actually made me a better partner to somebody I'm having sex with. Because mm. it literally just made me not want to hurt another person. I want to take my mm. time. It, it, like, that's why, like, anybody I fuck with who's a virgin, because I have fucked virgins before. And the fact is, like, I'll tell them, like, this is your first time. 
let's take it slow. Let me open yeah. you up because I don't want to hurt you because exactly. I felt that pain. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That pain is something so fucking excruciating. It's actually like emotional to talk about because if people don't know, like back there is very sensitive. Mm. So when you fucking it's like pushing a motherfucking mat truck to a motherfucking small ass tunnel, bitch. Like, where the fuck are you going? You're a fucking mat truck. Why are you going to the small ass tunnel? So let me ask what the fuck? So let me ask you this to kind of go deeper into that. And, and this is another question too. How do you guys feel like when you see certain porns where it's these niggas with these big thick ass motherfucking dicks and they just ramming it in the cat or whatever? Like how do I don't feel any I don't feel any type of wax. I already know how porn is set up, so they're fine. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, about, that's okay, why and I also know too. Wait, wait, well, how do you feel about the individuals who are younger and the only I guess source of education in reference to sex is porn? So they think that oh I gotta let a nigga ram me in my shit like that. In order for him to like me, how do y'all feel about that? Every, I don't feel on type of works again. It's not I, that's not how it works, really. But go ahead, Aaron. In my opinion, if it does happen like that, trap, let's just you know, quote unquote, say if it did. Um, it's a learning. It's a learning. Yeah. Now, if I you mean, keep it, it, doing it, happens, it I mean, you it have to find. Me, so. You have to either find a better solution. Or you have to just change your outcome or change mm-hmm. you, you change the scenery, like do something different or something like that. Just learn from mm-hmm. it. It's all about learning and exactly overcoming exactly. some shit. I, feel I, like I don't I don't necessarily I don't, necessary, I don't know I don't necessarily know about that happening during the scenes, but I do know that it does happen when the they turn 18 and they want to go to a porn agency and the directors will take control of them. That's right. that's a different story. No, now, if talking, no, if we're talking about that, we could go, we could go, we could go, we could go into that topic. But if we're talking about actually being on set, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. It's like a it's like a movie set, you know? Right. No, but I was talking about like the people who don't have the they doing porn shit, but it's not a porn studio, like the OnlyFans people, stuff like that. Or even a guy who ends up like another guy and they want to have sex and he wants to make it special. But then because the only thing that they see as far as sexual education that is popular and that is kind of like the it thing now is ramming your shit, doing all the shit, being really some and letting niggas tear your shit up. We see niggas smoking weed, we see which is nothing bad. We see niggas doing poppers and shit like that to relax themselves. To have these experiences that can low-key be damaging because they're not taking their time. It's just, let me ram your shit and see how much dick you can take. But it's like, do you want to continue to take dick for the rest of your life or just for the few years you have while your shit be stretched the fuck out? And it's like, there are younger people who watch this shit and think that, oh, in order for me to get him to like me, I'm going to have to learn how to take this shit. And he already fucking with a nigga who only just want to fuck anyway. And now you let this nigga destroy your whole shit. It's just like... Well, wow. okay. But like Aaron said, like the fact of saying, "Are you okay? Checking in. Are you good? Am I hurting you?" Well, let me open you up first and get you acclimated to the dick, and then after a while, then we can have some fun. It's like, you right, know, right, just right. Rush in. That's like I've heard a lot of bottoms say, "Oh, I just hate when niggas just go in. Like my shit's not a vagina, even though I call it that. That it's not a vagina. It's like niggas got to take their time. I and mean, as an individual who I agree. identify as a top, but I also bottoms because in my first relationship. That I was in, I bought him because I was in love with the nigga. You were a power bottom. No, I was not no bitch. Fuck all that. Hell no. I'd rather go to hell, bitch. Bye. No, but the nigga was working with 10 inches, so I had to take all that shit and the shit. Oh, you power bottom ass bitch. That's 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 like a motherfucking that's a like that's like a motherfucking shrimp on a motherfucking stick of a shish kebab, bitch. But let me take bitch, first of all. You would reference the chef shish kebab ho. But here's the thing though. Like <laughs> after having that experience, it's like now when I do have sex, I know what the bottom be going through because I've had an experience. So it's like now I know how to be able to go with it and make sure that they good. Cause at the end of the day, I'm just trying, I'm not trying to get my nut. I want them to get their nut too. We should right, nut right, to get. that's right. what I want. I don't want to just use you as a masturbatory thing. Like I'm trying to really enjoy the experience with you and I want you to come back again and again and again. <laughs> And I want your shit to feel as tight as I did before when we fucked the other few times. So, okay, awesome. can we can we also have this? Can we also have this topic? Of why is yes, the Rachel. term? Um, how many? How much? How much do you know? 
I want to understand oh, that because I have come to that comment every time on these apps. What do you I mean by that? What do you mean by that? Hey, hey, I shoot. How much okay. do you come? I shoot. Do you hear me, bitch? You get in your eye. Like, I you don't I agree with Bubs. I agree with Bubs. Yes, you get it all. You want this? You sure you want this? Baby, listen. You no, have a whole they say, how many times can you nut or whatever? It's like, how many times can you nut? I'm like, why is that a question? I never understood that. Are you? I don't like, like that. Are question. you asking? Are you asking in 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 the concept of after like how many rounds can you do? Right. That that and also how much do you nut? Like it's like a lot, like a oh, big pool of it or whatever. And it just be weird to me that. I, I've got Rachel, that you know, super so it's it's Dude. Aaron, Aaron, because they Aaron, like because Aaron, they want you, they want you to shower them in nut. That's why they're yeah, asking. Yeah, it's that. like the prize for a lot of them. It's oh my god, I finally got the reward. And then on top of that, I think a lot of people like making niggas nut because that's a form of power. I get to make you nut. I get to make you do that. Like, who doesn't want to be in that shit? Like, if you can make a nigga nut, you are gonna be big headed. You are gonna be like, yeah, nigga, I got you and shit. Like. That's I mean, I remember I made a nigga nut in five seconds. I oh, feel like that was the mother. I said no. I, yeah, I made a nigga. In five I didn't even get my dick wet like, all the oh, way for shit. real. Stop talking about yourself, Aaron. I was, kinda, I was like, <laughs> Stop talking about yourself. oh wow! I was like, I really did my do this. I was like, damn. Mm -mm. He literally he went to, like I was just like, oh wow! I really got that fucking. Mean throw. I got that mean fire not being thrown. No, I got a story time. Listen, not for me, but I, this was a whole experience I had. I have a friend of mine that I'm real cool with. This nigga, ho, I ain't gonna hold you. He be fucking around doing all this shit. We leaving the club or whatever, and he on Jack, and he he see this one nigga, he want to slurp up. So he like, I want you to, cause he, cause I would, I roll him to the club. He would drop me off. So I had to ride with him. So I'm like, nigga, you really about to ride with me in the car? To go get some dick real quick, act like you sleep. So I'm sitting there acting like I'm sleep and shit. The nigga get in the back seat. I'm I'm like, Lord, please don't let this nigga kill us, bitch. Cause I don't know what the fuck going on. Bitch, they go outside, it's like 45 seconds, and he come back and drop him off. He was like, bitch, I'm so mad. My throat game that good. I made a nigga nut in 45 seconds. I'm like, bitch, what are you what? Huh? You hoes enjoy doing that? I mm -mm, that's not good. Mm -mm. We like to set records for ourselves too. Don't let it be a bitch that set records for ourselves. Y'all like niggas under a minute. That feel good. Mm -mm. It's like we're powerful. What do you guys think about the promiscu pr promiscuity? Promisc I can't even Promiscuity. Say the word. Okay, thank you. Within, so within, 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 within our community, like, how do you guys feel about knowing? You know, the STD rates are crazy. Like the gays just don't care. Listen, either we either we're gonna take our own lives or have somebody else take our lives. Good. We're gonna have fun while we're here. No shit. We're gonna have some people. fun while we're here. Yeah. There are some and people that, who say there's nothing look, you can do about it. I didn't come here for a long time. I came here for a good time. But I'll say this though, like mm -hmm. um I mean, at the end of the day, just protect yourself. You have you have met, you know different countermeasures you can take. You can always wear a condom. You can always take prep. There are ways to to keep yourself um, as healthy as you possibly can. Well, a lot of people don't do that. You know, we live in a time now where everybody likes raw. Well, it's I so think, weird I to me. I, know why. I understand. Like... Be... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Bubs. No, go, go ahead, Bubs. No, um. No, um. <laughs> go ahead, bitch. Go ahead. Somebody go, man. bitch. If you say something, bitch, girl. But listen, uh, <laughs> uh, fuck, I literally forgot. Fucking Bob. Bitch, we were talking about we were talking about raw. Why people? Why people like it raw? Why people like it raw? Oh, okay, like it raw. Let me just tell y'all this. Mm -hmm. There was this one person, because you know I'm on an app, I'm on several apps. Hit me up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just it. I'm screaming. Black, with a beard. You're my type. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's this profile. There's this dude that's actually in the motherfucking city. Where his motherfucking, pro in his profile is like, um, he don't have a status on his profile, one of his stats. He don't have his mm -hmm. status. 
He said, you don't see a status? Well, just know this. I like Raw. And he said something whereas, um, do you care about your status? And he just says that it's not that I don't care. It's that I don't give a fuck. That means he don't care. <laughs> he don't okay. give a fuck about his status. He will literally go raw in anybody, and he don't care if that person is STDs, HIV, or nothing. Mm. He's going to have fun. He's going to put it in raw. He don't care. No ask. He he said, "Don't ask no questions. No questions tell or something. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't tell. Don't ask. Don't tell." Period. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing I want to say. Like as far and as he's like, still the not actual, gonna tell you shit, bitch. Um, Even if he that's disgusting. No, but I do want to say this, though, as a, like a disclaimer, like, listen, we're not saying anything negative about people who happen to have STDs or HIV. Um, I've dated individuals who are positive. I will date individuals who are positive. And, like, it's not me a problem too. with me. Like, it's, it, I, I want to get to know you as a person. Like, of course, we're, but sure we still why. have to I'm acknowledge what's going on so that we can take the proper precautions to make sure that you know we can continue this relationship like we've been and grow and evolve and stuff like that or whatever but at the same time i think the reason why um a lot of people want to have raw sex is because i feel like that's the closest way they can have a form of intimacy with somebody it's like imagine being told outside your family members friends religious people all that stuff you're you're abominable you're this you're that you're going to hell you're all this type of shit and it's like, now you telling me that when I have sex, I have to put a condom on? Because I'm going to tell you, like, for real, there is a different sensation and feeling that happens when you have sex without a condom. It's more of an intimate thing because you're, you're actually in the true raw essence. There's nothing protecting you from that. So there's going to be a different experience. And do you know how many fucking relationships and all that shit has been destroyed over a nut? Because of the power of that, especially if it's raw? And it's a <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah, do you see the banner at the bottom? What happened? Bitch, what you can pay for a banner, but y'all can't pay for fucking motherfucking um uh a Zoom, bitch. I'm screaming. <laughs> I see that you see the banner at the bottom, Aaron. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you want these motherfuckers? But anyway, I think we need to continue to have. <laughs> wait, wait, Aaron, Aaron, you said you said you're on several. You said you're on several apps. Do you want me to put the name of your app? Do you want me to put your name on the, at the bottom? Do you want me to put the name at the bottom? Get it off. Get it off now before you get to work. I moved it. I'm screaming, I bitch. I can only imagine God, what the fuck bitch. about to be next, bitch. Ah, I'm screaming. Because, bitch, is this, you know it's nothing. Bitch. Bitch. I got gas money, bitch. I'll have one of my niggas drive up. You gonna use that to cut your Big Macs in half, bitch? Bitch. Yes, I never got a that. Big Mac. I eat it whole, like bitch. Like 10 inches or more. Bitch, what? <laughs> like 10 inches. Bitch, I eat it whole, bitch. <laughs> 10 inches or more on a goddamn sandwich, bitch. Yes, a what? sandwich. Bubs like 10 inches or more. And bubs get plowed by 10 inches, too. Oh, wow. I'm going to let y'all believe that. If that's what y'all want to believe. That's perfectly fine, bitch. <laughs> Tight whole ass. Uh, all right, I'm sorry, but what were you saying? Good. Good. No, no, you good. 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 No, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's a lot deeper than that. Like, we need to have conversations on why people have raw sex. Like, start asking that question: What is it about it, the raw sex that you do? And then on top of that, like, when it comes down to the whole thing with HIV and AIDS, like, we always think of people being promiscuous, which that does happen. But you also have people who have been in committed relationships and they trusted their partner, and their partner was the one who was practicing infidelity and ended up bringing back something that, you know, they now have to be able to live with for the rest of their life, which is not a death sentence anymore, thank God, you know. People mind you, crazy. mind you, bubs, I know two people like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know two scenarios. I know one person who's in a five-year relationship and their partner gave it to them, which is heartbreaking. Mm. This person has never been the same again. Mm. And then and then I know a person who was single, but they were just hoeing around, mm-hmm. and they um they happened to, to catch it through that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, this is why I feel like people need to be more honest. Like, 
if I'm going to hook up with somebody who's a stranger, that stranger needs to just let me know what's up. Like, why, why are you lying for? This is how people get killed. This is how people get killed. But that's why we have to have these conversations about it and destroy the stigma. Because even now, when you think of people who have HIV, a lot of times the negative stereotypes are still they're dirty, they're nasty, they're undesirable. Oh, I don't, I don't want to be with you. I, you know, what I'm saying. And if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. But there are people in the world who are going to want to know who you are and still acknowledge that part of you, but not make that your true identity and still just let, see that as a part of you and accept you for that and educate uh, and, and willing to be educated and stuff. There are people out there like that, but those individuals have to keep continuing to do what they're doing as far as having these real ass conversations about shit and educating people so that people will be willing to just say, hey, you know, I'm positive. And it's like, OK. You know, it is what it is because now we educate it now. We're not ignorant, but there are some people who choose to be. And that's the sad part. Facts. Facts. That's the sad part. That is super sad. I just don't get it. And then you have all these bug chasers out there. So that's a real thing. Yeah. Like there are people out there who literally, like, they have groups where they want to get, um, they want to contract HIV just so they can have uh, housing. They can have all this stuff. The government take care of them. Like, yeah, it's a lot of different things. And that's interesting. Like, I think people should delve deeper into that. Like, why? What is the purpose? What do you want? For, like, knowing all this stuff, what makes you want to um, contract it? it that will be a very interesting conversation to have. Because I'm trying to understand. Well, I know why. Pe people want to, the people I've spoken to, they want to um, get it for the, the benefits that HIV gives you in, in, a, in major cities. Like, you get good housing, you get money, you know, things of that nature. Oh, okay. I got you. And then what would happen? What would have happened? Here's my thing: like the people who 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 think that way. What would have happened if Trump would have got another presidency and they really like dismantled a lot of things in reference to LGBT, which is government funding for people who have HIV and AIDS? I wonder what would happen then if that was taken away from them. That's I don't really know. Interesting. That's we very so motherfucking good. Hey man, we love good. So we love good good over here. What? Bitch, it's giving me. I have I'm, that bitch. I'm so content in my motherfucking. Oh, Every time like, Aaron gets hot, he gets stupid. Yeah. Can't back up, huh? This bitch said I have the get the girl. Yuri, come back. He said you got the best dick ever. Come, and Yuri, <laughs> come trap dick. You know oh my god, I'm so mad. Yo, mind you, buffs. I'm so mad. I didn't think about this when Yuri was up here. I would have put something down at the bottom for his dumb ass. Oh, yeah. He left. You know, it is what it is. We got his ass together. Y'all giving of his... this bitch so much. Mm -mm -mm. Bitch. It's low-key like a little bit fun. I'm actually getting my egotistical side out. I really be trying to keep that. You know what the gag is, bubs? I kind of think that person was black and they were just trolling us just to do it. Of course. That's okay. But, bitch, I'm still going to talk my shit. <laughs> bitch, the fuck? It's so. not even worse. And I said what the fuck I said. All right, so next topic, you guys, Chasing Dallas will be back this September. How do you guys feel? Are you guys excited about it coming back? Did you watch the trailer? Who, who's going to be your favorite, you think? What do you think, Aaron? What's, what's the tea? Oh, so are we going with me first? Yes, bitch. Okay. Um, the trailer... What's up, YB? Preview, that, that promo, whatever that was. Um, it wasn't giving me the pizzazz, the motherfucking cuntiness, <laughs> the um, the uh, dubla oblongata, bitch. It wasn't giving me. It wasn't give. It wasn't giving me. It wasn't giving me cat, 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 pussy, pussy, pussy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't giving me. It was giving me. Whack vagina. It was giving me stale wow. crackers. It was giving me, um, a you know, a hot ass on a hot blazing desert, <laughs> desert <laughs> sun or whatever. Bitch, it was just giving me that. And who I'm, who I am, um, excited for is my baby daddy, my baby father. Um, who's you your know, baby father? Gosh, like I might want to say his name because you know he's just so world renowned. He's everything. And babe, are you still up? You know, just, just like bitch, don't interrupt me, bitch. Can you pass me my beers in the freezer? Bitch. 
Ugh, so unprofessional. Anyway, but just like my girl Tiffany Paulus, New York said, I would be here waiting with open mouth, open legs. I'm just here with open arms, open mouth, open legs. All here for you, daddy. You know who you are. You know what you did. And I'm waiting. All right, anyways, Bubs, how did you feel about the the 54 second trailer? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna, uh, you wanna go? You gonna go? No, I was gonna get something real quick. My bad. Um, to be honest, I mean, it, it didn't really capture my attention to where, for me personally, I'm gonna be like, oh, I have to watch this. This is gonna be amazing. I was kind of like, okay, this is just another gay reality show. Like, what we talking about? The I'm sorry, Buzz. We're talking about the Chasing Dallas trailer right now, which was underwhelming. No shade. Go ahead, Bubs. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Like, I wasn't out. I wasn't moved by it. For me personally, I wasn't moved by it. Like I said, like I saw it as like, okay, another show that's coming out that's gay. Like what what's going what's gonna happen this this season as far as anything good? Oh, I don't think nothing good's gonna happen. It's just gonna be a lot of drama and shade or whatever. So because that's what sells, unfortunately, in the community. So it's it's of, but, Chasing but, Dallas has always been my least favorite franchise out of out of the chasing reality channel so hopefully they bring it because i don't know i'm just i'm just i just think we need a whole new cast like i'm oh i just i just can't with them I'm but sorry. the same cast girl now, every, <laughs> now do you feel like everybody on the cast is worthy of coming back like who do you feel is worthy of coming back for different seasons they shouldn't even be on this season the only person who should listen i like george i think george is hilarious mm-hmm. um trey womack and his wigs are very much needed Mm-hmm. But everybody else can really go. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? No, I do like what is her name? Am I can't Aurora, Aurora Aurora? I can't think of her name right now. But see, that's a problem. I can't really think of her name. But she's um she's a keeper to me. And you know, Reese can stay, but everybody else uh, they, bye. Gotcha. Like just to start fresh. Just, right. Yeah, I'm over it. But hopefully they bring it with season three because season two was pretty cute. Season one, I, I will never watch it again. Damn. Nobody cares for that funky ass, freaky deaky ass, whack ass motherfucking season one. Man. Shit. Season one was trash. Like. That shit was so motherfucking lackluster. It's like bitch is watching a motherfucking paint dry. Bitch, it's watch like it, watching watch a motherfucking fuck. sloth. It's no, it's like motherfucking watching a motherfucking sloth go down the motherfucking street just to get killed. But he don't never get killed yet because he's so motherfucking slow and motherfucking like Aaron boring, being forced dude. to play the Really, game. YB? Really? Y- YB says, Dallas has always been my favorite, but it's the late entire drama that seeps through from previous seasons like Eric James and Trey Womack. Ooh. Mm, see? Mm-hmm. See what I mean? See and bitch, I mean? We go- and then we're going to get a motherfucking, you know we're going to get a motherfucking Trey, uh, Trey Howard versus the motherfucking Dre Simber. And that tire ass motherfucking drama, girl. Girl, we know we don't. Mind you, we have a, we have a, we have a, we have a. Dre Dre Simber will only be featured on one episode, allegedly, and um, we're gonna be talking. Wait, according, wait, according to Dre Simber, how the fuck he's only on one episode when he he started most of the drama. I heard, I heard from a very great source that fucking. December is in half a semester. Yes, but him and but the problem is him and Reese G got into it and Reese went live and said that she's cutting him out. He'll he'll be in either one episode, one scene, one uh, some uh, one uh. something. In other words, we won't be seeing a lot of Dre Sember, and Dre Sember will be giving us the exclusive in September when it drops. So Ooh. we will be we will be interviewing him very soon. Okay, I, I'm, I'm with that because it's like you can't do it. That's the problem that I, I have. Like Drake. this is a business move. Like you're fucking up your business and you're fucking up your show. Because isn't Drake Simba one of the ones that's like the fan favorites? Yeah, he's so, a he's a character. So he's a character. Like, no, now you're but, cutting but out wait, the fan but, favorite from the show because you feel some type of way. But then you over here talking about telling Q to feel some type. Okay, girl, now I get it. Now I get it. All right. What were you saying, Bubs? Uh, keep going. I had to mute Aaron because he was talking over you. What were you saying? No, I'm saying like. 
the fact to him. I gotta remember because I was flowing. Bitch, what I was saying. Oh, um, like that's a that's a a fucking irresponsible thing to do. Unresponsible, irresponsible, whatever the fuck, bitch. It's not right to do to cut somebody up because you have an issue with them when you're actually removing somebody who's on the show a cast favorite that's going to bring views to the show because of how you feel but then have the nerve to sit here and try to give q some advice on stuff when you over here doing some egotistical shit yourself i don't understand it's the hypocrisy for me it's the egotism for me i i don't understand it and that's how a lot of you hoes is gonna fuck your shit up because y'all allowing y'all egos to get in the goddamn way as learning to go ahead and be the bigger person no tino shade and go ahead and work past the situation but if that's what you want to do that's your show it's it's your show and it's your thing baby lead your shit and see what happens first of all bubs you call that nigga a genie let's talk about it i i look i don't look i don't it, i try <laughs> to get, i i mean because I, I, i'd be funny but it's like I try to respect people and try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't come for nobody unless they come for me. But at the same time, it's like these people are creating these shows that are getting power, getting influence. And these are the motherfuckers that we as content creators are going to have to hold accountable because, bitch, whether you want to or not, you are representing the community in reference to the outside fucking world. Regardless whether you want to or not, they're going to see it. So we have to hold them to a higher standard. Now, I'm not going to lie. Lovers and Friends, I like what Lovers and Friends is doing because it's giving us something different. It's not, yes, giving us the, dr the drama and the shade, but it's also very reminiscent to me of like Flavor of Love where it's like you have these challenges too. You add different dynamics to it too to make it interesting. It ain't just fighting and shit all the goddamn time. Like, Wait, y'all love y'all love Lovers and Friends? Y'all so phony on this fucking panel. I told y'all hoes to watch Lovers and Friends and y'all was like... Not another gay show. I don't want to watch another gay show. No, I, no, but once again, I can stand corrected because Markel reached out to me and he said, I want you to watch my show. And I gave it a chance and I actually liked it. Now, that was me being ignorant on my end, but now I'm not. Now, I like the show and I, re I reviewed the three episodes and stuff. So it's like I can stand accountable and say I said some shit and I changed my mind. That's not a problem. But I'm glad because with that being part of the Chasing Reality brand, like that's showing that's showing some creativity there. Like, it's not the same method. It's not the same formula. It's not remixed, rewashed. Like, bitch, smoke some weed, girl. Get you some good indica, girl. Get around your good Judy's, bitch, that are very creative, girl. And while y'all throwing weed and shade, bitch, come up with a new concept. Why be? Get your and ass up here. And refreshing. You say what? No, I'm telling YB to get his ass up here if he wants oh, to. Oh, yeah, come on, YB, yeah. Get your ass up here, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, give us something different. And I feel like Markel and them gave us something different, and I appreciate that. But Reese G, it's like, bro, we're going to hold you to a higher standard. Like, you have your own platform. We're doing these things. And on top of that, you're going to have you gonna have to deal with this stuff. That's what, that what comes with it. It's about how you handle the situation. But that's why I say people need to heal and learn to love them themselves because you will turn around and fuck up your own blessing, girl, when people are trying to help you. Oh, so Bubs, Bubs, would you ever be on a show like Lovers and Friends? Uh, No, I don't I don't really do dating shows. Um, where I am in my life, like I am dating, but at the same time, it's kind of, I'm not pressed for a relationship. I don't need to look for love. I'm finally letting love find me. So it's like I'm focused on other areas in my life. Now, as far as hosting some shit, or editing some shit, most definitely. But being a part of the show, no, nah, I'm good. Hey, YB. Hey, YB. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? Good. How you doing? I'm good. Y'all up hey, late, y'all. Yes, he's the whole hour with me. You know, we Let me good. tell you something. Huh? The freaks <laughs> come mad at night, honey. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I wish I had a freak now to swallow right now. Aaron. Hold on now. Aaron. Don't so, um, the podcast. They just got on, bitch. Um, YB, um, um, Isaac Monty wants you to elaborate. It says he will love you too. Please elaborate. Ooh. Oh, honey, for you know, we did an uh, interview at Reese G, and he lay he released a whole bunch of uh, tea about um his experience with Eric James, and uh, you know, they say she's a ho 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 ho, honey, and she likes to feel her way around. You remember what they said about the retreat as well? They said that she was a ho, 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 trying to sleep around with the girls and trying to entice the girls with her candles, honey. Uh, um, <laughs> that's what they say, honey, okay? They say she's a for everybody type of girl, and that's why you can't trust her. Right, didn't they sleep with each other on a bus or some shit like that? Somebody on a bus. Somebody in the cast. Somebody in these, these, chasing, these chasing the streets that had a thingy on a bus. I didn't hear about that. I heard, I know from the interview with Reese, I know he stayed at a hotel that Air James worked at. 
And he stated that um, that's how he was introduced to him. And then Eric tried to stay mm. in the room with him. But um, Reese said he had company coming already, child. And he couldn't entertain Miss Eric James and her candles. So that happened. And then while on the retreat, they say that she was trying to, you know, give her candles to everybody and not just her candles, if you know what I mean. Wow. Mm. Now, why, now, why, B, before you got here, we were talking about size and height queens in the LGBTQ community. How do you feel about size queens and height queens? Um, I'm a size queen. You have to have something for me to work with. I can't work with things that come out of bubblegum machines that just don't work for Dreaming. me. <laughs> I can't deal with it. Um, at least seven or better and, pl- and must have width because, bitch, I've had a pointy long dick before and then bitches hurt. Mm-hmm. I, I need something with some with some girth to her. Um, height, I don't really care. I, I'm a six, I'm six foot one. So wow. I actually attract a lot of short dudes, but I also like mm-hmm. tall dudes. I don't really care as long as you're proportionate. Don't mm-hmm. be walking around here with the body like an abominable snowman, bitch. Okay. <laughs> you have to have proportions to you. You can't have skinny ass. You know, chicken legs, honey, and your whole big ass body, even for muscular dudes. I don't like top muscular dudes with skinny ass chicken legs. It's just not going to work, girl. Or not foraging in the fields for corn. <laughs> <laughs> and trap me messy as fuck, B. Why am I messy? He's you, a, see, he has, you see the banner, uh, YB? What does it say? YB is a size. I mean, <laughs> seven or like some people would say nine or better, but I do seven because I believe like seven is like husband dick. Because I'm not going to be trying to take 12 inches every fucking day with your motherfucking ass. That means I have to do a deep dive dush, and we don't have time for that. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're not out here trying to explore marine life, child. We don't have time for that. But you know, YB, I'm glad you're up here because, you know, I, I know you talk about your sexual experiences a lot and stuff, so I want to get into that, okay? Right, yeah, I'm That's fine. Get okay, what, what, how old were you when you first munched? 11. Okay, now and it was with somebody older, correct? They yeah. were like wait, they were like eighteen or something. I'm trying to remember. Uh-huh. This. Yeah, he kind of coerced me, but I ended up liking it. Tastes just like candy. <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, his words were, "Do it like you were a lollipop," because that's what I was eating when I was walking down the street, mm-hmm. making my way downtown. And hell of God. Um, I was walking in my neighborhood when I was a little boy, walking down the street. I was I love suckers. That's probably why I have a gap in my tooth now. The little put things in my mouth. Hello, and he was like, "Oh, hey, you know, come over here." Basically, coerced me. Looking back, he probably was a predator to child, but he didn't hurt me, and I ended up liking what I liked. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, now, after, now from that day moving forward, did you automatically say to yourself, "Okay, I'm the I'm the submissive one now. Now I'm the bottom." If if you are even a bottom, you know, I don't know if you are. Like, I sure know. am. Power, bottom, hell of God. Um, <laughs> I was the Power Ranger that didn't get casted because they said I was too freaky. Oh, amen. Um, <laughs> so, you, so you got the Iva O's. Okay. Uh huh. You know, go, 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 go slutty Ranger. Hey, I like that. <laughs> yes, honey. My pose was the little Kim pose. She stole that from me. Let's get the bussy on the remix. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you. Um, actually, looking back on it, there was other traumas that actually made me into the submissive person that I was when I was younger that I didn't realize took its hold in the, my whole sexual life, if that makes sense. You don't realize it in the moments, but when you become older, you go to looking back and you're like, okay, you know, I was abused and things like that. So I think that submissive kind of like took on because of that. But it's something that I do like, though. But my Capricorn nature won't let me be completely submissive, child. Would you say you're a sex addict or you're just a freak? I'm not going to say I'm a sex addict. I enjoy the pleasures of sex. People don't understand that there's a lot of healing properties to sexual pleasure. Yes. So, like, if you embrace that, and I'm not talking about, like, being hoes or anything like that. But if you have a partner or someone or someone's, hello, God, plural, that bitch, um, (laughs) it can be enjoyable. Stop putting restraints on yourself. We forget that that's the whole reason for our creation any goddamn way. They say, set forth and multiply, girl. Plant that seed, hello, God. They didn't say where to put it. Amen. (laughs) Just make sure it's planted, girl. And to do it with intention and purpose. 
Mm-hmm. And listen, don't have sex just to have sex. Do it for pleasure. For, yeah, and this face is just not made for uh, motherfucking exfoliation and motherfucking facial cleanser, bitch. I do love a nut motherfucking face, bitch. Let's Girl, you nasty. Uh, you better not stop letting boys know your face. I fuck- I do love it. You know, do you know, know how nasty it. these men are they nowadays? All their whole lifestyle is fucking hot Cheetos and dirty Sprite, child. That's mind you, what Damn. goes in, what goes in has to come out. That's why I don't do sweaty well, ass niggas. Let's just say that toxins. I don't fuck with. I don't. I don't fuck with those bitches that likes hot Cheetos. I don't fuck with those hoes. Now what? Now what if there's a nigga that like eat his fruits? Like he he on his pineapples. He's I'm like, good. I don't like nothing shit. on my face. I, one true. nigga shot something in my eye one time, bitch, and I was blind for half a day. Oh hell no! no. That shit was that was the worst <laughs> pain ever, honey. <laughs> Bitch, when I tell you, I almost choked the life out of that bitch. Cause don't do that to me. <laughs> you will not be nutty. Half an eye for half a day. So let me ask you this, YB: How do you feel about dudes that just they just ram it in your cat? They don't try to work with you. They don't try to open you up. They just take this shit. They like they just going in. How do you feel about that? That happened to me once, and I considered it to be rare. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you have to understand, this is booty hole, not pussy hole, bitch. Right. We are a little bit more tighter, so you have to work it slowly, honey. Mm-hmm. Take your time and work it slowly, because I'm the type of girl that needs the type of guy that can make it last. And if your pleasure is for both, it's not for one. Exactly. If you're a selfish, greedy bitch, and I'm not getting mine, then how can you say that you did something? Mm-hmm. Laying down the pipe means you laid it down where it was pleasurable for both parties involved. Exactly. So, do you consider your, do you, do you consider yourself to have a bussy or or what do you call it? Child, I call, I, you know, I, I use the I don't really use the word bussy because it's too in tandem with pussy. And I think when we use the word pussy, yes, we like to celebrate that because you know niggas love saying that shit. But I think it's just a secret way for niggas to cover up the fact that they're fucking actual booty hole. So mm. I call it booty hole. People say my terminology for booty hole is too vulgar, but it's like, girl, that's what it is. I mean, <laughs> you know, no, booty listen, hole in the motherfucking bedroom, I'd be like, yo, yo, kill his ass, yo, kill his yeah, ass. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah that's, that's what it is. Like, like ass. Yeah, like, that's what it is. It's ass. It ain't pussy. It's thank God. That's just a way for you to cover it up. It, hallelujah, shake uh, drop it low for Jesus. Amen. Let me say that real quick. <laughs> See, I'm trying to get a nigga from the Bronx to come over tomorrow so I can sit on it because that nigga dick is fat as fuck. Ew. Ew. Yeah, I'm, even with that too, I'm tired of being in the bottom too, though. I enjoy it and I feel like a real, you know, WMAN or whatever, bitch. But like, I'm tired of that shit too. Like, dushing is for the birds, honey. Like, Ooh, I'm Isaac, Isaac, <laughs> Isaac wants to know. Isaac wants to know, YP. So, if sex is about expression, what's the difference between you living your sexual truth and what Eric apparently does? Asking as a friend and much love from South Africa. Come on, South Africa. What's up, South Africa? I got a lot of followers in South Africa. Shout out, honey. I'm also Nigerian, so hello, God. Oh, wow. Um, I just found that out. Thank God for my heritage DNA, honey. Amen. Um, I don't know my father. I love a Nigerian. They I had one fuck me one time. What's up, oh Russell? God. That's I the individual I had the with. conversation with about uh the church. I fell thing, in man. love with. Bitch, I'm trying to really Oh, that's God. Russell. Hey, hey Russell. Russell. Yes, yeah. he he let me into some shit. I'm like, oh. bitch, at this point, I'm going to the next Koji convention, bitch. Okay. Cause I want I heard Koji ass is good and I want to see all about it. I want to see what all these people are talking about. Well, you know, hypocrisy, there's a there's a lovely pleasure in hypocrisy. So oh, that's yeah, why it's that's I, why I it's so good. A little piece of it before I die on my bucket list. Those um, you know, but I want to answer that person's question. The yeah. only difference is I admit my shit. <laughs> Hello God. And also, too, I'm not the one that's on a platform such as that. You got to conduct yourself accordingly, honey, because especially in the community, you'll be read for filth. And especially if you don't own your stuff. Mm. She don't own her stuff. Other people (laughs) exploited her tea. She didn't do it herself. Rule number one of this life, don't allow no one else to spray you with your own shit. Like, come on. You yeah. always beat them hoes to the motherfucking punch. Because I, I would, love you I too. Would fucking, I would fucking dare a bitch steal my motherfucking teeth before I get you. 
Bitch, it's my tea. The fuck? And then on top of that, it's just about being accountable. Like, when you think about, like, chasing um, the last season we just had. Um, that's why people loved Hershey and stuff, because Hershey was able to walk in his truth and be able to say, whatever read you hold, he's against me. It's like, okay, bitch, I've heard it before. Do you have anything new now? So when you expose yourself and you walk in your truth, can't nobody say shit about you because it's already out. So where's the power? You take that power back. When you hold your head up, held, 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 holding your head up high in the midst of all of the troubles, exactly. you're good to go. <clears throat> Period. They and have you know nothing left. Say, I live for a negative comment. I love for it. I think I get off on it. I'm what? <laughs> I get off. I get off on negative comments about myself. I don't give a negative like, negative comments. I don't. You know, I'm. I, I'm with it. I feel like everybody has an opinion, whether it be positive or negative. I wait. So you want, wait. So hold on. You want somebody to? So you want somebody to be fucking you and be like you fat, dirty bitch. Like that's what you want. Call me all that. <laughs> Call me all that shit. I live Thank you, it. baby. What you say, Ian? Thank you, baby. <laughs> Thank you, baby. No, I had Thank one you, baby. dude. Uh, many moons ago, when I was a young queen, honey, he he used to love to use the word faggot all the time, mm. and he was like, "Yeah, you fuck." I'm like, "Hold," and then I had to quit. I said, like, "Hold on, girl, this is not pleasurable no more. This is supposed to be like nice. You're being a mean homophobic <laughs> bitch right now while you're in the fucking booty hole." Okay, <laughs> like that's not cute, honey. Like, mm-mm. but listen, when you when your shit is that damn good, it be calling out people real spirits, not this fake shit. The real shit be coming out. Okay. And I'm not really I into verbal. Do. Me either. Me I'm not you don't shut like the fuck verbal. up. And hand, handle the business, honey. You're not here to talk to me. Like this isn't a fucking workshop. Exactly. Like, you don't want me to no talking. It's gonna be a lot of breathing. Like, hello. Room, no, no you don't talking. like Put some music on. Let them hold sing in the background, dude. bitch. Honey, one I time I had to do. Because I had to do like, fold wanna... me up like a pretzel on my damn little ass love chair a long time ago. I couldn't barely breathe. I almost died, and we didn't say shit. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you guys like you guys you guys like quiet intimacy? I'm I'm into it all, honey. I'm a, I'm just like pop smoke. I'm a slut. YB. I'm a I slut. Get me lit, huh? I love no, that quiet shit is whack. YB. That quiet shit is trash. Why be got me crying, bro? <laughs> I be <laughs> so but I loved it though. Honey, so we can it, we it. can like get the I like rough talk, but I don't need a full on conversation. You got some niggas mm-hmm. that are like oh that are like describing shit. Like girl, where this is not where's Waldo, bitch. Let's <laughs> handle this. Like <laughs> this is <laughs> we don't You're need the common Sandy. Where's common San Diego, bitch? Like yeah, no man. Damn. Oh, you said no silence. Exactly. That's why the music is playing. <laughs> Play the music, and plus, there's a trick about music. If you play music, you can time how 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 long your nigga lasts. If you can get me through three or four songs, you're a keeper. Mm. But bitch, if you get me through two, and the average song is between three to five minutes, depending on who you're listening to, amen. Yeah, and let me tell you something, especially when my ass be high and them vibrations be hitting, I be like, bitch, don't Ooh. let that hoe be saying the right fucking words, because bitch, I'm gonna reenact all the shit this nigga be saying. So is he ready? Hello. You know what? I love I love playing music and fucking riding the motherfucking beat. Like I start like if they play motherfucking Monica, bitch, I, my dick is going with Monica. Oh, but you know what's crazy? You know, know what's crazy for me though? I can't. I love music so much that I can't do it with music on because I'm gonna be so focused on this. I'm gonna start singing a song. Like I'm not gonna be like. I did that with the Mariah Carey song a long time ago, child. That's what I'm I, saying. I, I, I took you light came on, honey, and I was like, nah, nah, nah. Ooh, ooh, we. I was like, girl, get the fuck out of this pussy. Let me let me sing my song, honey. Girl. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not gonna work for me. It's not gonna work. <laughs> Unless you're doing it so good to where you got a motherfucker breathing that they <laughs> like Sierra on stage trying to sing and dance at the same time and give the song a new meaning that when nigga hear the song, you be like, that's my baby. Can oh like Destiny's child, can you keep up? Play the ball and then this my back. And I like the fact that what That's why you don't earlier. never listen to poppy shit. You gotta put on that smooth arm. Oh hell yeah. Hell the fuck. Like, you know what? I think smooth. I think I could do it. I think I could do it if I listen to like jazz sounds, like uh, like something with no words to it. But if there's words to it, I'm gonna sing along. So if you so I would song. suggest if you're doing that, you want to listen to something known as lo-fi music. Lo-fi music is amazing. You can read to it, smoke to it, talk to it, fuck to it. It's it's so amazing. Like it's so much that you can can do with that, so I'll probably suggest that because don't do no damn jazz. Because, bitch, if, if you're heavily enamored, in, shit, I'm gonna get soft. 
I'm sorry. If you're heavily enamored in the experience of sex, the music, you won't even, I don't even hear the lyrics. I hear mm. the beat. And I really do music because I want the moment to be right. Because silent stuff is cute, but that see, beat, you'll notice a difference in your top. See, Russell was me. See, I've actually sang a whole song. That's what I'm saying. I would be fucking and singing the whole entire time. But y'all sing like like singing along with the motherfucking track, bitch. You supposed to be focused on the pussy. All I got to say is don't let Mariah come on because I will sing it. That's what I'm just, saying. Yeah. If Mariah comes on, that's okay. Well, okay, well, let me tell you just something. Just as the next lamb. Well, I'll just say this. Know. Whenever Mariah come on, that means bitch, it's time to wrap it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do my thing while you sing. No, that's fine. Because that's I very rare. I don't even really play Mariah yes. unless you're someone who is like my nigga. Mm. But you know what I'm saying? Because if Mariah comes on and that we belong together hits, bitch. You're my man. Hey, well, you know? you know what? You know what? We have three lambs up here. So let's have a quick Mariah discussion real quick, okay? Oh, so yes. when did you, when Aaron and YB, when did you guys, I don't know if Bubs is a Mariah stamp, but I know you guys are. Um, when did you guys first fall in love with her? When I heard, um, oh, um, my baby. The um ooh, I give my all when I heard that song. I had a lot of trauma growing up as a kid, and her me voice too. would be the only one that be able to put me to sleep. So I used to play that album nonstop to help me get to sleep. And it's just something about ooh, honey, I'm getting tingles because Mariah just does it to me, honey. She yes. sends, she transcends my physical body and makes me feel like everything is okay. So I give my all probably my all was when I first heard that track, I was like, oh yeah, bitch, this is my bitch for life. And you know what, YB, I'm a piggyback on that. Well, the first song I ever heard was Always Be My Baby. I was mm. like, but um, let's piggyback off that Butterfly album. Close my eyes. Wait, first of all, I didn't, I, first of all, bitch, close I my didn't eyes, bitch. Day. Hold on, bitch. Close my eyes. Close my eyes really helped me as a child. Like you know, still I feel like a child as I look at as I look at the moon. Maybe I grew up a little too soon. You know what I'm saying? Those lyrics. Right. But go ahead, Aaron. I'm sorry. Late bitch. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway. I'm screaming. But um, I fell in love first. Fell in love with Mariah is when I heard the song Fantasy. But when I truly, truly appreciated her fucking voice as a total. When um, I think is uh, with her and boys the men, with her and boys the men. In one sweet day. In one sweet day, and she <laughs> fucking rode those motherfucking vocals. That vocal was everything. I think I shed a tear. I shed a quite a few tears at her voice. Um, and I'm you know what? And this is gonna be bad because y'all probably gonna like like kick me out of the motherfucking fandom. But I never truly listened from top to bottom the Butterfly album. You stupid two bitch. Years ago, until two years ago, because you know a lot of people was a lot of people was coming out, and I never really listened to that Butterfly album from top to bottom. And as of recently, and when I tell you, Baby Doll. Baby doll, Ooh. and whenever I call, uh, those two songs. Yes, honey. Those two songs can be on replay every single fucking day of the week. Baby doll is my positive. shit. Yeah. Baby doll, and whenever I call, is one of two of the biggest, biggest vocal stylings on that fucking album. Too. Missy Elliott put her foot in baby doll. Oh. Okay. Baby Doll is one of the best, best vocal stylists. Whenever I call, those two songs, I, I, and then Breakdown, Breakdown, her, 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 um, what's the yes, thing? The her thing. Yes, her thesis and the way she puts words together and the lyrics and everything. And I'm like, Mariah, your no, her thesis, game girl. is unmatched, <laughs> bitch. Have you guys seen her live? I've never had the never pleasure of watching her. In oh live. my oh. god, I've seen her live three times, and I was there. I was there the night before in Madison Square Garden on her Christmas tour. The night before, um, she got the nineteenth number one. 
When I tell you, it was so magical because we all knew she was getting the nineteenth. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It was so magical that night. There's nothing like seeing her live because the YouTube. I'm gonna be honest with you. The YouTube clips don't do nothing. They don't do. They don't do justice. Now, for my what was it? Twenty eighth birthday. I forget. It was a. It was a while ago when I was staying in Atlanta. She was actually coming down uh, to do go to the Fox Theater to do it on my actual birthday, and I was gonna go. But first, her tickets were expensive as fuck. And I was like, oh, girl, no, man, Pam. And um, she, I'm glad I didn't go because they said she was two hours late, child, and she's swinging on this swing. And it was just a lot. And I was like, mm. that was at the time when Mariah really had a lot going on. And she was late a lot of times to a lot of her shows and really wasn't putting on the best performances. So, Oh, she was good with me, child. I went on a caution tour and the Christmas tour. And then I saw, I saw the first time I ever saw her was free. I saw her for free. And um, good morning, um, good morning, America. Ooh. Aaron, I'm surprised you haven't met her, Aaron, because I, you know, and you live in New York. You live in New York, bitch. You need to take advantage. You need to take advantage of the New York opportunities that come to you, Aaron. Girl, you damn right. You better. Like, they had a whole. They had a whole Mariah. They had a whole Mariah pop up shop in New York for like two weeks. Let me tell you something. I will be popping that shop every that. fucking day. She came through and she signed my CD. You know what? I, I, just, I just bought a Mariah shirt. I just bought this Mariah shirt on Instagram. It was fucking advertised on Instagram. And I just love the advertisement. And I literally bought it because it had Mariah fucking on it. Maybe I should post it to YouTube. I, I got the whole it. I got the whole experience in my phone. It was really it was the pop-up shop was nice. She had her um her rainbow bed, all her dresses were there. It was really nice. Oh, I would love to meet yeah, her. Just to, I, I, not just to meet yeah. her, but I would love to sit down and have a conversation with her. Like, not even my what, interview team, that would be a blessing, but mm -hmm. just to talk with her. Because that Make It Happen song and a bunch of other things that she talks about, even in her book, it's just interesting to see someone literally from nothing become everything to everyone. That and to surpass even your own. Oh, I'm getting tingles, girl. Oh, child, why y'all do this to me? Uh, just to see like that that is my life you know what i mean like to fact, bear witness to greatness be birth from nothing mm -hmm. i love it again mm. and the fact that some of our faiths is phase of mariah Carey, like they have no choice like if you, if you can never <laughs> say that i'm not a fan of fucking mariah Carey. like what they have like, no choice you know the vocals do you know her art and her songwriting? Like, especially her fucking songwriting. You have to actually listen to her fucking lyrics. And I'm like, Mariah. I think in the beginning of her career, this? they had to design special acoustics for her studio because her voice would just carry so much. Like, even her specialized microphones and the things that she, no one has done or will ever do what Mariah Carey has been blessed to. To do, honey. Like mm -hmm. they love to talk that shit, but it's the truth. Even though I talk my shit sometimes, like I always revert back to the fact that she is the living Bible for a lot of these. She paid away for a lot of these girls, and people love to match her with Whitney. But I'm like, I love me some Whitney, but they're in two different lanes. Yeah, and they're in two Curry, different yeah. lanes. I never. And voice is so unique and so multi-dimensional. You can't put mm -hmm. uh put her in just one place. She will rock your world with gospel. She will work your ass with pop, and she will definitely R and B sing the fuck out of your ass. <laughs> so it's, no, like what, it's, like what, um, it's like what it's like what um it's like what it's like what Simon. I never understood that because they're always gonna they're always gonna compare people to people. But it's like what Simon Cow said. Simon said to sing a Whitney song is difficult, but to sing a Mariah song is vocal suicide. Yes, and they love to they yeah, love to commit suicide. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> we all know a fucking Mariah song that is very fucking difficult vocally. Anytime you need a friend, like, let me tell you something. Good luck. It's difficult. Baby doll. Lead the way, bitch. Yes. Um, right. What's the other one? Uh, ooh, Somewhere Outside is a very difficult song. Somewhere on the outside. I love Outside. She goes oh, off that's at the my end. song, honey. There's a lot of, there's, the there's no one, the even movie. a, what does a Mariah Carey tribute would even look like? No one would be able to do those songs justice for her. I don't think so. Like the root, that, first of all, her phrasing and her breathiness of that song, she's in the yes. breath tone for literally the whole fucking song. 
what fucking artist you know that is very that can stay on pitch and and be in a breath free in a breath free tone like mind you Aaron that's, that's what Kelly so Pri- that's what Kelly Price said Kelly Price recently was on I forgot this guy's show but he um he interviews singers he has a singing show he's very popular on YouTube oh, he's talking about Terrell Grice or something yes yeah. yes so he had um he had Kelly Price come on and you know Kelly she grew up singing in the church yeah. And she was like, you know, when she started working with Mariah, she had to learn how to use her voice more because in the church it's very much, you know, loud and straightforward. But with Mariah, she she sings in these breathy tones, and Kelly was like, it was really difficult for her to do that. Of course, I mean, let it's me tell you something. Like when you're talking about someone who can hit sonar notes like a fucking dolphin, who has <laughs> the vocal ranges that don't even exist. They had to create certain ranges just to fit Mariah Carey in a certain place in music. Mm. Like, you're the goddess of what you do. And the only two people that I could say ever could do a tribute to her that still won't even come close would be Leona Lewis or um, what's homegirl's name with that damn voice, child? Ariana Ooh, Grande. Tori Kelly. Ariana Grande. Really? Okay, let's I'm glad you brought them hoes up. Let's 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 <laughs> let's really get into some motherfucking things, okay? Yeah. First of all, Ariana would be cute because she's she knows how to mimic voices. She knows how to mm-hmm. mimic the cross. But I Can really like Tori. Say, bitch? I, but it's the say? truth. No, she 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 knows how to mimic. Like she did an interview, I think, on Jay Leno, where she, she knows how to mimic people's voices. Like it's legit. Yeah. I'm not throwing shade. I'm being serious. That is true. That's true. But um, I think Tori. I think Tori Kelly would be phenomenal. I have to listen to her. I think you suggested I listen to her yeah. a while back. I can see Tori Kelly. Yeah. Tori Kelly can fucking go there, and so can um Jojo. Tori Kelly, Jojo. Um, Jojo can sing. No, you want to know a white girl that can sing? This is a white girl named Yeba. You ever heard her before? I've yeah. heard her. No, I heard her. Yeba I, heard, I still heard you two down, girls, but I Yeba. never really. Yeba. Jesse J can sing too. Yes, Jesse J is amazing. Man, I like Mackenzie. I like the big bitch from um. Oh the yeah, Boys, her too. Yeah. McKenzie. I love Mackenzie. Mackenzie ain't down. I think I saw her sing a scissor song, and when she was singing it, I was like, "Oh, that's what the fuck that's that was scissor was talking about." Mm-hmm. Oh, now you know what she was. Isaac about. Monty, now you know damn well. Wanya Morris definitely kept his attitude and ego to himself because Mariah was not having that bullshit. Okay. I said that in a video I did. Like, bitch, you pussy ass niggas can't even come to disrespect Mariah because she's come to teach you girls, but you want to disrespect Candy Burris, honey. Okay. You can disrespect every man wants a woman. No but bitch, shame. You can't no be- shame. No shame. <laughs> but you can't disrespect the queen voice herself, Mariah Carey, honey, because she's come to teach the girls. I don't like Candy's voice. You know. I'm so sorry. She every, has every moments. Man, she has moments. She actually every did an man. EP during her first mm-hmm. season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Remember when her um may he rest in peace, that boyfriend of hers died? Yeah. yeah. She had an EP that was really good. I really enjoyed it. Every it was she, it was it was worthy. It was my favorite my favorite singer from Escape is actually Tiny Gag. Mm-hmm. Oh. Bitch, I love yeah. I love female Samika. Smokey Samika? Robinson, bitch. Tamika is everything. Tamika, I feel like Tamika is the one to be better vocalist of all of them. All of them. Well, like, now she's going to be using her voice to sisters. get out of this that's legal trouble. <laughs> Wait, which one is Tamika again? Is Tamika the big one or is that Tasha? Which one's Tamika? I thought Tamika was tiny. Isn't that her name? No, no, that's, her no that's, her, that's, that's her real name, but there's another girl in the group named Tamika as well. Oh, okay. That's the two the sisters. sisters. It's the younger sister. Okay. Oh yeah, she got a she got real. She has good control. She, her her control is better than her, her bigger sister's control. If yeah, you ask it me. is. She's one of the better vocalists. No shade. Like <laughs> her fucking younger sister eats her at all times. That's a nice. That's, that's the thing, thing that sucks amazing. about groups, though. That's what sucks about groups. Like you, you individually they may be good but you're so used to them collectively like destiny's child like i don't like destiny's child individually but as a group i love them yes you love beyonce huh i said you love beyonce i mean i like beyonce i think that the girls uh, she's a little overrated um but i do like beyonce but i don't i love the fuck out of destiny's children 
But in, I could never get into Kelly individually or Mich- definitely Michelle individually, child, because girl, please. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Wait, Jesus, Jesus, can we just put that, can we put an know. emphasis on y- YB? Put that that video says it that says Beyonce is not a vocalist. She's like, not. When I tell you, she can sing, but she's not a vocalist, back. honey. I agree. Push back that. People have for my D because of that. Oh, okay, they were coming for me. They were coming for me. And I'm like, why be? I'm just going to just. I'm not gonna I had people sending me clips like, in my DMs, like, watch this. Make sure you are. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a listen. And I changed a little bit of my tune, but I was like, I still believe what I believe. She's a good singer, but she's not a vocalist. A right. vocalist is multi dimensional. She's one dimensional. I agree with what like, tri- I agree with Trick Daddy. Everything. With Trick Daddy, y'all know, know like dangerously in love radio. Hello, like I'm Bubs, like, you didn't hear that? No, what did Trick Daddy say? Yo, they were eating Trick Daddy's ass alive because he what said that say? Beyonce ain't a singer. Like she could sing, but he ain't a singer. You know, she ain't a singer. In a sense, you know? I understand what y'all are saying because that daddy's a, a real a, a vocalist is more of an artist that can use their their voice in different ways. Like you said, Mariah can sing in a very high octave. Like you said, Dolphins be like, "Oh my God, is that our missing cousin, bitch?" All yeah. that shit, you're able. She's able to sing a powerhouse. She's able to use a breathy tone. She's able to manipulate her voice. I have to tell you who another singer is, Mela Hathaway. That is an yes. amazing singer. To the yes. point where this bitch can sing three to four chords in one voice. Yeah. I sing. really, you know what, yeah. let me not go down this road because I could go on and forever. Wait, hold on, hold on, let me say one thing, let me say one thing, let me say one thing, Aaron. I do think, I do think Beyonce can sing, like she has a song called I Care, where yeah. she goes, she goes the fuck off in I Care. I love it. No yeah, how, on top, that bitch how, is yeah, however, what I'm saying is a singer to me is somebody where you hear one little note and you're just like, you're like trans. You're like, wait, who the, f-? like you stop in your tracks. You're like, who the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. Like Beyonce has never given me like, who the fuck is this? And I don't feel her. But there's a lot of songs I need to feel Beyonce you. that does that though. No, I they need don't. To feel you. She... Name a song for me. Name a song. Please. Uh... Okay, I love um, what's that song? Um, oh my gosh, what's the song? I think it's like. So you don't even know it. No, I know the song. It's from the four album. Oh gosh, I forgot. I, let me get my phone. Hold on. You guys never had a singer where you're walking and the radio comes on and then you hear a voice. You're like, wait, who the fuck is this? Yeah, of course. That's what, I've never gotten that. I've never to Sam Smith back in. Yeah, I've never, I've never gotten that from Beyonce. Yeah, Sam Smith was everything. Is everything. Adele at one point when she cared about her fucking fans. I'm screaming. Um, <laughs> Amy Winehouse, may she rest in peace. Amy Winehouse had a voice for your ass, child. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I love Amy. Like I said, even Leona Lewis. Like I don't know why she's not where she should be. But the bitch can sing, honey. Yes. That little girl can blow, honey. So I just don't know what they're trying, what they're doing with her because she should be, if anything, the next up and coming. Well, that was many moons ago, but now she's kind of like Nolan Void. But if they would have took care of her the way they should have, she could have been. I'm not gonna say the next Mariah, but she would have been slowly behind. Yeah. But you know what? Okay, this might be unpopular. Okay, I like this girl. I think she could sing. I really do. Okay, I like her song. She got bops. Okay, however, yes, yeah, see, ya. I just don't so know. Like, I was near. Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. She can I sing. I can see it. I can see that for her. I can see it. She can definitely yeah. sing the house down. Mm-hmm. No, Kelly can sing, but I just never. I was never like here. Like I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Because you know what they did to her. What they did to Christina Aguilera. What they did was <laughs> scream, Tina. <laughs> they they chained, They tried to change her, even with Pink, because Pink can really sing. But the thing about it is, though, they transitioned them so early in their careers. She did that country shit, then she tried to do a little bit of R and B at one point. Then she was doing the soulful shit. It's like you have to be able to find your consistency. And luckily for Pink, she found it earlier. And was able to finally be what she wanted to be. That's why she's so successful. Yeah, but I think yeah. she's also underrated. Pink is very underrated. 
Um, but the bitch I'm, can really say. Can I just say oh, that I, I really bitch be felt like the shit. yes. Okay, so am I the only one that felt that um, if Pink would have got that motherfucking Christina Millie, that's Christina um, Aguilera spot in uh, motherfucking Mid Lady Marmalade. Who thought yeah. that Pink would have ate it up? <laughs> Lady Marmalade. No, I think that, no. I think I they think so. I think they were well placed in that song. Because at, you got to look at like timing too. Bird. Back then, Pink wasn't a vocal a powerhouse like she is now. She didn't know. Right. Sometimes it takes learning and experience in order to know. Okay, now down, I'm that bitch. So I think through her evolution, she discovered her voice. Like Lady Gaga, she has a great voice, but you have to come to that point in growth in your craft to say, okay, this is what I am capable of doing. And let's but mind you, that. I can't get into Gaga's voice. Like her voice to me is more Broadway. Like go 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 do a Broadway show, girl. Wait, 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 ho, 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 <laughs> bitch, what you're not motherfucker gonna do is play Gaga, like that bitch. Have you ever heard that I'll Never Love bitch. Again? First of all, Aaron, I gave, I actually, I actually gave Gaga what? a big up, because Broadway singers, to me, ha, they have better stamina than pop singers. Bitch. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, bitch. <laughs> have y'all heard I'll Never Love Again by bitch. her? A best what song, I'll Never Love Again. I'll never love again. That song that she did. I'll never love again. Yeah, that's for the soundtrack. Man, that motherfucking song was everything. That bitch can really sing. She can. That's a she singing one. Go. That's one singing bitch, and she's not one dimensional. She's but Broadway. Go the Boy, same thing with how you feel about her at Broadway. The same thing what they did to Deborah Cox. We love her down, but they pushed her all the way into the Broadway mm. world. But mind now, you, Deborah Cox don't give me Broadway. Hmm. She, she can do Broadway, but there. Lady Gaga naturally gives me Broadway. I mind you, didn't they? Didn't somebody find Lady Gaga singing in a in a nightclub or something? Like, ain't that how they found her? Well, you Dude. know, she's also a student of the arts too, so that's probably why mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. She went to yeah. NYU, didn't she? For mm -hmm. um, theater yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where it comes from. So bitch. Put some motherfucking respect on motherfucking Miss Gaga name. I right. definitely will buy Broadway tickets to see her show, but <laughs> as far as listening, yeah, bitch, you better be front row. Listen to her album. I'm, I'm good on that. that Thank you. I'm gonna attack that ass. You don't like Gaga? I'm definitely gonna be in the cheap fucking seats, gorilla, but bitch, I will fucking. Gaga I do like Gaga. Gaga. I, do. I love Gaga, but again, it's just a Broadway. Like you know, okay, like you know. It's a matinee. Girl, you know I'm saying? Nice with my motherfucking hand right now. I'm going to wherever you are. Bitch. Anyway, somebody brought, up, somebody, brought up, <laughs> somebody brought up. Somebody brought up. Somebody brought up Tony Braxton. What do you guys? What do you guys um think about Tony? Listen, my bitch, Tony. I like I'm, Tony I'm Braxton. I'm so mad. I'm so mad that guys didn't want to do a motherfucking versus with Tony because I was really looking forward to it. You know how much that would have pleased my ears. I well, you know, it's kind of hard when you don't own it. You got to get permission from Babyface and everybody else that done stole all your money and all your rights, girl. So, But you mad about what? She didn't do a versus with who? With Mary, Mary. J. Blige. There was the Mary J. Blige. Uh, Mary would have ate her alive. Yeah. Mary would have ate her. Mm -hmm. Mary would have ate her alive. First of all, my life alone, bitch. My life alone. Nothing, nothing that Tony has ever put out. No shade. And I love me some Tony. Let's not downplay her either, though. Tony was that girl. Yeah. Tony was that no, girl. I, but I know that, but I'm not downplaying her. But I'm about to say Tony's first to, album. Compared to compared to Mary J. Blige. I mean, I of course. My life, there's nothing on motherfucking Tony Braz's discography can fuck with my life. No shade. No shade. Mm. I would have liked My it though because Tony has room. some hits. Tony has some hits. I love me, Mary, and of course, Mary's gonna win. But it would have just been good to like resonate in that moment with Tony because mm -hmm. I don't think that she nowadays, because that last album she put out was trash. It was horrible. Um, but to like almost like a shy day, like take me back, girl. Mm. You know, take me back to that time because I never uh, breathe again. Spanish guitar. I mean, she, um, um, man enough, like, she has so she many has things that resonate, and it would have been good with a Mary J. Blige, but again, we just established Mary has too many hits. It's and plus, too many. And successful hits to cross different eras of music. 
Mary and Mariah are one of the only two people that have been able to do that from their time period up until now successfully. I think it should have been I think it should have been Tony versus Brandy if you ask me. Can we just no, say she, that um Mary no. J. Blige and um Mary J. Blige and Mariah Carey is like I, the most beat up artist at that time? Yeah, I know, of their time, they were the most beat up. Like they beat the fuck out of Mary when she came out. And I didn't even know that she got as much backlash as she did. Like I've been looking at so many interviews and, and her documentary and the fact that she felt like she couldn't be honest with the interviews because they didn't understand where she came from. And so many interviews, they felt she felt phony even talking to people. And just like her story and the fact that they thought that she was thinking she was all that when it's like, no, she was going through real shit. And, and she she carried herself a different way in interviews than now in public. They thought that she was this and that. And I was like, I actually shed a tear for Mary because she, like the media beat the fuck out of her. Like, but the thing is too, when you have media, especially during that time period, people exploit us. They want our talent, but they don't want the struggle that comes with that talent. They don't want to know our past life. Like when she talked about um, when... L, uh, what was his name? L.A. Reed or whoever came to visit her and how he was, you know, dressed up and how the hood was going to look at everything. It's just that, too. They want us, but they don't want our story. They don't want our struggle. And it's hard for them to understand. OK, that girl probably was coked out of her mind. No, Tino Shade. She said it herself. You're dealing with stuff. They don't want that society. They want that celebrity. They want they want to capture those moments, but they don't want the, the real shit that comes back before it. Well, you know, they call her rooftop Mary over here where I'm at. Oh, yeah. Doc is in the bitch. building. I, I won't spoil y'all already I know. Bitch. Yes. I told Crispy you once before. I told you, I told you once before, bitch. Stop speaking on Mary. Oh, I, I do the fuck I want to do. First of all, I'm that from Yankees, bitch. I'm from Yankees. I know the origin the story, unlike like these the other hoes who read shit in the media, bitch. Okay. That I got the story. Her past. She don't live okay. there no more. Let it be there. Well, we was just he talking about her past, past, bitch. That was the whole point of the conversation. He just said, he just said they didn't want to accept her past. Let me ask y'all this question. Let's get a little mess. Stay on topic, so, bitch. Would you, do you think that it was true? Because, you know, they shut down that bullshit real quick about that young man who said that he was 15 having a sexual relationship with Mary. Do you think that she was really plucking the cribs, child? I don't believe it. it I don't wait, believe it at when all. Was this? What was this? Like, what album? What circa album? What album? It was actually probably on her second album because this was happening like right around she first kind of got famous a little bit. She was allegedly, you know, was it Suge Knight that that claimed that he sent the boy to her house, child, or did he? It was one of the two. I, I don't believe it. If and, and if it did happen, if it did happen, I don't think she knew he was fifteen. Definitely, I don't think it happened. I. People in that kind of weird because they brought the story out a month before the documentary was going to be released, and this is like y'all just trying to you know destroy her real quick, and it's not going to work. But she's too. I think Mary was too damaged at that time, so I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. That's just me. I don't, I don't get take advantage of ET from her. Yeah. I don't get that vibe from her at all. You know. Then again, we don't know she, people she who they really she, are, but. <laughs> And if you think about it, she was always weary of new people. Like she, she like if you don't, if she don't know you, then it's like, bitch, I don't know you. I don't like why am I talking to you? Yeah, I just you don't see her saying? following. Like, anymore. and it seemed like a lot of her love was older men, from what it seemed like. And Mary's a sweetheart, you know. She comes to Yonkers. I've met her. I got her autograph before, you know. That's I would cool. love to meet her. I would literally like. Cry, but just yeah. want to talk to her. I just want to talk to all these bitches, honestly. Because yeah, my step, my stepmother is in, her, is in her family affair video, dancing in the oh, background. Wow, the dance That's the good. Honey. Mm -hmm. I love that video. That was a good video too. That's what I'm saying. I'm close to the source, Aaron. So mind your fucking business when I'm talking. Oh, yes. And that's on the period. <laughs> yeah, on the period. Thank you, baby. Uh, 
I was about to say, did you get that from King Pain? Because you know, King Pain went live the other day. He was like, "How hoes got it from him?" And yada yada yada. Oh, I always when I do stuff like I'm not one of those people that steal shit. If I say something that I've heard, I'll re- I'll try my best to reference who I got it from. He said that's something, but didn't he get that from the city girls? Well, they didn't just they- said period, but he oh, yeah. transformed it going a step further with the oh, period. Yeah. He's the only person I ever heard say period to the period. Right, and now oh, everybody said a lot of people said. I think of that. Yeah, he's it. the only one. Because I, I, I know King Pain, I know King Kang, he says Pira. And I didn't like it at first, but it kind of caught on. No shade. Who? Pira, Pira, King King. Oh, I don't know. All right, Rachel wants to know if you guys could chop the cast of Chasing LA in half, who would you keep and who would you give the boot for season two? Mm. I'd keep Andre. Fran, get the mm. fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> Kick the fuck yeah, out bye. of the You are nobody, bitch. You are a loser yeah. ass bitch. And you're gonna you have to send ass bitch at the reunion, and you are a loser now. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely send her and that trash outfit back to the girls at Wish. Um I would keep Andre, I would keep King Pain. I would I want to see more from Alicia, but I'm just tired of the whole like. Anybody got time for all that shit? Settle your problems before you come to the to the business. That's how I feel. Right. Um, or at least let us highlight that. Because my thing is, my problem with her was uh, you were okay you. sharing your trauma of getting jumped and all of the things that come with that, but you couldn't come to the reunion. That kind of worked my nerve. Um, we can do away with Jayla. I'm good with her and her knees. They can go. Um, <laughs> Who else? King Pain can stay. Andre can stay. D. Hawkins, I don't know. I need to see more from him. And, and I need to see more from him. It's, it's not going to work with him. You can wrap up all the dead squirrels in the neighborhood and wrap them around your neck all you want to, but bitch, we need to see something happening. Um, Quan the Poet, he can come back. I would like to see more from him if possible. Um, who else? Oh, Hershey definitely should come Hershey back. The fan definitely. Favorite, so dumb. definitely should come back. And I think that's it, right? Oh, Fly King, you know what? You can bring him back too because he, from the gate, he showed business. Mm, right. From the gate. So when the girls say it's not possible, well, look at what he was able to do. It's possible. What about you, Aaron? Who, who do you feel should come back and just stay? Um,. Y'all already know who the fuck I said it. You already know who I, you know, I wasn't gone. I just want that bitch going. But uh, <laughs> no shade, Alicia. No shade, I'm kind of tired of her too. I actually wanted Alicia to come back because she didn't say her piece on a reunion. But no shade, after we found out that she was paid $600, was it, Trev, for a it was- fucking interview? Yeah. She was paid. She signed a contract to be paid six hundred dollars for a fucking interview, girl. And I'm like, girl, who oh, the fuck are you to be getting money for an interview? That didn't make sense to me. But yeah, um, other than those two, everybody should come back. Um, when D Hawkins. Girl, do I want to see more travesty, more disgenuineness? Do I want to see more color contacts? Do I want to see more turtlenecks in the summertime? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just don't see it for that bitch. I don't see it for her. Her tribute to motherfucking Marsha, bitch. Girl, I just want G Hawkins yeah, to literally be like Patrick and and just be under a rock. Live, live under a rock. I, I just don't see it for her. I don't. I honestly would keep, I would keep star, bitch. I would keep everybody because I feel like Fran, um, during a reunion, he got his peach. And um the only person who's a liability is Alicia because she didn't show up to the reunion, so she might have to go. I want more. I feel like she can give more. Jayla ate the fuck out of Fran. No shade. No, no I, want, I want more. I agree with you, YB. I want more from Alicia too, but we can't yeah. get it if she's not showing up. That's true. 
That's true. I feel like there's more to her, and but she has to break whatever is holding her back. She has to break free from that shit. She has. Oh, and Jeremy Copeland too. I would like to see him come back. Yeah, yeah. I do like him and his dick. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen it? I have, I have honey. Hmm. I never seen it. Hmm. Gotta, hmm, press down, shake and cut, run it over. <laughs> Get into it, honey. Let her know, honey. It, all the dancers, I'm gonna tell you something about dancers. Chris Brown is absolutely right. If you can dance, you can fuck. Trust oh, me. Oh, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Especially the ones who know how to oh, death wine them. and move those hips. They will fuck you into oblivion, bitch. Amen. Some of them. I haven't. Hey, I've had some dancers who the definitely. Rest, so. Hey, I watched Grey's Anatomy. I can save my own life. Hello. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. Call me Meredith Grey, honey. <laughs> Yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I am screaming. Yes. Oh my god! I love LA. It may be time to put some other blood in there too. Bring Todrick in, honey. Bring some of these girls in. I want to hmm. see something. Yeah, they all deserve another season. Though, I'm not gonna lie. With better and more so professionalism think- by production. Do you think Imani's coming back to review next Dallas next <laughs> next season? If it's a family and you're part of the family, honey, you better. Regardless of what Q or anybody has to say, you are employed by Chase and Reality. And that's another thing that pisses me off with Chase and Reality, is that girls are all under the same umbrella. So the fact that you hoes keep going back and forth and bickering, again, you're showing there's a leak in the building. And if people go to talk about your ass, don't get fucking mad. You, and no matter, on the surface, you should be represented as family. We shouldn't be aware of none of the fucking cross bullshit, the crossfires that happen behind the scenes. If they get their shit, so Imani, yeah, she better. I adore Imani, but like I asked her to her face when we interviewed her, why be? I'm actually the same question. Do you think she got a big head now that you know her followers on TikTok is like half a million, and she's you know she's known now outside of chasing reality? So do you think she's feeling herself a little bit too much now? Um, I'm going to say no to that as of right now, Um, just because I feel like there's things and it, it happened in the process of elevation where you have to protect your energy from certain things and it can come off a little bitchy or it can come off like I'm too big for this now. Um, Because mind you, before, even though Imani is now known to us, Eric Dillard was kind of well known in that world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I'm going to say no for now, at least. I can see how people can perceive that. Right. But I, you know, I've had my own interactions with Imani myself, and I, I've never really truly gotten that from her. Mm-hmm. So until I see other things, you know, I'm going to I'm going to stick with no. I don't I don't really see the big head now. I mean, but I do believe in your elevation. You do have to assume certain things that people may not like from you, your attitude. You may have to turn some things down. You may have to call people out in certain ways because people will try to use you to help themselves elevate as well. So when you start crossing, when you start putting lines in the sand for people, people are going to call you a bitch. People are going to say that you got the big head or that you have, you know, delusions of grandeur, that type of shit. But as far as I'm concerned, I just think that she's a good resource for the community and especially the web series community. And I feel like I feel like Amani did what she was supposed to do with the exposure. Right. Like what the what the rest of the cast members they're not doing, Imani, Imani, Imani did. You know, right. you, you get in front of an audience and you you build yourself up. You're supposed to and that balance factor. You know, we all know Risa G brought Imani onto the platform to do a specific job. And I think a lot of people don't really like when you we have our own version of, you know, Yana Van Zap kind of vibe that gives that balance. And it's going to tell you the truth to your fucking face and not really, you know, play around with your ass. I love that aspect of it. And I think it's need required and desired. And I pray nothing but success for everybody, to be honest with you. All right, Aaron, what were you asking YB about chasing Dallas? No, I was going to, um, with everything that went on between Reese G, the creative of um, Chase and Dallas, and the whole shit with, um, you know, Chase and Atlanta Q, 
Um, Chase, Chasing LA Q, how do you think season three would compare to uh, Chasing LA? A season three of Dallas compared to Chasing LA? Yeah, are you excited? Yeah, how you are you excited about it? How we was excited about LA? I'm always excited for Dallas. That's one of my uh, favorite franchises. Um, that's one of my most actual um, involved ones too with the cast members. They've always loved me and shown me a lot of really great respect and love. And again, it's not just exclusive to that. But I just I, I fall in love with Dallas. I think it'll be a good season. Mm-hmm. I think it, you know it better be. I, and it, it has no choice. What do you think about the fuckery that is going on? How you how with, do you think about what you think about the fuckery that's with um recording Dre Samber being in one episode and him clashing with most of the cast members on that season? This is the thing. I'm gonna. I love Dre Simber. Don't get me wrong. I've had my own personal dealings with him as well. I think that he is a good person. I think that he means well. But I think that there has to be a moment where you have to think to yourself: if this is the space that you want to be in, you're gonna have to conform in some type of way. Hmm. And that goes for any type of job you want, whether it's in the social media space, whether it's in just you know private professional vibes or whatever you go to a job you can't be wholeheartedly who you want to be you know what i'm saying and i love it for him but i think there is something to say that every time we cross over to different shows there's an issue now explaining that issue the mature way is how to go about it instead of everyone arguing on social media and now you are slandered to be this person that no one wants to work with you have to be able to kind of like tone it down a little bit. Again, especially if you want to be in that space. Um, now, does he speak some truth? Hell yeah, he does. But there's a time and a place for everything. That truth may not be what everybody wants to hear. And let's be honest, we're talking about television. We're talking about being in a creative space where not everyone wants that wholehearted truth all the time. And if you don't like someone, okay, you can still respect them. Um, now, as it goes for production with Reese and everybody, you're grown adults. Y'all been doing this a long time. Y'all are vets in the game now. Uh, you also have to conduct yourself accordingly. We want to use the word cooth all the time. Well, everyone needs to start displaying cooth because no one's going to want to work with your ass either if you keep blocking everybody from canceling their scenes and things like that. Actually, shoot the scene. I want to see the beef. That's what we're talking about, right? Reality, right? So the reality is that y'all have it in for each other. Let's record that and let's put that on the screen. So I'm not in, I'm, I don't agree with either party, but I can see both parties' perspective. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, listen, I like, I, I like Reese G. However, sometimes I wish he would just play more of the background, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Understandable, yeah. Yeah, like it's like the Reese G show. No shit. There's a there's something that has to happen with that, and I've spoken to him about that before, interviews and things of that nature. And if you can shut out your personal feelings, mm, just talking about that. Yeah, it would be better mm-hmm. if you could close that off and not make everything so personal and near and dear to you. Then you can successfully be a Shawnee O'Neal. You can be executive producer and cast member if you were able to do that. But when you hold that high position, people are scared to tell you how they really feel because mm-hmm. they know what your reaction is going to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, bitch, the contract is ripped up. It's thrown out. Bitch, we're cutting you from all the scenes. Ooh. And it's just like, damn, you're going to take away all that hard work that person just did to help build your show? Mm-hmm. That, to me, is not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all flew him out or y'all had him out in Dallas for all this time period. You might as well use what you got. Now you have to tear up all that footage just because you're angry. Same way I felt with season two with the whole Antonio situation. And there was something else that happened in the Trey Womack situation. Like, don't cut it off because it may affect you personally. Because guess what? You wanted to be the cast member. So now you have to take all of these bullets that fly and agree with your ass. You know what I mean? Right. So if you know how to shut it off. It'd be perfect, but I don't think Reese is at that stage where in his life where he knows how to shut that off. Right. Correct. I agree. 
I want to know how does it work in their in the chasing reality umbrella? It's like, um, okay, so Reese's in charge of Dallas, Q's in charge of LA, but what if what if Aunt Dario wakes up one day and is like, okay, I don't want Reese in charge of Dallas. Will somebody else take it over, or does Reese G actually own Chasing Dallas itself? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like things of that that nature. I would love to know that as well, because, like I said, when, when it, in regards to Q situation, you may be the showrunner for this particular, you know, the the franchise of LA, but your product is being distributed under my brand. That means I do assume at least a lot of more control than you do. So that's why I was kind of pissed off too, because I know that a lot of that stuff has to be seen first before it's approved and edited. You still allow some of that stuff to be to be thrown out there without no real resolve. I blame you for that. But now is the paperwork right? You know, what contracts do y'all have in place to secure yourself? So even if Andara did wake up one day and say, Reese, bitch, it is what it is. I don't want you no more. Can you say that? Do you have the authority to even do that legally speaking? So hopefully when the girls are talking about having their paperwork together and, and everyone wants to steal people's businesses and all this shit, hopefully y'all have y'all paperwork together so that your bag is secured and that your, your brand is secure as well. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that would ever happen with them. We can, a lot of people can say what they want to say, but Andara and Reese are a threat together. Speaking of together. speaking of not having the paperwork together, you know that happened between Andario and Kivon. You know, mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, now Kivon has his show, "The Shit We Do for Love." How do you guys feel about that show and that channel and that platform? I actually nobody gives a fuck. Jeez. Hold on now, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Shout out to the cast of the hour because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't ha- have really gotten to the shit we do for love. I really enjoyed the first season was everything. The second season was messy boots because of that crazy ass fucking bitch. Um, what's her name, honey? Uh, I don't know. I don't watch the show. Me. I forgot her name. Well, she's yeah. She forgot. She, she forgot. We don't know her. We're gonna treat her like Mariah does Jennifer, honey. We don't know her. Um, it gets a little wrapped up, but I do enjoy the show because like, instead of uh, you blindly telling us that this person is chasing or hustling and all this kind of things, these are just friends in their friend group and they're trying to date and things of that nature, but not so much as a lover and friends vibe, lovers and friends vibe, but more so on a chasing vibe without the chasing. I can dig that, (laughs) but it kind of got a little crazy in the second season um, they're casting now for season three. I enjoy it. Now, the singing show they have out is trash, but I think that's being done for other people. I love Ike. That's my that's one of my ace spoon coons. I love me some Ike, but I'm not really feeling the singing show. But wait, do we know do we know what went wrong between Andario and Kivon? Because Kivon was a part he had credits on Chasing LA opener, if I'm correct. If I'm tripping, and then he still, still works fresh. What you say? You, you went blurry real quick. Your mic, something happened. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Ooh, I think my internet went out. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, I do believe they're still friends and they still work together professionally. Not um, according to these screenshots. Oh, are these recent? They're like maybe two months ago. Oh well, I thought they were. I thought they were okay. I we got these screenshots for a rainy day. You know, Andario likes to tweet and delete. Mm. Oh, God. shout out to the TTP. Okay, TTP just all the tea, honey. Damn. Okay. Um. Yo, he went off. He went, he went off on Kevon in these tweets. I'm trying to tell you. Oh well, I mean, that's the thing about Andario. He is a mystery and a ghost. He's not going to. Well, now that that's that Aqu- that's that Aquarius shit. Yeah, I'm a Capricorn. I'm more direct. I don't have time for foolery. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, this is what I think about that. I think people share a vision. They did it together. It's almost like the whole Mark Zuckerberg story situation. Like you come up with this thing, one thing takes off. The creative differences, that type of shit. And the next thing you know, the girls end up having it out. And then coming back later, realizing that we actually are forced together than we are separately. Um, 
But now that you have this tea, I don't know what to say to that then. Because I, I was under the impression they were good. Because I think he also helped out with um, Atlanta for last season. And he also you did know, season three of Atlanta as well. You know, you, right, as I'm saying. What happened was, it was a guy on the shit we do with one of the cast members. He said, during like a, one of his confessionals or something like that, he said um, that he now has the produce, he now has the creator of Chasing LA doing his show. But like, you know, Chasing Reality, you know, doing their show. And on Dario called Wendell back, and he was like, bitch, I'm the creator of that platform. And then, you know, it was a whole big thing. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder what professional that was. Some light-skinned guy. I don't watch the show, so I can't even tell you who he was. Oh, what's part of that? What is that? Neil Nile? What is his name? That crazy-ass loon? He was talking mad shit. Then it had to be, um... Damn, what's that crazy bitch's name? He was like, yo, why be? He was like, we're new. We're, he was like, this is a new chat. We're new. We have a new show, but don't worry. We're going to be number one soon because we have the creator of Chasing Reality. And, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> it might have been... Uh, damn, I forget that boy's name. He crazies all that door. He was the one who was <laughs> falling through bushes and shit trying to fight Travis Child when he was about to get pepper sprayed, honey. Um, I forget, but I, I, I really... I think, too, a lot of these girls need to just start shutting the fuck up. And realize that that's why you have hit a plateau. And I tell this to everybody, y'all are going in fourth and fifth seasons and really haven't done anything new. It's kind of all been the same thing. I'm excited for them because I love to, you know, show love to my, you know, LGBT, you know, brothers and sisters. But it's difficult when you guys are arguing and bickering all the time and then you give other people ammunition to use, even if you guys are in a good place right now. So like he's saying, tweeting and stuff, instead of just doing that, why you just call the man? And have a conversation. Right, right, right. You know, that's the bullshit that I don't have time for. And that's and when people start seeing those leaks in those buildings, it becomes a little like, okay, girl, like, been there, done that. No one has time for it anymore. Yeah. And, you know, listen, one thing about TTV, listen, we would love to cover other um, LGBTQ web reality shows, but they don't finish their product. So, what is the point? Mm. This is the issue. And I know you uh, mentioned this in the live I did Sunday. And I yeah. want to tap on that real quick. A lot of the girls, the pandemic made it possible for people to start trying new things. And when trying new things, you have to be honest with yourself. Mm. Is this really what I'm meant to do? Or do I just want to do this? See, instead of it, a lot of the girls are doing this as a hobby, thinking this can be turned into a career. And then they don't realize the hard work that actually it takes halfway into this season. And that's when you start to see that plateau. And you're like, okay, bitch, this is not as easy as I thought it was. You got some of the girls that are doing reunions in their fucking living rooms in their fucking project ass fucking apartment buildings, girl. No, man, Pam, we don't, that's not how this is done. (laughs) You can't do that. So you have to ask yourself, are you just doing this as a hobby? Because you just want, you want to be like the rest of these girls, you know, or are you truly gifted? Are you the next Carlos King, basically? Some girls are just doing it to do it. They're not doing it because they know what they're doing. They haven't done the research. Google is your friend, children. You know, you can get certifications. You can learn how to do these things online. And, and if you're really passionate about it, some of the girls just think because they have a camera or an iPhone, bitch, and some earbuds <laughs> that they can go ahead and make shit happen. <laughs> and it's not, it, you have to really be truly gifted in this. And Dario is truly gifted in this. Reese G is truly gifted in this. You know what I'm saying? That's why I fuck with that platform because the Chase Around brand is truly gifted. G status at one point truly gifted in this. It shows in their product. It shows in the stories that they're trying to tell. But some of these other girls that have truly lackluster quality, lackluster cast, lackluster storylines, they're not truly gifted in it. So that's why it's failing for them. Oh, let me just try this out. Let me just wake up one day and do a reality show because that's my dream. And we got to admit, too, in the gay community, there's a lot of delusions of grandeur. Some right. of that, yeah. this I want to be more than what I am shit. Girl, that's for the fucking birds. That was for the 90s. That was for the early 2000s. We have to truly live in what we can do, not in what we book, not in what we think we can do because yeah. everybody else is doing. It. Right. And then this also- may not be your calling. 
And then also to the fact of like, it's okay that you aren't there right now. It doesn't mean that in the future you can't be great. Like all the people who are great now you right. have to go through something to kind of help them grow in stature so that they can be able to handle such a uh, responsibility. And people just want to get right to the reward without putting in what they need you. to actually appreciate the reward and actually utilize the reward and its fullest potential. You're absolutely right with that. And if you fall down, how are you going to get? Show us how to get back up again. Mm. Don't just be defeated. Like that's one of the things that I hated about the real the. Mm, 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 mm. That's what I hated about them. Is oh, did y'all catch? Okay, the real hot boys of Houston. Okay, that's I did what, not catch that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what took me out with them. Is like no matter what is going on, girl. If this is what you truly want to do, do that shit mm. and learn from your learn from that mistake that you made. That's what Dallas had to go through. That's what Atlanta had to go. That's what LA is going to be experiencing. None of these girls started off 100%. Enjoy your journey. Your result will come through your consistency. If this is truly what you're meant to do. Because again, some of the girls don't want to work at Family Dollar no more. And they think they can just come out here and just do reality shows. No, it costs money. It costs investment in time and commitment. Right, <laughs> and you're like, willing to learn from your failures. Yeah, we're talking behind the scenes over here, me and my peoples, because, you know, we want, we want, it's either we want our own reality show, okay. or we want to be um, a part of another franchise within an established platform, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's either we're going to, we're going to fund Chasing New York with Reese, or we're going to um, give Karan some money to film our show. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So it's like it's decisions. It's it's what to do. You know what I mean? It's it's like I think the ground floor, honey. Mark the way, because what happens is is we get flustered with every establishments are good because it helps lift the platform, obviously. Mm -hmm. But also, you get caught up in their own creative. Like they think, oh, I've been there and done that, so you have to listen to me. Next thing you know, their shit bleeds off into something that you really don't want mm -hmm. to happen. But because you may lack certain experiences in that field, you're going to take everything from them because they have the experience and i want to look at karan too and be like girl he's not really the best to be giving advice for anybody because bitch you don't finish shit either no not advice he would be the one to uh, to record for us like him and his team would like film for us uh-huh like he would film our our whatever our reality yeah, is, show it, is it gonna get stolen from his trunk child right <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are they gonna steal it like <laughs> Girl, are we going to be holding cash app parties to replenish, you know, the equipment that was stolen? Rachel said, I, "Yasha, Rachel said, Yasha, fly me out and pay me." How much we talking, Rachel? We, we got. Let's talk some numbers, okay? And let's see real here too. When it comes to payment, these kids are in school a lot, and that's what I've been trying to tell Chase Reality for the longest. Is like you can get interns, especially if you've established an LLC or some type of business name. You can give these kids credit. So a lot of these, especially New York, has a plethora of theater schools and production schools and kids that are taking these, you know, um, photography classes and videography classes. You can utilize them for the free. That is true. Do your thing. That is true. I didn't even think about it like that. They get credit towards it. As long as you're an established, and I think y'all are, TTB, y'all have an LLC, right? So you can give them credit. You know they need the they need the experience. That is interesting. Are really good at what they do. Yeah, because I have everything mapped out. You know everything. You know, it's, it's it's just about putting in the vision together. Because I I want a reality show on this channel. I have to go for it. I think it'd be perfect. And you have a very direct nature, so I think you would be able to get through all of the fodder and bullshit. Oh yeah, I'm not playing. I'm not playing with these hoes. I'm not. We're not playing. <laughs> and people too, like you have to be honest with the vision. And these girls be hosting, they be doing these castings, and they're not being completely honest about what is expected of them. And then you have them signing these legal green documents, child, that you're not even gonna. If they break your contract, you're not even following through with legal recourse. Like you have to be able to show these girls, like, bitch, the stove is hot. <laughs> Put your hand on there again, bitch. You know, and then accordingly handle their motherfucking ass. There's too much playing going on, and that's why a lot of the gays, we don't take it serious enough because people think they're playing with their ass. 
you gonna let someone destroy your dream and your vision because they want some camera time or they're not being edited the way they thought they were gonna be edited? No, stop playing with my dream and my goal. What happens to real employees is they get fired when they yeah. do dumb shit. Yeah. And you know, we were I would pay I would pay the cast. Mm. You gotta pay the cast because you know people come it's incentive to 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 do something. Don't get me wrong. Up there too. You get paid through exposure, that's true. But I'm not saying pay them a lot of money. You could get twenty five dollars per episode. Let's say there's you know twelve episodes. That's you know it's a cute Some little coin. Hungry, you can pay in submarine sandwiches, honey. I mean Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> like yeah. these girls. I heard in chasing L.A., honey, the girls are getting paid in gas, um, gas and McDonald's. That works. You know, go ahead. Some <laughs> of the girls are thirsty and they're alcoholics. So go ahead, girl. You want some a fifth of Hennessy, bitch, to get through this um this scene right quick. You wanna you wanna you wanna pour a quarter of weed, here you go. Uh, hello Give me a, a quarter or eighth. I'm good. I'm on some good shit. Hello. I mean, we gotta find a way to make it consistent. The girls are not consistent, the girls lack depth. You got a lot of young people with these dreams and goals, but they lack experience to translate on a screen. That's why shit didn't work with Job, because he was so young. And he wanted the glitz and the glamour of it all, but he didn't know how to get in depth with people. People want to watch something they can relate to, but they also want the entertainment. But all of that needs to be cohesive. And if it's not cohesive enough, it's it's going to be looked at as cannon fodder. Get this shit away from me. Oh, I like I like Christian's uh, Christian. Hey, Christian Taylor, I like his idea. He says, "What do you think of a game show? Give people challenges and then eliminate people until there's a winner." Or have people vote people out survivor style. That's something new in the gay yeah. world. What's up, Christian Taylor? How you doing? Is that the Chris is that my Christian Taylor from Cali? If that is, hey boo. Um What's up? I would like that actually. A survivor team. But it's yeah. almost like a, a retreat vibe without the whole like come together moment. Yeah, I don't think we have that in, in the gay show like a like a survivor type of you know. But will we be able to work together? That's the thing. That that calls for unity. Rachel, hey. Hey, YB, What's I just want to know Rachel? real quick. Who gave you this information that they're paying us in cheeseburgers, bitch? Because I would like to know. And who is being paid in cheeseburgers? Who? Child. Because <laughs> that is some fucking bullshit. I can't, um, you know, I have to respect my sources, but that uh-huh. was a, that what was a real conversation I did have with somebody, and they were like, "Child, they're paying the kids in cheeseburgers and gas money." Mm-mm. That's so fucking disrespectful. Wait, so and wait, not true though. Is this source from Dallas? <laughs> it's probably from Dallas or fucking Dallas. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Dallas. I want to say got real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's from motherfucking Dallas. <laughs> so you're just saying that's just some hateration. It's motherfucking hateration. Anything okay. from Dallas is is hate, unless like you can say who said what and about who. Because last I know, we weren't getting paid in cheeseburgers, bitch. <laughs> we were definitely getting paid in Cash App. Oh. Period. Oh. It was said That's to me that in the early production because they are not getting paid. Okay. But. So what I what was told to me, and I'm not going to reveal the source, but I will tell a little bit of the story is that in the early on production there was a lot of clamoring going on What's to clamoring? find. I mean, just trying to hurry up and find people to actually produce the show. And that's where I also heard a lot about D. Hawkins having a lot to do with the production. Is that true? Um, the only thing D. Hawkins had to do with production was he let us use his home to film green screens. And he, he, he set it up really nicely. And he was okay. a gracious host, I will say. Did he so, put all of the dead animals in his closet before y'all came? I'm just playing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was playing, but I did hear that part, and that there was a lot going on with, um, as it related to Blake Marie, when she was the only one. I guess her and Q had Q was absent for some time or something like that, and it was really Blake Marie shouldering a lot of the burden, and it was 
her that was letting people know that she couldn't pay them accordingly. So how they were paid out was, you know, like, girl, we can do anything else but give you cash. And it was told that it was through gas money or cheeseburgers. Okay, well, whenever, you know, you were part of production, the I, I'm pretty sure that the executives want to make sure there's food for the crew. So that's a given. There's going to be food. Now, how, what kind of food they get? Okay, whatever. But they were not saying, oh, this is how we're paying you. I would, you know, they would give us gas money. They would um, feed us. They would give us cash. So it wasn't all the time, but it was for like really like serious film dates. So mm-hmm. it, um, I would say anything that comes from fucking Blake Marie is probably going to be a lot of fluff and BS because it didn't come from her. I want to make that clear. I wasn't told that by her. Well, she talks to people behind, you know, production back and mm. that usually consists of people from Dallas or other people just to be fucking <sighs> girl that was a whole fucking mess yeah it's just um, it's yeah and they're all hanging out recently like it was so it's 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 whack you know it is the fakery and hypocrisy for me too this is why I don't try to get too heavily invested because y'all bitches will sit around here and talk about each other like dogs the next minute, you'll be on live with each other. Then the very next minute, y'all be cutting the sh- cutting the rug together at some damn, you know, fucking, you know, Red Lobster or some shit, girl. Right. And then when we talk about y'all, then everyone's looking like, what? Like we, it seems like we don't make no sense because now y'all are friends. Mm. Right. Wait, Rachel, let's unpack this. Um, what's going on, Rachel? How you doing? Um, <laughs> What's your what's your little beef with Dallas? What's, what's going on? I don't have beef with Dallas. Um, I actually loved it. I was a fan of the show. Um, I did think that Reese G was toxic as fuck on the show as a fan. But then coming into the platform, actually, I had respect for Reese like as an EP. I just as a person, as a as a what she does. Um, and I'm just like I I actually would follow Reese and like just. I don't know. I, I, really, I had like a good uh, connection with Reese, but after all this mess, I just lost respect for Reese. And then she was calling. I think she did an interview with you guys. She was saying I'm emotional, but bitch, I, I'm a human being with a fucking heart. Okay, and it beats. It's not fucking a rock. So emotional, no. A human being, yes. Anyways, so it's just it's very much like I lost respect. Um, all the behind the scenes drama, like I just it gave very much like, bitch, you guys are all talking to Blake Marie still. I mean, that's fine. I can't tell you who the fuck to talk to, but um you guys are talking about shit that you know nothing about because you weren't there. Like Blake is obviously not with the uh platform anymore for a good reason. So it's just like her word against ours usually and it's just this was honestly a storm that we saw coming anyways because as soon as we parted it was like, okay, it's going to be a fucking storm coming, like, as soon as this shit rolls out. Um, and sure enough, it was. And it was just fucking ridiculous. All it was was just people talking behind Q's back and um, just starting mess for no fucking reason. Like, it was. Do you agree that this is bullshit because it's all a family? It's No matter where you're at, you could be in yes. fucking Canada. As long as it's under the Chase and Reality brand, like, all of y'all... If you work together, we all win. But the fact that we're separating, it that's what's going to be the downfall of the company. Right, exactly. Like I feel like that could that could be like the best situation for everybody to just realize we we're like a family, you know, and and let's just work together. But I feel like there are characters that wanted this you know, wanted to see the girls growing and, you know, and got off to that shit and just busted nuts off that shit. Mm. You know, it's just like, and it was like, why, why go live? Why bring it? And the excuse was, well, well, Q said something first. It was like, no, like. And even if he did, you have the power to decide how you're going to react to other people's fuck shit. And by reacting is what exposes y'all for the for the fakery, fuckery, and fraudulence that people don't live for about the brand. Right. Like, we want to see fucking real 
legit content, like drama, like natural shit, like nothing yeah. like, you know, it's just like, I know, I know some of the girls get off to this shit, but it's like, okay, but usually it's a more, it happens in a natural progression. Like it's not contrived, you know? Right. So it's just very like unfortunate. I wish we could just be a fucking family already and just, you know, get it over, like just, just fucking, but I just don't see us working with anybody else. Like I've just feel like our chasing LA production is kind of tight now. Like it's on lock and, I don't yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you, will you be re- will you be back to record season two? Um, I mean, I I just recently like was um trying to negotiate my contract, so we'll see. I have to wait and hear back, but I mean, I would love to. I fucking love. I love Chase. I love everybody. I consider Q now like my freaking gay Hollywood dad, and Terrell's like my freaking work husband. Um. You know, professionally sure speaking, like, yeah, I, I really, I think we got a good team. I think after all that BS kind of just um, passed, we were able to just focus and work and just get this shit out there, you know? And we notice all the things that we need to fix. And we're honestly, like, like you said earlier, why we were, like, definitely going to, like, make those changes and keep trying to, like, get better and shit. Because it's all about storytelling, and if you have characters that have true, authentic stories, mm-hmm. it can happen. It just takes the showrunners to have that depth and the wherewithal to be able to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Like with L.A., we could have turned a lot of that transphobia shit around by bringing in a, a specialist or someone to sit down and have this conversation to educate these kids. There could have been moments that, that turned all of that around. But again, it's the first season of the franchise. It, no one's first season was all that great, to be honest. Um, I actually do believe this was the better opener season than a lot of the other openers <laughs> that we've sure had. Was. Us, to sure be honest was. with you. It was, so, yeah, it was, it's all a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, I know what it gave. Like, I do. I definitely know. Like, I see where we can improve. And like, as far as the storytelling, I'm ex. I can't wait for you guys to see who will be. <laughs> Cause like, Ooh. we did have a meeting recently, but it's just like I can't say shit. Oh, Rachel, text me, Rachel, text no, me. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> text me, sis. I just can't wait for you guys to see who who stays and who goes. That's why I asked the question earlier. Like, who would you guys? Mm. Yeah. Well, shit, Rachel. You already know my rule, though. If you do tell me, as long as you say off the record, it's off the record. Okay. Period. You gotta say off the record, though. Okay. You know. All right. Well, let me say it on here off the record. No, excuse. Me. <laughs> no, this is a public platform. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when we on Beagle or we, and, and Aaron, like T T, like. You guys, I love your reviews. You guys gave it to us. Like, I know, and I'm fucking, I live for it. Like, we need to hear that shit. But the bean paid in cheeseburgers bullshit, that shit got me. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I said, I think not. <laughs> well, you know what? Now that you've um, told me that there was some hidden beef too with Blake Marie on that level, then it could have been the, the relationship that person had with her. Because they didn't see eye to eye, you know what I mean. So that could have been the situation. Because this is L.A. honey, I hope a bitch ain't getting paid in cheeseburgers. There was one time we did get some Wendy's, okay. Oh, <laughs> and I swear to God, not four for four, bitch. If it's this one, if it's who I think it is, something tells me motherfucking Jeremy Copeland said something to one of the girls from Dallas, and then the girls from Dallas told you this shit. <laughs> Can't confirm or deny, child. Because one day, about Dallas chasing reality, Dallas, or just someone in Dallas? Period. I don't know. I don't know. I I hear Jeremy's out there fucking with Dallas and girl. I'm chasing just, reality, I'm, Dallas. She's she's talking about. Okay, it's definitely not that thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely not anybody that's related. Jeremy did chasing. buy me Wendy's one day. I think we filmed like. We were. It was like late, and he did buy us Wendy's. Now, if that bitch went and said, "Oh, we paid those bitches in cheeseburgers," I'm gonna have to have a war with that hoe. No, it was a person who actually was directly like working with 
Blake Marie at the time. And apparently that was at a time that she was at her most loopiest because I don't know, but I guess there was some in the beginning because I heard a lot of people came to me. I don't talk a lot of shit because I the girls be in their feelings a lot of times. And I can't, I'm not going to report on something that may just because, bitch, you had a, you and your feelings about the way someone else treated you. I can't, there may not be any validity to that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people came to me and apparently there was a bunch of problems in the beginning of the production with Q not really being around that much. And then I guess Blake Marie was supposedly going to assume the role of executive producer of the franchise. And mm-hmm. that person had a direct relation, a business relationship with Blake Marie. And it, I guess it went south. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's why they were, EPs, they were like, they were sharing it. And in Q not being around is no, is nothing. It's, it's, he was around. You know, when Mm -hmm. it was time for stuff, you know, definitely around. Uh, But definitely she was brought on because there was, you know, he is Q. He got, he has, he's booked and busy. So it's like, yeah, we do need her. We needed Blake. But to say that he was never around is a fucking joke. And And did she have any experience in this? Because I don't, I know of Blake Marie, but I don't know about her. I think she had like um, experience in like um, marketing and like, maybe a business and stuff. So I, in reality television, I don't think so. Not that mm-hmm. I know of, but you know, I fucking miss Blake. No shade, but she just fucking burned the bridge and it's just fucked up. But I just wish her the best. I mean, she just needs to stop with these fucking rumors and shit. Everyone needs to just put a pause. They need to rethink the next, before the next project. And I'll, if this is for anybody, Before your next project, you need to sit down with your motherfucking self and ask, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? And surround yourself with people that are like-minded and also realize that you may not always agree with one another, but bitch, this is the business. We're trying to go somewhere. We're trying to quit our nine to fives. That way we can be the next Andy Cohen, bitch. All these white people have all of these, all these opportunities and resources Anderson Cooper, a lot of the white gays of the world have these opportunities. We don't get that often. And the reason we don't get there is because where there's too much infighting and tearing each other down and crabs in a bucket mentality. <clears throat> we are family, honey. We are dream girls, honey. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm screaming. So, Rachel, who, who would you like to see go? Bitch, now you know I can't say this shit up on here. I'm saying your opinion, not who, not 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 the production meeting, but like your honest opinion. Like who? Honest opinion, but yeah. Ooh. Who would I like to see go? <laughs> right. I would like to see. Fran. Ooh. D Hawkins. Ooh. And Alicia. Hmm. Mm. That's just my opinion, but I mean, I can't. It, it's it's not my fucking choice. But um, Child D. Look, Hawkins then gave y'all that house, and now you want to kick him out? <laughs> okay, girl with them wooden floors and that shit echoed. I'm good. Oh, well, the, the the echo was because of all the goddamn escaped animals trying to get the fuck up out of that house, child, before they come the next thing on the chopping block. Look, I love D. Hawkins. Actually, he was very hospitable. He, he was. I fucking. I thought we were friends at first, bitch. But he showed us true colors. He, you know, and you know, he was definitely, you know, playing playing it up. But um, I do love D. Hawkins actually. And, oh, real oh, quick, Rachel. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Now we have you with us. One thing from the outside looking in. Andre, D. Hawkins, Fly King, and Fran. Transphobic or not? Not. I don't think they're transphobic. I, I I don't think Andre's transphobic. I don't think Fly King's transphobic. Um, I do think Fran and D. Hawkins, their behavior comes off it, it's not it's not acceptable. I mean the things that they, they have said I don't I don't just speaking for myself, again, this is my opinion. Mm. I just didn't think it was appropriate for television um, or on any platform, you know? Right. So it was just like, you guys dug your grave, now you got to kind of lay in it. You know, learn from this. And right. From it. 
because we all fucking make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just think they need to just own their mistakes and learn from it and, and change from it and just learn from it, most importantly. Okay. Well, YB, what about um your your platform? What's next for your platform, YB? Like, what vision do you have for your platform? Honestly, I've learned not to have too many expectations in this. You know, I've been doing this since 2013, and people are just like, "Oh, you're I I haven't just got here," <laughs> and it t- because of the way that I do my commentary and the things that are social issues that I talk about and the different topics that I bring up. It's difficult to get the audience to expand. I just reached a thousand subscribers a couple months ago. So it's just like it's been a slow run. Thank you. It's been a slow run, but I believe the people that are here are here to stay, which is good. But like I really want to go more in depth into the social justice avenue. Definitely want to do more things within the LGBT community. My my Yes God Roundtable will be coming back shortly on the 22nd of this month. Um, I'm going to be starting another channel where I want to do more voiceover work with, you know, crime, mystery kind of, you know, stories and things like that. I just want to do more to educate and to educate myself in the process as well, because I don't think people realize that creators that we learn as we go as well. We're not just preaching to people and spewing our shit onto everybody. We're actually learning as we do things. So I just want to do more things that expose the problems in the world and have these real conversations that we try to shy away from, but do it more in an entertainment aspect. That way I can snatch up the attention of the people because if you're boring, they don't want to watch you. Right. So as long as you're entertaining and you're informative at the same time, anything is possible. So I'm just really taking it one day at a time. I'm not really shooting expectations out because it never works out when you try to and if you don't meet that expectation, you get depressed. Next thing you know, you want to quit YouTube. Lord knows I've been there and done that too. So I had no clue you've been on here since 2013. Wow. Mm-hmm. I had an original. Uh, this was always my main channel, but I was called something else back then. And I used to report on fake ass YouTubers back in the day. I was younger then. I grew up and realized. And then I, I, I deleted all of that shit and I started a new, my new little, you know, Reviews for Chasing Reality web series, G Status, and then I got more into the social justice issues. Mm-hmm. Hey, bitch, you are entertaining, YB. I must say, girl, I love your fucking shows. I be kidding. <laughs> like, just screaming, bitch. I'm dead. Well, thank you. Yes. I'm definitely trying to become a beacon for the community. I, you know, we don't have a lot of us out here, and the ones that are bigger, they don't ever look back to to reach out a hand. So they damn sure don't. That's so that's so sad to me. Like uh, that's that's one thing. I'm... But us over here, we will never be like that. I don't give a fuck if we get three million subscribers. Like we're always going to like fuck with y'all. Yeah, they never they never you know? do, and, and it works my nerves sometimes because it's just like wow. And then they steal from us lower from us. Uh, 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 smaller YouTubers, and I hate that too. Like that's one of the things I despise about Jason Lee, bitch. You're over there, girl. You got all these resources, but now you want to come to our platform and carry your your big name over here. That's great, but you ain't lifting nobody else up in the process. Mm. You know, you too busy beefing with a bunch of bitches who are trying to get where you're at, but you're not trying to help nobody. Yeah, that's the issue I had with um, best gays of the media on Instagram. They. Mm-hmm. Okay, we love we love Gay E Magazine over here. We really do. However, um, the best gays on the media, I did an interview with um, a popular porn star named Armand Rizzo. It went like viral, right? Mm-hmm. Best gays of the media stole that clip, posted it to their Instagram account with over 100,000 people, and then tagged Gay E Magazine as if they were the ones who did the interview. Mm. Oh, wow. Next thing you know, they have like 10,000 followers. It's like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, why would you do that? That's what mm-hmm. I like to the stealing. Like, you know, you know me. I reached out to you. Hey, can I use X, Y, and Z from your interview? I'm not going to take the whole thing. You know, there's a professional way to do stuff exactly. and to still give people the credit that they deserve, especially if your content is solely based on stealing other people's content. Like, right. it's do the right thing and shout them out or give them a link or some credit 
to what they did. They did the heavy lifting for you. All you're doing is doing commentary based on what they already did. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's just, listen, all it is, is like you said, just give credit and don't give credit to another block. That makes no sense. Like, don't give credit to another bitch. This is our hard work. Right. And That's this plagiarism. Is, yeah. It's not fair, and it's really uncouth. And that's another problem in our communities. No one wants to do the hard work that we're doing. They'd rather just do the easy thing by stealing from other people right. and applying it to their own shit. And because they already have the face or they already have their followers up, people are going to believe them before they believe us. And I hate that shit. But that's okay, because that's why TTB legally owns best gays of the media, and they don't even fucking know oh. that thing. <laughs> So let's talk about that. Cheers to that. Ooh. <laughs> That's, <some key>. Ooh. <laughs> That's the key. Bitch, I'm stroking my sideburn. What? <laughs> Stop it, I say. That's the guy. ATB don't play no games. <laughs> uh. Mind you, I don't even think their Instagram account is up anymore. That's the That's the gag. That's actually, I haven't seen them post in a while now that I think about it. Yeah, you know, I went. I went to it the other day, and it was like no post yet. So I don't know what that means. T News Blog is making headways too. I see. That's my other sister blog. We live for them. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, he's gonna be featured on um episode two of How Smart Are You? Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Shout yeah. out to Kerry D, honey. I live for T News too, but I had to get his ass too. You know, he was taking our stories. I had to put it like, hold up, holla, 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 holla. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. And that's the thing too about this whole like world we live in, and it's like, girl, like, do y'all not understand that we're trying to do something for ourselves, mm-hmm. and then when you're out here stealing, like, it's different if you're inspired. That's different, but there's a difference between being inspired and actual stealing. Don't steal. That is people true. work a lot. It takes a long time to become fluid on your platform to know that this is who you are. I've changed a lot over the years trying to find my niche, trying to find what I'm comfortable doing. But don't just come in and steal my shit when it took me a, a couple of years to finally find myself. Right, it's right. It's not fair. <clears throat> or steal my stories or, you know, different things like that. Like, nah, bitch, at least ask for permission and give the girl credit. Hell. Because hmm. if not, I'm going to have to find you and choke you out one of D. Hawkins' dead rats. Huh? Jesus. But he's a sweetheart, though. CJ, um, I think that's his name. CJ Waters. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, I like him. I, I do. Like story him. about one of those rats, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of mad at Dre. I'm kind of mad at Dre Summer for coming for him. Like he went after him real hard. They got beef. Who? Oh wow. December and who? Um, T News. Oh. Like he really, like he really attacked his health status and everything. It was not. It was not a good. It was not a good thing. Mm. Like he really went there. Like Dre Summer has no filter, no shade. Like that's what I love and hate about him at the same time. Right, I, I, yeah. He does have. Well, I just cool. feel like, too, with his power and resource, <coughs> he is, if he would have developed his own blogging style, he would have actually had the end in before any of us because he's already established with these people. If he were to utilize that the right way, he could have been the next T News blog or the next, you know, Dre Simba, the one to remember. Just, you got you, you to capitalize off of your moments. Mm. And I think he's had a, a couple of missed opportunities because of that. You utilize that. You have a lot of, well, you did. I don't know about now, but you had a lot of, you know, I'm not going to say power, but a lot of ways in to people. Mm. <clears throat> Instead of, you know, ripping people down, you could have been u- utilizing your resources to build yourself up or to become the interviewer for most of the web series. Right. To build your and platform. What, what platforms need to do, and I always I try to tell this to people, I told this to a couple of bloggers. Um, like it's great, you have an Instagram following, that's cool. But God forbid your Instagram page goes down and it gets deleted. You don't have you're not known on Twitter, you're not known on Facebook, you're not known on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like you need to have other avenues, like TTP is everywhere. You know, if if we barely use the Instagram page, really, you know what I mean? That shit is private. But we have like 15K on Twitter alone. You know what I mean? So it's just like, we're on YouTube. We're growing on YouTube. You know, we have 4,000 people on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you got to have different outlets to get your stuff, to get, to get your stuff out. And it goes to passion. Like, if you're really passionate about this, you will find and you will make a way to be everywhere. 
And that's something I'm still learning because I just last year really got heavy on my Instagram. Facebook is kind of like null and void these days which mm-hmm. for some reason, but Instagram is where it's at. And just translating your followers across many platforms, I think should be the mission for every creative. But people just don't, again, some people are meant to do this and some people just want to do it because they think it's the thing to do and they right. question why they haven't been successful. Well, you're not successful, bitch, because you're not consistent. And this is obviously what you're not passionate about. Follow what you're passionate about. People want the light, but they don't know what it takes. They, they don't want to go through the darkness to get to the light. Right, and like TTP. TTP is even on Bingo now, y'all. So please follow us over there, okay? So I cannot do Bingo. I, Bingo, whatever <laughs> it is. I used to be, le- a couple months back, I was addicted to the um, the screen recordings. I guess they have a little thing on Insta- on uh, YouTube called Bingo Lives or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Drama, honey. I said, ooh, no man, Pam. I cannot get involved in that. It's so much fun. Yeah, like right. Ra- Rachel, Rachel always comes through with, with me, Aaron, Bubs. We have a good time. Rachel just gathered a bitch the other day on Beagle, right, Rachel? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They gathered her like a motherfucking uh, basket of goodies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel snapped on that bitch. Like, what? <laughs> Wasn't she your friend or something? <laughs> I don't know that bitch. <laughs> there was this one person, I don't know his name, but y'all might know the story. He went to college down here in Florida, a little young boy. He, I guess he's from Atlanta. And some hating ass bitch on Bigo ended up emailing his college and they ended up terminating his scholarship. Oh, yeah, you're talking about, um, what's his name? His name is Chad. Yes, that's his name. Yeah, yeah that's his mm-hmm. name, Chad. Yeah. And I just felt like, wow, girl, like, that's why I try to stay away from certain things because these girls are out here doxing and doing the utmost. And the bitch, I will fly to where you're at and choke you at one of D. Hawkins' dead parents. You know? <laughs> like, I don't have time for stuff like that. Like, oh, this is entertainment, honey. Like, I don't have time to be collecting all the zoo animals underneath the hollow ass floor over there in LA, girl, Damn. to come and okay. hunt you down with. No, man. Because I will I don't come for someone's livelihood or what they got going on because right, you just, right. Man, I hate that kind of shit. This is all fun. Like, have fun, girl. If you can't laugh, and get the fuck out of the building. Yeah, and that's what I feel like some of the girls on Bigo do. Like, when they be reading, I feel like at the end of it, they're like, oh, I like you. Like, I feel like they be getting off. Not getting off, but, like, it's a key for them. But that's what's wrong with the generation. I know it's a lot, that's from a lot of young girls. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, where are the elders to step in and exactly. just say, you know what, bitch? This is not uncouth. This is not how you conduct yourself. You're not going to read me from filth and then at the end say, I think I like you. Oh, bitch, what? What kind of bipolar are you going through? <laughs> That's what they do, though. That's what they do. I can't. I can't be involved in spaces like that because, like, I'm a real person. I have a real life. I have real feelings. And if we're reading each other for filth, then I, we can't be friends then. Even though, like, me and my friends, we'll roast, but we grew up together. I know you like that. Right. But just some bitch from the screen who is just trying to get their beans or fucking yachts or whatever the fuck, the dragons and shit and shields and all that. Like, I ain't got time for all that because you're trying to make that 40000 a month. Speaking of that, how do you guys, um, how do you guys feel about celebrities coming into our fucking space? Like... What is that about? Early with um, Jason Lee's old fuck ass. That old tired ass, a polar bear built bitch. You (laughs) you sit here, even Tamar Braxton's old tired lip ass. You sit here and you already have vast resources. Money Mayweather is putting his dick down your throat every weekend at the gold collection, girl, or whatever that place is called. You got all of this and then you come over here and you soak up what it is that we're trying to do. You steal from us. And you apply it to your own platforms, and it's not right. You're inv- it's literally the invasion, and I don't like that. It's not fair because a lot of the girls that like, we're just we don't have names like that. Where we weren't silver spoon girls. We're not attached to big celebrity names. We're trying to build ourselves, and you just come over here with everything that you have, knowing that because people want a piece of your celebrity or so called celebrity child, you know, you take, you take, 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 but you don't add. And again, like I said, you don't uplift either in, the, in your process. You're not taking none of the girls and mentoring them. Jason Lee ain't coming over here and mentoring. Tamar Braxton ain't over here 
you know, and um, Angela Stan's old fucking hateful mouth ass. You know, you're not adding, you're taking the face there. It's like the Holy Spirit. It's supposed to overflow and touch everything else around mm-hmm. and spill onto everything. Ooh, you mm-hmm. better preach that shit. Okay. Right? I love Tamar. I love Tamar though. And Tamar and Tamar's defense, she did try. Cause with my friend um Kevin, the Scorpion show, um, you know, there was a point where she wanted um Vince to be their manager. And you know, things went a little left, but mm. she at least she at least attempted to take him. And get him on TV. She tried, and mind you, he was even on their show. He was featured on their yeah, show a couple times. So yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. So well, she I did try. anything that's associated with that extinct polar bear, Bill Bibbs. I don't know much oh. about Tamar's involvement in Bega. All I know is that she's attached to that sorry ass um, feed the children, Bill Body Bitch. Who? Jason <laughs> Lee. Mm-hmm. I don't think nobody likes Jason Lee. He's a horrid person. He's very oh. egotistical, egotistical and, and narcissistic as fuck. Yeah. So, but the good thing bad. about it is his decline is slowly happening, and I'm here. Oh for yeah, it. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Get your ass up out of here, bitch! You giving the polar bears are already suffering, girl. Global warming is at an all time motherfucker mm-hmm. right now. You, you need <laughs> and to and do still, and, he's still paying, and and he's still paying for dick. I thought when you be a celebrity, you ain't gotta do all that no more. Oh. But when you're as grotesque as him and you're built like an extinct polar bear, right. you have no choice but to pay. Yeah. But he, can finally, but he can finally see his dick now, so you know he's feeling himself. Child, what dick? That's straight. He got pussy, honey. <laughs> right. I got gender reassignment. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was born. He was he was born a dumb bitch. Oh. Now speaking of but speaking of Jason Lee and, and Cardi B, by the way, what do you think about these people now suing YouTube con- or or trying to sue YouTube content creators? Do you think a lot of people are going to a lot a lot more celebs are going to follow suit with that? Are we in trouble? What's the deal? No, I don't think Honey, we be in mm-hmm. all publicity is good publicity. That's what they always used to say back in the day, right? And I still think it holds true to now. You, <clears throat> first of all. You get to where you're at based off of popularity, people talking about your ass. So if it's good for the goose to talk about you when you're doing good, we got to also talk about your other side as well. I'm not doing my job in the gossip sphere if I'm not touching on every aspect of your your celebrity, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, you do have some bitches on here that fabricate stories for clicks and views and things of that nature. Those whores need to be stopped. (laughs) Right. Now I don't like stuff like that when you create things. Give an example, just... YB. Who, who, who? Well, the truth be told, they say Tasha K does a lot of that. Okay. Mm. The girls are out here creating uh, and fabricating situations just because they want to keep their mighty dollar coming in. Mm. Um, and the courts didn't they just agree with Cardi B in that situation? Sure did, but they're going to trial. It, it'll come out in um, early September, like mid September ish. Okay. So you see where that's going, and it's just like it's too much. And if you don't have that coin, if these people sue your ass and you are told to relinquish the coin, what are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. It's gonna take every, you're little compared to her millions and millions of dollars in, in access to great lawyers. There's right. no point in even crossing that line. Now, if you're reporting on a story that has legitimacy, you've done your research like a good blogger, news reporter should, mm-hmm. you will have no problem. But if you're creating shit that's out of nothing, these people are still people. They might be celebrities, but they're still people. Exactly. So, what do you think about Cardi B coming for um, um, Black Tea Blog now? I heard about that. Um, she doxed her whole information and everything, court cases, everything. Well, I feel like this too. Like, girl, you got too much time on your hands. You're supposed to be making millions. You out here working. A rhythm and flow has a new season coming out. Your husband is starring in a new show soon. You have a lot of issues going on within your infidelity. You got a lot of things going on, girl. She's Make pregnant. Her, you're pregnant, right? You got a lot of stuff happening. Stop paying attention to the peons because that's what they want. Even that that's bad publicity for that person. That person probably has so many subscribers right now because of the situation. Right. You know, so I mean. Stop pointing out all the bad. And then one thing I have to say about that, too, when people are celebrating y'all, you never point that out. But as soon as mm-hmm. someone speaks bad on you or says mm-hmm. something that may not agree with what you got going on, that's when you want to that's when you want to point that person out. Well, either way, you just gave them the love 
that they wanted anyway, whether it was good or bad. <clears throat> it just doesn't. I don't like that. Even me as a, a small commentator for the Chase and Reality brands and different things that I review, I'm only contacted when a lot of times, not all the time, but most of the time when I've said something that a cast member does not agree with. Mm. But when I'm praising you, I don't get that DM or that comment saying, hey, thanks for the review. Yeah. Or I lo love what you said. You know, thank you. I don't ever get none of that. So it's in tandem with that situation. Don't just fuck with me when I'm cussing you out and reading you for filth. Fuck with me when I'm praising you too. Because I know you're now. I know you're watching, bitch. Oh. <clears throat> you know, they're always watching. That's how I feel. But they only want to comment when it's like, okay, it's maybe some misinformation or some some trash, real quick. Oh, I gotta stop this because my name is being slandered. Okay, but I was just praising you last week, bitch. Yeah, but so you didn't like. Me when you have somebody show the duality and like you said, being able to show the good and the bad, that's somebody who's holding you accountable for real in a very clear and unbiased way. So if they choose not to acknowledge the good part, that shows their insecurity because mm. when they get on these shows, people have to understand that they're going to be thousands of eyes on you and not all the eyes are going to like you. So it's in, in some eyes might be able to pick out your insecurities and then drag that out of you. So it's really a test of whether you love yourself or not. And if you ain't willing to deal with this shit on a small scale, I don't know how the fuck a lot of you hoes gonna be able to handle your real big blessing when it come in. Because you can't even appreciate it on a smaller level. So. And another thing to add to that too, like, bitch, be grateful. Weren't you hungry yeah. not too long ago? Weren't you, you know, imagine if some, if some random niggas flooded your pussy, bitch, and you're giving birth to supposed, you know, um, EBT card members, future EBT card members, girl. Like, you were, you were struggling. <laughs> like, let me, you have someone that doesn't even know you talking about you, bitch. You should be grateful because yeah. now you got that shmoney, honey. You're no longer struggling anymore. You're not. You're no longer walking to work, girl. <laughs> Why did you, you know? say that? Oh my god, I'm screaming. It's the truth because these people want to complain. Even like I'm with someone I was talking about the baby and his fuck shit. And I'm, be grateful that you are here because not long ago, honey, you were having to serve drugs on the streets, looking over your shoulder 25 hours a day. Okay, and even though there's only 24 hours in a day, bitch, you was looking over your shoulder 25 hours a day, bitch. And you were smelling like the street urchin that you are. Now you have <laughs> access to clean water. Amen. Now you have access to, you know, better soaps. Amen. God. Now you have better to, you have resources now that you didn't have a couple years ago. Be grateful that you are, right? That, that God or whoever decided to put you in a position to be greater than your past. Shut the fuck up and relish the moment. I had to put that shit out there. I had to put that on the ticker. Giving birth to future EBT car hold. Shout out to EBT. Okay. <laughs> she yeah. saved my life so many times. We appreciate you, girl. Facts. Shout out to her. And the Obama phones. Or him. You know, EBT, who knows? It could be non gender conforming. We don't know what it is, but just shout out to EBT. And the Obama phones. Okay. They helped yeah. a lot of the girls out when they didn't have Wiley. They couldn't even get a Metro, bitch. Mm. Yeah, the Obama phones. <laughs> and That's like burner phones too. Okay, those minute phones at Family Dollar, girl. You got to put forty dollars of credit every month on that bitch just to keep it active. <laughs> mind you, mind you, I feel like people are too prideful. Let me tell you something. I got an Obama phone even when I, even though I still had an already phone. You know what I mean? If it's free, you might as well. I got it because it was free, and I got it because if my phone, if my actual cell phone dies. Like say it's an emergency or whatever, my phone's dead. Hey, I got this extra phone over here for free with minutes, so you know. Might as well. It, every time my card is replenished in the name of Jesus, my my minutes are replenished in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, I like free. I like free everything. I'm not too prideful for shit. I remember um, I had a homeless friend. I don't know where he's at now, but this was years ago, and he used to you know eat at the homeless shelter. They used to have a place where they could go and eat um lunch. Mm hmm. And I used to stand on that line with him. So I, I could go, I could go pay for a meal, but you know, he's I'm I'm gonna be with him. We're gonna we're gonna eat we're gonna eat. Okay. People forget where they come from sometimes. I remember way back in the day, times were rough when I was like 18. I was fresh out of foster care. Things were rough. <laughs> I was at that church too, getting those damn MREs that they was giving out to the girls and them old ass cakes, bitch. 
All you do have to do mm. is put them in the microwave for a minute, get you a little scoop of ice cream, and it comes back to life. Amen. Oh, you, you <laughs> cannot forget where we come from. We cannot forget where we come from. And that's what a lot of these celebrities get. They forget where they come from. Jason Lee, you were shot at, bitch. Your brother died in front of you, bitch. Your fucking drug addicted mother abused you to the point where you had to go to foster care, bitch. Mm-hmm. So remember where you come from while you're out here trying to talk down on these little young gay boys who look up to you that you're also utilizing for sexual favors. So hurt people do Ooh, hurt yes, people. Yes, man. Allegedly. Mind you, mind you, YP, I'm still like that though. Like every Thanksgiving, when they when they offer like the free turkeys at the church, we can go get like free stuff. Hmm. Bitch, best believe I'm there. It's a free turkey, and sometimes they'll give you a ham too. Yes, like I go to these. Places, I don't give a fuck. I can. I can buy my own turkey, but bitch, they give it out free. We have. We having two turkeys this year, bitch. What's good? Hello. Actually, save one turkey for Thanksgiving, and then save the ham for um Christmas. Hello. Yeah. Like, that shit. You gotta utilize, you know, and thank God there are places out there that still give a fuck to actually have situations like nowadays. Resources are so depleted. You can't even call 411, bitch, to get a goddamn oh. rental assistance these days or to get a light bill payment. So if these people are out here giving, go ahead and receive. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, what before- happens, you're going to miss out your blessing and be a hungry ass bitch for the rest of the year. Okay. <laughs> uh, before we get out of here, but speaking of, uh, uh, you said resources plenishing and whatever, um, how do you guys feel about the, the downfall of the lesbians and the rise of the gays? Hmm? Huh? Well, were the lesbians ever up? I mean, you know, there was a point where, like, there was so many lesbian bars. We have, like, two in America now. There used to be, like, you know, it was like, oh, if you're a lesbian, it's cool. But if you're a gay guy, it's like, uh, uh, uh. And now it's like, if you're a gay guy, it's like, we're winning right now. And the lesbians are, like, becoming obsolete. Jesus. Hmm. I'm going to send it back to the Lord. I this was last I'll soon be first. Okay. True. True. I mean... And to be honest, I even hate that because we're all part of the spectrum. Right, right. There's always been that divide amongst us for some weird reason. But I I don't feel good about that because I never knew that about the lesbian bar situation and all that kind of stuff. I feel bad because I feel like everyone that's part of the spectrum spectrum should have a safe place to go Mm -hmm. and to be free to be themselves. So that's kind of sad when you think about it because I don't look at my life as a gay man as I have a one up on somebody. Or I have to be better than my lesbian counterparts or my queer counterparts. I don't look at my life that way. Like, I'm just living, girl. And I really, what I have, I want everyone to have. I want you to love yourself. I want you to find places where you feel safe and you see other people like yourself. So it's actually kind of sad to hear that news, to be honest with you. Yeah, shout out to um, gayemagazine.com for sharing that story the other day. Um, You know, there's there's allegedly only two um, lesbian bars in the whole United States of America. And can we be honest about lesbians just real quick? Like, I I know they may not see it this way or even accept this rule of thumb, but as far as the heterosexual community, they can go anywhere and be accepted. It's us that has that problem. I'm so happy you said that because I think that's where the decline is coming from. Yeah. They can go into the, into the hetero bars and that shit's hot. That shit looks good, especially if you're a femme lesbian. It's, no one's going to know unless you open your mouth or, or, or openly kissing a girl. Yeah. So right. it's 10 times more acceptable than it is for us. Like, it actually, now that you say it, it actually sucks for us that we have to have more spaces for us because that just shows the decline in the acceptance of being in heterosexual spaces. Mm. Which uh, is perceptive as fuck. How do you guys feel about us? Being, it's more like in black, we're all black people up here, right? Correct? Yes. Everybody's I'm, black. I'm Latina. You know? You're black. Okay, yeah, you're great. Black. Hello. Yeah. Black. Period. So, Welcome to the barbecue. Okay, so how, how do you guys feel that we're not accepted in our in our own community? Like, I, I don't feel safe. Um, oh, honey, that's you. Are you ready to be here for another hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it as short as I can, real quick. The problem with the black community as a whole is we have to learn to tear down the old ways. See, what black people don't want to ever accept, and this is the first step to getting to that place of peace that we're talking about here, we have to accept the fact, and black people don't do this, is accept that the rule, the policy, the procedure, everything that you think that that is your own right now came from white supremacy. Mm. That is not everything. So the idea of homophobia is also from white supremacy. 
if we don't delete that way of thinking and come up with our own ways, we're not going to ever be able to get to the point where we can accept our own fellow black and brown brothers and sisters of the spectrum. That comes from that. That slave mentality, that whooping your kids mentality, it's the same thing with the homophobia and the transphobia of it all. It's that whole, like, okay, and it's also rooted in fucking religious beliefs that really are not black people's own as well. Christianity was beat into our ancestors, so the fact that we even accept a lot of this bullshit pisses me the hell off because it's like, girl, it didn't make it make sense for me. Yeah, a lot of these early frameworks for thinking in our society was be- is built off of some fucking white supremacy, like because white people are always at the top of the you know of the ladder, or or females and minorities were always just you know stratified, basically like mm-hmm. they're put at a different level. Or not, you know, so all these these ways for thinking are just really just their ways to just yeah. lead people blindly. And like, if people don't like educate themselves or wake up, then they get led blindly by all these old archaic ways that are really rooted in white supremacy. Yeah, that social conditioning is a motherfucker. And we're talking about eons of social conditioning that's going to take for another couple of eons to root it all out. And it's good that we're having these conversations and that they've been put on a grand scale for people to really think about. But black people as a whole need to, again, they need to really snap out its ego, its pride, and it's also the idea that femininity or gay gay shit is rooted in weakness, and that's not the case. If people do their research, they'll find many ancient tribes in Africa praise femininity. They praise, you know, homosexuality in a lot of ways. They actually worship gods and different deities that represented that as well. And for whatever the life of me, people try to erase that history so that they can create their own. Because mind you, it is history. History is written by those who win. Right. And who's always winning? White people. <laughs> Do you guys think that's why uh, more black people are dating white people outside of their race? Because, you know, in our, in our community, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people are so stagnant in their ideas and their thoughts. And let's be honest here, within the white community, they're a, little, they're a, little bit more, they're a lot more open-minded than we are. More liberal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, Bubs, answer that, because I think you have a good perspective on stuff. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I said that one more time. I was on Instagram, so I said one time trap. <laughs> um, why do you uh do you think black people are dating um outside of their race, like with white people? Because you know, white people are more open minded than the black community. You know what I mean? In, in a sense, to, yeah, to a lot of things. Uh, I feel like that could be the case depending on how you look at it. Unfortunately, a lot of us we still have this internalized. Uh, hatred and ignorance to our own people when we have these different stereotypes and perspectives of how we think black people uh, should act and should be. But at the same time, they can't get mad at black people who don't express a higher way of thinking if they try to and they get demonized for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Or they're made fun of or they're ostracized for it. Like, um, for example, if a black man decides that he wants to uh, color his hair and wear his hair green automatically it's a problem, it's an issue but a white man can have all different colors of the rainbow in his hair and it's still okay he's still considered mass, you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. those type of things so I think we have to challenge uh, these old ways and there are some people saying look I ain't got time bitch if, if, if Tom or Bill or Peter can love me the way that I deserve to be loved I'm going to receive that as well so I think it really depends, but I think the more education that we have, the more conversations we have around these things to create the space and the, and the opportunity for change for our minds and our consciousness to elevate, to receive more uh, things in a fruitful and life-giving way, um, that's the only way that we're going to be able to have those things. So. Hmm. I always hate it. I always hate the whole, oh, you talk, you talk white, you're not, you, know, you speak proper. Like, how, how the fuck do you want me to speak? Mm. Again, like uh, like uh, YB said, it's that social conditioning, mm-hmm. social conditioning. Like anything proper, anything good, anything standing and upright is white. White is right, and everything else is not. Mm. That's and it's the sad so funny. Part. It's so funny because in the whole world, there's all these different societies, right? So in one society, what is looked at as deviant, 
behavior may not be looked at like that in a diff- in another society. Yeah, Facts. That's like that's very true. You know, some freaking people in like I don't know what is it like some other country like they they eat this food and like the women in the village spit in it and it's like that's disgusting as fuck to me but that's not (laughs) they don't consider that behavior odd you know that's even the treatment of children even the raising of kids like over here wait a minute i'm sorry i'm sorry why hold on can we really (laughs) can we unpack that where the fuck are they spitting in food so i will never go there Uh, it's like a it's like a latin uh uh, what is it called? Oh gosh! Do you know what country? Yes, I'm trying to think of the name. Bitch, I travel. I need to know it's where it's a to Spanish play. country or like a something type like of country. South America? No, it's it's more on the other side of the globe, like uh, like Spain. No, 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 no. It's like the Philippines, because um, there's some nasty motherfuckers in the Philippines. <laughs> 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 Oh, fuck it. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, YB. Continue. I just, I'm, I need, I wanted to know where the fuck they spitting at. Like, ew. Well, no, just to, to the point about the difference. And like over here, we have a problem with affection, especially in the black community. Yeah. But if you look over there, people would think that there was incest going on in like Greece and Africa and like the Middle East. The way that they show affection to their children mm-hmm. is different than over here in the West. And it, 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 it bothers the fuck out of me because if you're too close to your son, you're looked at as a pedophile. Yeah. You know, but over there, that's just what love looks like to them. And, they're, and that's why they're raised a lot better than what we are. Because we're afraid to love over here because of all of the stigmas that are put on there. And it's just like, girl. Right. Even like recently with like the rapper 42 Doug, like Mm -hmm. he got in trouble because he was like licking on his son, neck in a way that's kind of like, ugh, like, ugh, dad, stop like being funny. Of course, it's all here we go with this game. Just automatically deemed as something negative. It's like, damn, so y'all not used to fathers showing affection? That's the problem now? That's what? That definitely shows the leak in in the black building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's our problem, our lack of love, and that's why we have this hatred towards the 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 gays and the LGBT community because it's just like, girl, like just because I'm showing you love doesn't mean that this is X, Y, and Z. This is just love, right? And I <laughs> you think know, for if- a lot of het- a heterosexual men too, it's kind of like I-, I understand that during slavery we didn't really have the chance to really express or feel our emotion because it was about survival. But it's right. like now we've gotten to a place where we can actually learn to breathe and to actually yeah. live and not just survive. So it's like we 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 know as black people we can survive. We've been through five hundred plus years of oppression and we still here. They shook by our resilience and our determination. But it's like now we can turn that around and use it for something of good because it's like eventually the hope and the dream of the slaves has to manifest. It has to happen some way. So I think once but again... Just like white people, though, we need a role model for that. And yeah. we've yet to really see role models in the black sphere that make it okay to do yeah. those things. White people yeah. have always had their heroes, but black people, we don't have no one to look to to say, okay, it is okay to be affectionate to your children. It is okay to actually be a father in the home yeah. with the wife. And even if you're not with the wife, that you can still be a father to your kids. Right. Like, again, there's a lot of unlearned behaviors that we have to we have to get involved in, honey, because it's just going to be a slow decline from there. Like, we're free now, and I, and I love that idea that we can do a lot better now, but mm-hmm. who's going to start those conversations? And unfortunately, we live in a world where if the who we consider to be that top dog, like Al Sharpton or Martin Luther King or whoever the fuck, is the representation of the Black Caucus, right? Mm-hmm. If they're not going to lead that way, who, we're, we're not going to follow. It's unfortunate, though, that we don't just do it individually just because we, we, can, we see that it would do us better in our homes. Because if you look at the history, they've done, white people have done exactly what they sought out to do is is destroy the black and brown home. Mm. And we're not looking at that as something that's a real thing. And how do, okay, we see it now. How do we repair that? In order to repair that, we have to search deep. And black people, for some reason, we're the only race that does not like to look that deep. No, because I think, because as far as, um, Black people, like, once again, we've been surviving for so long. We just want to feel good. We're tired of dealing yeah. with shit. We're tired of always having to do it. But once again, we have to be able to find that freedom within ourselves. If we still Amen. wait for white America 
to rectify what they've done. We'll be waiting for another 500 plus. Right. And like you said, we're in a place now where black people, we are free and we have one thing that we didn't have before, which was money and resources. Which yeah. is why we have to be responsible of holding all of our black celebrities, athletes, all the people who have a piece of this influence and power to be able to hold them accountable. Because it's like, nigga, first of all, like you said, you don't forget where you came from. Yeah. Everybody want to leave the hood and leave everybody in the hood. No, you're supposed to take that same money to be able to pour into those hoods to give resources and, mm. and, and give um, solutions to people so that they can really change their lives. And it's so crazy. I was talking to, um, I think it was Russell or somebody else earlier today, and I was saying it's so crazy. They the point in with the black community, I can't hear we were a community, so it was a neighborhood. We looked out for each other. Now that neighbor aspect is removed and now it's just the fucking hood. So we're mm-hmm. living that reality and it's so sad. But once again, like, we have to continue to be the change that we seek. Like, mm-hmm. Martin Luther King didn't wait for Martin Luther King. He became Martin Luther King. But yeah. we're, we're at a point where we have to find the civil rights leader or the leader in all of us because yeah. one of my favorite shows, um, I think it was called Underground, there was an episode with Harriet Tubman. She was giving her speech in secrecy. There was one point at the end where she looked at the camera and she said something along the lines of, look, at this point in time, can't nobody sit on the bench. Can't nobody sit on the bench. Everybody is going to have to come together. We They, they always kill our leaders. And we're always in shambles. They can't kill all of us. They're trying to slowly, but they can't kill all of us. And once we come together in unity, that's when we'll be able to make change for real. But it's not going to happen until we come together. That's it. It's not going to happen for various reasons. Number one, I feel like a lot of a lot of us have been conditioned since we were younger to, you know, you know what the parents used to say, oh, whatever happens in this house stays in this house. So we grow up and we don't want to we don't want to go to therapy. We don't want to express ourselves. We don't want to buy people who, who is important for people to share their experiences because what that does that inspires people to say you know what let me look at this in a different way that benefits me like even me before i came out there was a youtuber i used to watch named sarcas who's an open lesbian there were so many videos and this is like 20 fucking uh uh what 20 uh 2007 2008 around that time like she would have conversations about religion and sexuality and get very deep and it really inspired me to be like you know what Instead of following the teachings and an indoctrination like so many other people and be a down low nigga in the motherfucking church, let me go ahead and study to show thyself approved. And when I did, I actually left the religion. That was the best decision I ever made. But if I had not watched her video, if I had not listened to Tone, aka B Slay's testimony, I wouldn't be able to be where I am now. So even though it may not seem like it's changing, that's why we have to be that change. Because it's I'm, it was a lot of people who didn't think they'll ever live to see a black president, and look what happened. There are so many. There were so many slaves who didn't think that they would be free, but look what happened. So the dream is a reality. It's about how bad do you want to manifest it. That's the reason I um, switched up my style of being the YouTuber that I am now because. I realized that you don't know who you're touching. You don't know who you're inspiring. And if I look at my life and the difficulties that I've been through, if I could just share a semblance of that experience, you don't know who's going to be triggered. And so if you told, in the past couple of years, I get hit up randomly by people saying, hey, I don't comment. You wouldn't even know that I was a subscriber. But your commentary did X, Y, and Z for me, and I really appreciate that. That's the prize right there. (laughs) You know, to know that you have an ability to really, again, sharing is caring, and sharing in your experience can really help uplift other people. You don't know what people are going through. I look to YouTube as my outlet. So that's when I tell people, be mindful, because what you're speaking has power. Yes. And, and how you're saying what you're saying has power and a lot of weight to it. And you don't know who you're affecting by your words. So being an influencer is is a serious job. And I really hope that everybody takes it seriously because your commentary could either give life or death to a person. Absolutely. I mean, look at these pastors. Like, how many, how many times have these pastors said things to people in the LGBT community, and that was the last thing you heard of them before they killed themselves? Yeah. Well, before they ended up killing somebody else. Like these, but that's why, once again, self-love is so important because self-love mm. means that 
no matter what happens outside of me because everything outside of me will always change. I can't control that change. But I can control my thoughts and my emotions about the change around me. And that means that I have the free will to always choose love and to choose peace that passes all understanding. But see, we're mm. teaching that now. And that's the thing about spirit, like, and the thing about faith. We're being called into a higher place now where energetically our consciousness is being called. And I think 2020 really woke, in, woke er- a lot of people up. Because it sat everybody down. People died during that time. People's marriages disintegrated during that time. It was a lot of exposure. And that's why people wanted to, to open the country up so fast. Because it's like, I don't want to sit down and deal with my own shit. Not knowing that that was grace and mercy for you to fix your shit. Because now going forward, whatever you manifest in your life, that's on you. Because you allowed that to happen by the way that you think and the way that you feel. When you have a power to change all of that. So change is possible. Change is always possible. There is no such thing as impossible. Anything is possible. I like what um, Ashley Nicole says. She says, we could easily stop poverty and hungry, but too much greed and people hoarding money. I totally agree with that. And I can't tell the next person what to do with their money, but it really irks me when somebody spends like $500,000 on a chain or something. It's like, you, could, you know what you could do with that money? Just don't. I believe who was that recently that just bought a real expensive chain? It was like a two million dollar chain. Was that Cardi B? Just stupid. It was somebody. And I was like, girl, like, but five years ago you were a stripper, like wearing those dollar store shoes. Like, I don't get like again. Remember where you come from. That way you can fund the dreams of tomorrow. Or help a young little girl or a young man in their dream. That's why I love when I hear like Nikki or someone paying someone's college tuition, or you know, like utilize your power for good because you're going to get that back anyway. Yes. You know, you, there's a lot of the wealth going on around here in the black community, and because we're not used to having stuff, we're so stingy and greedy. Mm. You know, that's what I hated. Like if if we would have got our forty acres in a mule back then, honey, we wouldn't be so crab in a barrel kind of mentality right now. We, because everyone would have experienced what wealth or what having money would look like, you know. And it's just, it, but I hope people understand that that's the stage that was intentionally set by white supremacy. You know, the, it it sucks that the black and brown homes have to fight the way that we have to fight in order to get some type of equality. And we're not even asking for a lot. <laughs> we're just asking enough to be comfortable, bitch. Enough that we can have the same opportunities our white counterparts and our other counterparts have. And to that's why we're pent up against each other. Yeah, and it's, for me, it's not what you do; it's how you do it. Like I love diamonds, I love jewelry. I think they're great, but I'm not. I have a certain a limit that I'm not going above spending on any of that stuff. And that's well, just I, me. I do that now, even with the basic cheap stuff. I'm like, okay, if I spend this twenty dollars at Taco Bell. I could easily go to Publix or Walmart and buy me a couple of things that'll last me three days versus this one meal that's going to last me one day. Right, right. So I feel like excess is what breeds a lot of the fuckery that goes on. You know, just do just enough. Because that's because white people, let's be honest here, like a lot of people didn't know, uh, what's his name? He's dead now, uh, the creator of Apple. Oh, I need to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. While walking around here dressed like grandfather time, child, oh. you know, that is a billionaire. Come on now. Like, Steve Jobs. Yeah, those are the people we need to be looking for. Like, Bill Gates is a whole goddamn assistant living nurse. He'd be dressing like he worked at an assistant living place, honey. But that was a billionaire, bitch. Oh. Like, Wait, is somebody laughing or is Aaron snoring? I'm laughing. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it me? But some kind of sounds like there's some static in it. Or is that just me? No, that's been happening for a minute now. Yeah, it might be my fan. Yeah. My fan is blowing on me. You know, I'm a riot child. I carry a fan everywhere with me, honey. Yeah. Do you sweat easily? I do. I, I am a sweating it. ass bitch. I, 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 I sweat. Right okay. I do too. And there's a name. Of, I forgot the name for people like us who sweat a lot. Damn, what is the name? It's it's a weird name. And I get yeah. hot easy. I get really hot. I had literally I had to put my AC on sixty four degrees. Mm. Yeah, and I like sleeping in the cold. I cannot sleep in the heat. Hell no. Yeah, I have to be in the cold. Yeah. Preferably with someone's hand on my ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amen. Mm. Yes. 
Now, before we get out of here, where's everybody located? I live in South Florida. Shut up. Okay. South Florida, honey. Now, where is South Florida? Like, what part of Florida is that? Palm Beach. Okay. I actually don't live too far from um, Trump's old sorry ass. Oh. Do you go to Miami a lot? No, Miami people always say that. You know, Miami's like an hour from me. But um, I do not. I'm not a hangout kind of guy. I'm gonna be honest. With you. I don't go to clubs. I don't go to. I go to a bar every blue moon. But have I don't you really. Ever been to I'm, Disney World. I have been to Disney World. I despise that place. Ooh. I want to go. To I want to go to Universal Studios. I don't have time for children. Get those motherfuckers away from me. I don't have time for large crowds because my anxiety goes to flaring up, and I think everybody's out to get me. Um, I just don't have time for that. And plus, many moons ago, when I was a real fat bitch, they tried my life and told me I couldn't get on a ride. <laughs> get out of here! Man. I mean, the thing wouldn't fold over. The little safety belt thing wouldn't fold over. They said, "Sir, we're sorry." I said, "Bitch, I'm sorry too, because you ain't gonna embarrass me in front of all my people, bitch." Not they tried your life. They tried my entire existence. Let me feel so bad about myself. While I ate a big ass turkey leg on the ass. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Honey, they tried my life, honey. Were you born? I mean, were you born a bigger? You know, a lot of people are born bigger. I love it. Believe it or not, I was premature. I was actually supposed to die as a baby. I was very small. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me and my uh, sorry ass mother were supposed to die, child. Oh. <laughs> That's 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 mm-hmm. Both of y'all. We were supposed to go. I would think I was like four, three or four months early. Oh, but yeah, I was in the hospital for a long time when I was a baby. It was surprising. I didn't get my gross first until I was like 15, 16. I had two of them back to back. I was gonna be I thought I was gonna be a short and fat Elmer Fudd looking motherfucker. Oh. But I'm glad, honey, because okay, sprouted. That glow up was real. I was so grateful. I was like, ooh, thank you, Jesus, because bitch. I don't have time for no short wobbly bitch. Uh-uh. I'm dead. Well, somebody, yeah, my sister, my it, sister was a heavy set, a heavy set girl as a like as a child, but then she grew out of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so that's what I meant by like being born with it, not 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 necessarily from birth, but like growing up as a kid. But you know, well, there was a lot of stuff there too. I actually was a smaller kid, but when I got into my teen years dealing with battling depression and bipolar disorder. They put me on a lot of medications, and back then, you know, they were putting you on everything. And that shit made me gain a lot of fucking weight. I was like 350 pounds when I was like 17. Oh, wow. I I had necks to give, honey. I had knees to give. I had wings, bitch. I didn't need no Red Bull, okay? It was a lot. But I lost a lot of that weight since then, thank God. thank God. I had to get myself off that medicine. Yeah, those medicines, they'll fucking blow you up. Yeah, I turned, uh, once I was 17, I realized all of that was like fucking me up. I quit that, and that's when I started smoking weed, child, and it changed my life. Amen. So, amen. Um, amen to the amen. That's the medicine for bipolar and depression. Amen. Yes, yeah, for the hell, okay? Yeah. I just want to roll it, roll it. Sorry. Here he go. That's my song. That's my song. I just hate the fact that weight takes forever to leave your body. Like, what the fuck? You know, it's humbling, though. Because, you know, I don't know if y'all follow me. I'm on my little health and wellness journey myself and going to the gym and eating better and eating healthier foods. And it's humbling. Like, and even if I was a rich bitch, I don't believe in surgeries any fucking way because I see the downfall of that. And when you become dependent on that, that's just, you no. Know, you feel better when you just lose it all yourself. You go through that process. And it's not just about losing weight. It's about just eating better and having a healthier lifestyle. That weight is automatically going to come off. Yeah. You know, I feel better. I, feel, I can touch my toes. Hello, God, honey. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Bitch, okay. I can do all kinds of things. But I've always been that way. I was in martial arts and boxing growing up. So, I mean, I've always been a, a what do they call that? A stretchy kind of bitch. Hello, God. So. Hell, I'm over it. I've been trying to lose, I'm trying to lose this quarantine weight and nothing is happening. So, Detox. I've been doing these juices, honey. And they, they will flow through you like the spirit. Mm. They will throw through you, flow through you. Yeah, I'm 34, Ashley. I got a slow metabolism. 
before kind of we get to 40, that's my mission because you know it slows as we get older. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying, I'm 33 now, I'll be 34 next year. I'm trying to hit that mark now. That way I can train my metabolism to be faster. Because yes. that slow shit, uh uh-uh, uh, I don't have time for that. Because I can eat a cheeseburger right now and put on five pounds, and that's not fair. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's not fair. I feel bloated. I'm just like, okay, girl, I had a trade appointment, but now that trade appointment's been canceled because the peer for men, the peer for men didn't kick in fast enough, child. So, because okay. my digestive system is all fucked up, but it's much better now. Eating healthier, salads, smoothies, let that shit flow through you. You'll have a better digestive system. Your metabolism will kick up. It's a lot of research involved, but it's well worth it because there are foods you can eat that'll boost your metabolism. Well, I can't it. say I'm on this new diet. It's called hemorrhoids. I lost 11 pounds. Yes, God. It's called what? Hemorrhoids. hemorrhoids. Oh, girl, I <laughs> suffered that day <laughs> many months ago, <laughs> honey. Thanks, hemorrhoids. Yeah. I'm um, screaming. I had, an anal, I had an anal fissure years ago. Let me tell you, when you have to buy a special pillow to put in your driver's seat, bitch, you know you got a problem. Oh no! Who was trying to fish in your anal cavity? I told you, I told you, I'm Beagle. I scratched my hole years ago, and I, when I tell you, I was out for three months. Like I couldn't go nowhere. Playing with that pussy, yes, ma'am. <laughs> that was wiping my ass. Yes, uh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I had a piece of trade a long time ago who had these fingernails trying to finger me with them sharp ass nails. Bitch, Ooh. I didn't ask Lord Voldemort to finger my pussy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that big ass smell away, honey. And I swear that's what started my anal fusion because I thought I had hemorrhoids too, but I had them checked. That's the most embarrassing thing of the doctor's office. Try to spread it wide open for the doctor, honey. Uh. And he was like, no, you just got a seizure. And I'm like, a seizure? That small-ass microscopic cut can make me feel like I just want to rip out my own fucking bowels, bitch? Yes, it's so painful. It's so painful. I had to buy a pillow for my driver's seat. I had to start sleeping on my stomach and shit. There was a, I couldn't have sex for the longest because, bitch, it ain't happening. Yes, bro. I, I just tweeted that I felt like the Virgin Mary. It's been like... Warm baths with lemon actually really helps soothe it and you gotta massage it and plus I used to feel embarrassed going to Walgreens buying those goddamn um the suppositories honey. Oh Jesus. Yes. I used to put salt was some type of salt in the tub that worked for me. Epsom, Epsom salt. salt. And I was in the tub I was in the tub for hours. Like I would kept <laughs> like when the water get cold I put it hot again. Like I was not getting out of that tub. Um, and let's normalize these conversations because the girls in the community act like they're above reproach. I'm like, girl, you know, you're gonna have an issue with two girl. Like, come yes, on, man. Let's be honest. Like, I was scared. I thought I had HIV, girl. I said I have gonorrhea or some anal warts. Girl. I was like, because Trey came over and only played with my pussy up from the outside. So, and there's no, there's no insertion. You know, maybe there's a little uh, fellatio going on. But so, bitch, I was yeah. scared. I got all my tests. I said. Ugh. Lord Jesus. I even got me to the point where, nigga, I got to check your mouth because these niggas don't brush their teeth no more. They don't lift the ring no more, honey. <laughs> they don't wash their hands or clean their fingernails. If you ever see a nigga with that dirt and that ball juice up underneath their fingernails, yes. send them back to the bathroom immediately or send them at your house because right. it's not conducive to a healthy sex life. Yeah, or uh, you could just normalize saying, hey, you know what, let's take a shower together. Let's let's do some sexy shit in the shower. Loki, I'm good. Ass. I don't want to wipe nobody there, especially random trade. Like you got to do that. But you know what you're coming for. You know what you're coming for. Do that shit before you get to my house. I turned away a uh, blood one time. I don't ever put his business out there, but he was fine as a motherfucker. He had <laughs> dick for days. Honey, when I say the journey was long on that dick, but as soon as he pulled them pants down, and I smelt that odor, like he just Ooh. came from running a train on the fucking wily coyote girl no ma'am Ooh. i sent that bitch home he said oh i could just use the bathroom no puss ass nigga you <laughs> should have you knew what you were coming over here for honey you the same way right. if i would have came out with a dirty puss if your motherfucking ass would have smelled something on me or you would have you would have been talking about me like a dog and told me to get the fuck up out of your home so i'm doing the same thing to you that's so embarrassing though like how you show up like that I'm just not thinking one. Mm-hmm. So horny, just not even thinking. Now he was dressed nice, nice car, nice everything. But honey, he dropped them pants, and I, I smelled. That's oh no, 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 no! You better get that away from me. I don't do that. 
what kind of girl do you take me for? I know I just met you on Jack, honey, but <laughs> I know I'm a whore, but I'm not a filthy whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some caveman ass niggas that love that nasty shit, man. I could just use a bath and uh, and then the taking showers. I learned that a long time ago. Some of these niggas be really dirty. You ain't gonna mess up my shower, girl. You guys don't get scared to meet up with random men on Jack. I don't meet up with random niggas like that. For me, um, back in the day, well, last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, there, see, when you have the whole armor of God in your purse, you don't have to worry. That's true. That's true. Um, I have two armors of God. One's name is Smith and Weston. The other one is Glock. Amen to the Jesus. And I have a few Chinese throwing stars just in case. Oh. Um, okay. And a samurai sword just in case as well. Um, it's it's scary, but I'm... Sound like Fran's situation. Ashley is a key. I just, you know... Yes, it's dangerous. Yes, there is this thing that comes over me when I'm about to. Not anymore. I'm, you know, back in the day. But I used to do the chat line thing and the, the jack and the grinders and things of that nature and the POFs and all that shit. There is this thing that comes over me like a worry because I do hear the stories, girls getting robbed, getting killed, all that kind of shit. Jumped and all that shit. But I, is it weird that I have that discernment? To where if I feel some type of way, I don't go through it. Yeah, that's good. That's and really most good. of them, all of the men that I have met up with, I've never had a bad experience like that with. Because my spirit picks up on like, okay, is this the right, you know? It's weird. I'm not saying I'm perfect or above all that shit, but there have been plenty of times where I've denied niggas because my spirit didn't sit right with me. Mm. You have to, though. But I do warn the kids, be mindful. This is a different day. Back then, niggas weren't focused on, like, they just wanted a nut. Now they want a nut, and they want to rob your ass. Damn. Mm. They're doing that Grand Theft Auto shit, because on Grand Theft Auto, they used to pick up prostitutes, fuck them, and then kill them and get their money back. Oh, no. That's what them all was doing, yeah. Oh, man. I used to do that on And YouTube. nowadays, Ooh. too, you have a lot of the gays in the community and just LGBT, period, that they give it all a bad name. Like, some of the girls they pay, they pay to play. Mm. And now that nigga, that's his first experience. They think all of us are like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So now that nigga, now he meets up with you, he thinks that you're gonna pay him or you're gonna treat him to something that because that's what the old queens did for him. Nah, bitch, that's not in the house played over here. They don't get their way, now they wanna rob your ass. You, you know what's a big what, I'm sorry, who want, go ahead, continue. No, that's why I was, I was gonna say. That's why whenever they're like, "Well, send me a pic, send me, uh, send me some news, send me the or all this request, bitch." The first thing I say is, "And you got money?" Oh. <laughs> okay, because we're not gonna play the whole uh, confusion game. Okay, yeah, no one has time for that. I'm not paying to play. I paid him a quarter one time. I flicked it at his fucking head and told him to get the fuck out of my house. But that's the best as close as paying ever came. Because when we were done, he was like, okay, he held his hand. I said, what you holding your hand out for? He said, oh, this is $20. I said, first of all, that's cheap. <laughs> You're a cheap whore. Ooh. Second of all, I'll be right back. I bitch, I'm with my motherfucking little change purse. Bitch, my coach changed first, honey, and I flicked that quarter right in his head. To this day, he probably got that stain of Washington built in his motherfucking pain, <laughs> honey. It did get I am screaming, not a quarter. But did TSA quarter. You teach them in the beginning that you get your money up front? Run me that so before anything happened. I, I am screaming. Pay. He's a fucking quarter. Okay, low, low key. A tray came over, you guys. I opened the door and I wasn't gonna let him just walk in, but he chose to fucking just walk in because mm-hmm. normally I'll open the door and be like, oh, Where's the money? Like, you're not coming in without the money. But bitch, he didn't fucking walk in. Like, I was kind of like thrown back. And he said, um, I'm like, Do you have the money? He's like, oh, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm like, okay, then you can go. <laughs> and he, right at the fucking, you know, it was kind of a sketchy situation I put myself in, but I still stood my ground. I'm like, well, you can go. Like, there's the door. He just came in, and you can go. I do tell people, be careful, be mindful, but you also have to take responsibility for your actions, too. Bubs, the noise is coming from you, ho. Oh, it stopped now. 
Yeah, yeah, I was testing everybody's mic. I was muting everybody to see where the noise was coming from. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah. I, I, just be careful. I be mindful. I still when I mute my mic. Honestly, after this little anal fissure, uh, I don't hear anything, Bubs. Uh, hemorrhoid, whatever that I got from this trade, I'm I'm really I feel like I can take a break. Um, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you right, you right, you right. <laughs> yeah, you ain't got no choice, honey, because ain't no pleasure you gonna be felt right. for a while. No, you right. I guess what I meant to say is with my pussy heels, which I'm, it might still be on vacation. Okay. Let me tell you, my anal fissure lasted about I want to say six months, almost a year actually. And Ooh. I was so, even afterwards, I was so scared because I was like, girl, like, I don't ever want to feel that pain again. Right. It took me a while, but this Haitian daddy huh, put the island on my motherfucking ass and let me know that I was okay to partake in, <laughs> in, the, in the play. But soothing, and I learned to, lubrication is key. No, don't mm. let these niggas dry you out. Don't let these niggas right. go and dry. Don't. Even if you're playing with yourself, don't do it dry. Always have some type of lubrication. Um, even coconut oil is a wonderful, natural source of a lubrication that's really good, and it'll moisturize you and not take away. Because a lot of these lubrications, even mostly the water-based ones, they take away your, your natural hydration, mm. your natural moisture. So try the natural stuff, and it should replenish your moisture. It's not going to take away from you. Okay. And again, tell these niggas to chop their nails off and wash their fucking fingers because there's okay. bad microscopic bacteria that lingers in the nails, and that could be something that catches on because the anal cavity is so sensitive. Mm -hmm. It's actually even since the temperature is. increases too, so don't use hot water like that. A lot of the girls fill their fleets with hot water, and that's a no no. Cold water, bitch. Um, but. for the uh, enema. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't, because people don't realize the anal cavity is really sensitive, especially to temperature changes. Okay. Don't do hot water. I learned that a while ago. Because when that anal fissure happened, I was like, "Let me study up, girl." Because when this horse is ready to be ridden again, honey, hello God, okay. bitch, I need to be prepared. And praise God, I haven't had that situation since 2016. Oh, praise God, yes, it's I am fucking screaming. But you know what? I feel like we need in the gay community though. Before we get out here, because this is four hours long. <laughs> Okay. Sorry to the replay gang if you guys watched this. So sorry. They'll be entertained. But um, the I feel like we don't have enough um, gay centers where we could be like where we can meet and be friends. Like you know what I mean. Like there's no place mm -hmm. for that. It's like all about hooking up. We need to have like, it's, a gay church. I think the problem is our community is so convoluted with sex. And poorly done too, because a lot of the girls ain't even educated on sex. A lot of the girls don't even know about pleasure sensors and pleasure points and things like that, to where they can really get the maximum use of the sexual experience. It's the wham bam, thank you, man's for that. Take it for me. And the it, the gay community again, we don't want to listen to elder. Remember back in the day, it was elders, the older queens, is the wise ones that we listen to. Mm -hmm. This generation, for some reason, I don't think maybe it's social media. I don't know. They just think they know everything and there's a competition within the community that takes away. It's There used to be places like that back in the day. Very few, but there used to be more than there is now. And people that actually got something from it. I feel but, like I had, I had a place in the LGBT center at, in Las Vegas because I used to go like, like it was the fucking club. Like I would and I had a group of people of friends and then we had like uh, like meetings and like the elder or the guy in charge would kind of like educate us on shit and like I feel like they did when ahead. you feel like you have nothing to learn and that's what's wrong with this generation they feel like they don't have nothing to learn mm. and they're not willing to learn or willing to accept the fact that they don't know certain things or be too embarrassed to claim that they don't know how to do X, Y, and Z if you're not willing to open up it's just like an AA meeting what's the point if you're not willing to talk about your issue that got you here I mean, they have centers for like teenagers, but where's the centers for people after twenty five? You know, who, oh, yeah. who want to meet friends? Like, I, you know, because it's hard. It's hard to meet gay friends because they just want to yeah. fuck, fuck or be catty, right. Or, right? or prove they're better, or have this narcissistic attitude about every fucking thing. And it's like, girl, you just like me. And you know, we need we need community to survive. Like, I feel like I learned that in psychology. Like, 
I feel like we need, you know, each other, like community. That's, that's the whole human experience. And that's what yeah. humanity doesn't like to celebrate, the fact that we are social beings, just like ants and insects and certain mammals around the world. Like, we need that social society to keep us alive, to keep us in, you know, to help us flourish to the next level. When right, you know, right. And then when you do, and when you do meet cool bitches, they have the fucking nerve, the audacity to live in South Florida, LA, and Detroit. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) Right? I I have built more connections and friendships via social media than I have in person. Right. Me too. True, authentic ones. And it's just like, damn, like, the bitches in my real life ain't shit. And I can, you're telling me that I can connect easier with someone who lives halfway across the country? Right, she's like weird. Yeah, very yeah. ridiculous, and it's shameful. Really, it's a testament to the work that's really needed, required, and desired in our community. Mm. But it does have it does have one positive effect, and the positive effect is, hey, when I go to Florida, I got somewhere to go. If I go to LA, I got somewhere to go. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you feel me? So it's you know, yeah, that that's is true. true. We yeah, I can go to uh, Atlanta, New York, Dallas. I can go to Houston, L.A. I don't know if the girls in L.A. are ready for me. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm I, a Peter. I know I'm a Peter. You, yeah, I know how you, I know what you give. So, uh, but I I hear what you're saying though. Yeah, because I'm a Peter representative. I will throw fucking paint on any bitch wearing fur, honey. <laughs> or dead animals around the nest. Girl. I was no no shit. Every time uh, D. Hawkins came to set in his confessionals, bitch, I was gagged. Like, key, I was keying. Like, I was fucking keying. What killed me is he tried to use under the guise that, oh, this is a representation of, no, nah, girl, you just using that lie because we're all reading your ass for filth, bitch. The, uh, the squirrels, now that was different. That was a different situation. I was like, oh, shit. Um, actually, that shit was kind of like shocking. I was very shocked. About Were that. you shocked when the neighbors kept putting up missing cat signs? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, oh, D Hawkins, girl, they they think you done stole their animals, girl. And what is that term they use for those people? The uh, taxidermy girl. Ooh. Put them things uh, around. Yeah. Fucking screaming. Oh my god. That's why the mountain lions are extinct because they're living in D. Hawkins' closet. With uh okay, when he did the Marsha P. Johnson or the other um the trans woman look. Um uh okay, like for real, I saw him. I arrived at his house and his face was shaved, and that was different, you know, because he usually has facial hair. So I was mm-hmm. like, Oh my god. I was like, Yes. I was like I was like, come through shaved face, and I was like Bitch, you know what? You might be able to get fish, bitch. Like, I think you could get fish. Little did I know he was going to try and get fish that motherfucking day, bitch. Uh, you boosted him out. It's your fault. Look what you did, Rachel. <laughs> no, it was not my fault. He, that was premeditated, okay? Let me tell you. Because that shit, he already had to, Yeah, it was already planned. Like that Was, was he fault. lying? Because he said in an interview that he, he had hired some newbie to do his makeup, and that's why he was right here looking like the Crypt Keeper. Um, I don't Okay, like that day, the the makeup artist was given professional. Like, I feel like he wasn't. I like they didn't make it seem like I didn't know. I just thought he was professional, and um, in <laughs> in person, no shade, bitch. I was fucking like I was trying to hold it in. I I held it in. Well, bitch, I was being fake because that shit was funny as fuck when he came out, bitch, and and just sitting there, bitch. It was a new entity that had arrived to set, and I was, <laughs> bitch, I was in my feelings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Rachel, you so shady, bitch. <laughs> no, no, I like. I was just like, gay. I was not expecting it. I was like, deep, because he always fucking just shocks me. Like, the first day he came out in a motherfucking cat suit, and you guys could not see the waist down, but the waist down was giving a fucking thong and some, um, like these tall, thick ass boots. Bitch, I said, oh, we're, we're, we're going there. Yes, ma'am. Like, and he was like, is it hot in here or is it just me? I, girl, I said, bitch, 
is definitely you, bitch. <laughs> Some damn thighs rubbing together in that hot ass weather with that damn leather on, child. Because D Hawkins is very attractive, and and he just you know he's got the body like uh, if so if, I, if it was me, I'd probably be doing like, I'd probably be coming out in cat suit, motherfucking leopard print, the whole motherfucking night. But it was definitely a shocker. Like all the looks were very fucking, and then the funeral one, that shit was too funny for me. The, the little uh, veil, <laughs> the little veil across the hat, bitch. I'm dead. It just killed me. The only reason I didn't ever took him serious was like, in one hand, you're throwing around a lot of, um, you know, homophobic epithets and, yeah. you know, transphobia. But then in your confessionals, you are the very woman that you are despised of. So that just didn't make sense for me. And plus, too, like, I think a lot of the girls get caught up in a character instead of just being themselves. That's what I don't like about these shows, too, sometimes. Be yourself, especially if it's the first season. We don't even know you yet. Yeah, walk, was, walk us through. You know, yeah, probably like a lack a lack of life experience to know that the type of words he was using was a problem. You know. Yeah, definitely. Aaron, you're a late bitch. I just wanted to say that you're a late ass bitch, Aaron. Yes, Aaron. Oh, <laughs> Aaron. No, he his late ass is sleep. This is what he does, you guys. He comes on live and he falls asleep. You're a late ass bitch, Aaron. I want you to know that you were not loved. Nobody loves you. Nobody likes you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother. Period. Aaron. <laughs> Piriana. Love so Aaron. That's my baby. Yeah. Well, I love y'all. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie. Y'all got me through my shift at work. I get off in two hours. Thank you so much. You do? You at work right now? You know I'm at work. Oh, All right, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you do exactly though at work? Like, what do you do? What's your job? I work in drug addiction and mental health with uh, teen boys. That's dope as fuck. Mm-hmm. So yes. Yeah. I used to work with adults, but I just started doing this like four years ago, working with um, adolescents. Because adults are a mess, child. I don't really feel like there's hope for them because they're already stuck in their ways. But if I can help, you know, I have a passion for kids and shit because of my own little fucked up life. But, you know, whatever I can do to give back and steer these motherfuckers in the right direction. Well, those motherfuckers are blessed to have you fucking... Oh, thank you. Yeah. But before we get out of here, how how is the rent in Florida? Is it good? Is it reasonable? Is it like LA and New York rent or Florida oh. is expensive. Um but probably not as expensive as New York or LA. Um right now I live in a one bedroom apartment. I pay eight twenty five and that's considered to be the cheapest. Oh my god, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Yeah, it's that's the cheapest. But uh, the place I lived in before this, I was paying like close to a thousand for a one bedroom. Hey, oh, Kwan. that's still, that's still amazing. There's Quan the poet yeah. in the comments. Who said hey, hey Quan? Quan? I did. Oh, you sound like Aaron for a minute. I was like, oh shit, but the best start. Hey Quan, what's up? Uh-huh. Speaking of, hey, I'm also speaking of Aaron and Quan. No, I'm just Right, you know they got beef, child. Let's not forget yes, that. I was there. I was there when it went down. You were there. What happened? What's the tea, bitch? For me, yeah. Ooh, girl. <laughs> tea, girl. Miss Aaron Wild. Ow, it was called the poet, honey. Who was going toe to toe? About what though? Okay, all I heard is that um, Quan dropped him. But why he dropped? Like, what happened? I'm so mad. I missed that live. Damn. We went left, girl. We was keen, and then went left. Uh, CYB, this is why you gotta be on Beagle. The, girl, the girls act up on Beagle, honey. See, I... Ooh, I don't know what happened. Where did go? All I heard was C. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh, his admin dropped him. Yeah, Quan didn't drop him. That was his admin. Oh, but what was he saying? Was he bringing up the, the whole relationship? You know, that whole yes. Thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> child, you hit that shit on the money. I'm dead. Yo, Aaron is a key key child. Was Bubs there for that or no? Bubs, were you there for that? 
I don't remember that. No, I don't know how what happened between. Was that um, today or yesterday? Quan and Aaron. I just know that Aaron won't. Quan and Quan don't want Aaron. I know that much. Yo, that uh, shit was a uh, key. I was like, "Why be? What happened to you, bitch? We about to get off of here, anyways." Real, <laughs> real. <laughs> oh, he said, "If you're still on, send the link again." I got you. That shit was a key. I heard about Come it. Come on, get in here. Yeah, Quan, give me the tea, Quan. What's the tea, Quan? It was about to be almost five fifteen. Okay. Come on, Quan, give me the tea. Sorry, I was trying. I didn't. I'm on my phone, and I didn't know that I can look at the chat on here. And I tried to back out of the chat, and I ended up logging myself out. I still want the tea, bitch. He's talking about it don't matter. It's whatever. I'm over it. I don't give a fuck. I still want yeah. the tea. Okay? That's good, Quan. That's good. But, so come up and let's just key and chill. Right. I'm not over it. Okay. Why we got tea. two more hours at work? We're trying to get him through the motherfucking midnight oil. Okay? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Hello. <laughs> Y'all got me good because I rested well. Usually I'll be knocked out on these motherfuckers. I ain't even gonna lie. You sleep at your job, bitch. I'm Hold crying. on. I forgot we were live. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't. No, they're trying to dox me. Well, that bitch sleeps on the job. No, I don't, bitch. The kids are just, safe. <laughs> he was just joking, you guys. <laughs> Well, we're just keying. It's fine. You don't, you know, you don't have no, to say anything. To, yeah, we don't yeah. have to talk about that. We could talk. We were actually talking about some really interesting shit. Like, you know, yeah, some really. This good was a very well balanced conversation throughout this entire thing. So, yes. yeah. yeah, I love it. A little bit of mess, down to earth, in depth conversation. Okay. I'm <clears throat> being a little shady towards some of these well deserved whores. Ooh. Out here in the world. Yes, ma'am. Gave Mariah her flowers. Yes, I love for the Mariah section. Definitely. <laughs> There's a trailer for Love and Hip Hop Miami. Okay. I just maybe I have I I've gotten away from them, but they need to do better. I'm over I'm the reality say, thing. Me too. I'm about to say who commented that? Like, girl, honey, Funky Geneva is gonna be on there. Yes, Funky. I live for Funky. All right, Funky. And that's a prime example of, you know, you never know. You can have a late glow up to bitch. You know, keep going. Keep pressing forward because you never know where it's going to lead you. Hey, Kwan. Hey. Hey, hello. What's going on? Nothing. Just up late. Running through the bingo streets. Was on the IG live. Oh. Here with y'all. That's right. Your show is I told YB Bingo is where it's at. Bingo is cute. Come on, YB. You know you pop a lot of shit, YB. Go in there and gather these bitches. I was thinking about because the, when the girls started talking about they're making like forty grand a month, I said, "Bitch, hold on now. I'll you cuss out a few bitches for forty there. grand a month." Yes, read these bitches, YB. Read these bitches. <laughs> they don't want it. <laughs> if I really go on hinge and I'm filtered, it's 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 over with. Because if y'all knew half the shit that runs through my mind, child, please. <laughs> now YB probably wouldn't even exist. Y'all been canceled a long time ago. Oh God! Hey, get your coins. I wish I was built like that because, like, I've I've gotten into it with a couple people on there, but it's not my. I don't know. It's just not my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm very like chill on the app. Yeah, I, I just shit. If I was that way, I'd be making a lot of money over there. I just don't have the energy, and it's not in me. And just a fight with a whole bunch of bitches I don't know. Like, I don't have time for that. Because I see Rick Rosen coming through reading Horse for Filth, and that's an experienced queen with real reads that'll fucking tear your life force apart. So I don't know if I can really get involved in that, because if they around here getting bitches fucking college scholarships taken away, imagine what they'll do to me, because I'm going to read them to the point where they're going to be trying to find my mother, bitch, and go to the past and kill me before I'm born. (laughs) Okay. Well, you should come on one time, because Aaron, he goes live, and it'd be a chill panel. It'd be a you know. One day, I wouldn't mind doing that. Explore do new things. Boldly okay. go where no queen has gone before. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I was surprised somebody tried Rachel the other day, but then we know Rachel gathered the bit, so it don't even matter really. Yes, ma'am. But they you serve they... a hole a clean read, they'll shut the fuck up. Yeah, they came at her out of nowhere. I was like, she's doing that for like you don't even know this bitch. Like, what? It's weird. You know? That's how they do, though. Those trolls. Okay. Oh, 
Uh, what do you guys think about Erica Banks? You guys were in here earlier. Erica, Erica Banks said she's the greatest female rapper alive. Where's your who album, is, girl? Who is that? that? Exactly. I don't know who she is. I mean, you got an album? You signed for a real record label? And not that bullshit that, uh, what's that um, 100 label or whatever? <laughs> I, I mean, I you, know. you got accolades? You won the charts? Mm. You got anything? You got a music video? I've heard she, of her name. Does she I know, have a um, song? Because I, I really don't know who she is. I have she no. Did, I, still, she, I don't know. You remember that Big Bank Challenge where all the straight TikTok boys were dropping that big booty? Mm. Uh huh. She did. She trended that. That was her song. Big oh. Bank with a cute face. That that's her song. Oh. And the only reason I know about her is because Armand Wiggins goes up for her child, and I watch his platform a lot. So I don't know her other than that. Because I, I don't stream her music. I don't know her music. <clears throat> That's the only thing I know because I remember why I'm a big... I love to watch these little TikTok boys show that ass child. So oh, I'm always man. interested That's to see song. what's going on. That's... So wait, so so you like ass even though you're, um, you're a... Isn't that weird? That's weird, right? No, it's not weird. It's what you like. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love a man with a nice ass. That's good. Me too. Now I'm not going to lie. I eat ass too if it's clean. Amen. It was nice. I'll push those cheeks to side, child, and make things happen. I'll part yes, that man. sea, honey. Call me Moses, honey. Oh. <laughs> not part the sea. Come on. Honey, as long as it's not a red sea, amen? Hmm. Ooh, girl. Child. Ooh, ew, girl. Or, or a brown sea. We don't yeah, have time for yeah, that. Yeah, I won't do that. I like mm. ass, though. As long as it's nice. The thugs have the biggest asses, if you ask me. Oh, I love it. I'm here for all of that. Give me all of it. And I like to grab the cheeks and force the dick down my throat. Oh, yes. 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 I live for that. Mm -hmm. Screaming. I've used that move before. Mm. I just got flustered. Okay, I was going to say, I'm getting horny, bitch. Uh, Mm. Give me some fucking. It's got flustered. But Erica Banks, um, honey, you got to put work in, baby. You can't just claim nothing. You have to put work in. I'm tired of all these whores talking about they're the queen and they're this and they're that. Bitch, just do music and let the the project speak for itself. That's the thing I love about Cardi. Cardi's never claimed to be nothing. She's just making music. And she's letting it all be what it's supposed to be. What do you guys think about We Love Shay's new album, her own, her, her debut album? Who's that? Uh, she's like a, per- a gay person who's popular on these streets. Is that the girl who does those videos with those boys? Like oh, she no. does these like videos where she asks these boys questions. I don't know. I don't really follow her like that, but I I, I heard the I heard some Isn't of that. She album. trans. She's a trans girl, right? Yes and no to me. Like she gives that, but then I'm like, I don't know. You know, I don't want to mispronounce somebody. I don't fuck it. And she's also on Bingo now, right? Yeah. So she friends. She's friends with JB's. Okay, Angela Stanton's child, right? Right. Oh, mm. uh, okay. Now I know who you talking about. She got an album out. Yeah, she dropped it. She dropped an EP. It was like number six on iTunes, allegedly. Is it good? I'm about to check that out. That's okay, the only problem I had too. A lot of these girls, they take their social media fame and they try to do things like in the music realm. It's like if you're not naturally gifted in music, it's gonna show, bitch. Right. So I don't know. It's like I'm not girl from Potomac. Ooh. But that was a good song, though. That Yo, song was the, the one that Oliver, me. the one that Oliver Twix redid, and Rico, Rico oh, no, with the I'm K not did. talking about Monique Samuels. I'm talking about okay. this, uh, Ashley. This, uh, no, that's not her. Candice, Candice, Candice. Oh, what song she got? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just have to, you know, if you want to dabble, then dabble. But I don't want no one calling themselves an artist or anything if they really <laughs> don't. <laughs> Have the passion for it. I'm fucking dead. She on Potomac acting like she about to get a motherfucking Grammy. Speaking of getting Grammys, what do you think about Jocelyn Hernandez possibly getting a Grammy for it? Do it like a she's be not getting like no Grammy for that. Do it like no. a be today, baby. She's not getting no Grammy for that. They need to slap some handcuffs on her and her husband <laughs> for what they that, that foolishness of that reunion. <laughs> I'm so sick of her. <laughs> I wonder, you know, it's not like, you know, I know that she didn't snort a line of coke off of Stevie J's booty hole like they did in that Love Hip Hop reunion. 
Our but, fucking reunion was better than that shit. <laughs> no shit. First of all, why did they even have Lunell there? She barely said anything. <laughs> like, girl, oh, I love Lunell though. I know, but she was she wasn't saying shit. I mean, everybody <laughs> looked scared. At the, well, I didn't watch the full thing, but the little clips I saw, the host looked scared or nervous. <laughs> Wouldn't like you feel just... scared? Look at what they did to those poor that poor girl. Like, I mean, <laughs> they did fuck with her world. Okay. I, and plus, first of all, I didn't watch the show, but I remember that little clip from when it first began when the girls got there and Jocelyn was like, you killed your babies. And I was like, oh my God, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Yo, you gotta watch the show, my baby. Trust Yo, me, watch the show. I, can't, I watched like the first episode and I was over it. I said, oh, uh, No, I it's can't. a key, Quan. We it's gotta a key. It's just, it's just too ghetto. Like, it is, know. it is. It really is. I like, love it. it. I love it. The show. I would wear Jocelyn's ass the fuck out, bitch. Like, I would just, if I was, first of all, you're disrespectful. And it's just like, I see why she has a show. I always said that she had, if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have even watched Love and Hip Hop back in the day for Atlanta. But it's just like, damn, girl, like, you're too bold. Someone's going to fuck you up, bitch. Yeah. Someone's going to beat you. And your man, even though he's fine as hell, and someone's going to wear his ass out, too. You don't talk to people the way. He got a lot for um, getting crazy with that one chick on the reunion. I feel she, like she um, she talks to them the whole season crazy. If you watch the whole season, she talks to them like they're dirt. <laughs> That's the only reason I would watch it because Jocelyn be reading the girls' honey. Jocelyn will get. That's the, I have a love hate relate because you know I'm a messy bitch, but I also don't like too much mess. And it's just like she gives me just enough to make me question my life. Like this bitch be <laughs> reading the girls down for filth. Yeah, she reads the girls. She's like these yes, yes, the best yes. bitches. <laughs> but see, that's what I love about her though. She she's so unfiltered. Like <laughs> we don't even really get to come in contact with people like that these days. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Somebody coughed and she had a problem. She was like, "Bitch, you coughing at me?" Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, that's just too much. Honey, Stop is a nut, bitch. <laughs> you stopped me when her and Stevie stormed through that crowd at that damn reunion, honey, of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and they were beating everyone's ass. I said, oh my goodness, girl, like, yeah. these people are a trip, honey. And now they've engaged with her on show. Rachel, did you watch the season? I did, yes. Okay, what was your favorite part? Was it was it the whole double homicide or was it or was it may I? No, it was may I bitch. When she said may I, I said not may I bitch. Oh, if I ever hear a bitch say that around me now, I know I know what's coming. What does that mean? Okay, so there was these two people um arguing or whatever, and this one girl kept asking Jocelyn, May I? Like she's asked her over and over and nobody knew what she was talking about. Like what she was asking for, like, may I hit this bitch? Like, mm-hmm. oh. and she wore that bitch out. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, when I heard her say may I, I said not may I. Yo, yeah, she I, really I, said I, may I. Oh my God, I'm crying. You I'm guys so have to watch the show. Her, so her show is basically equivalent, a more dressed up version of than Blueface's reality show that he had. Oh, I didn't watch that, so I don't know. I didn't watch. I just saw him on Instagram promoting it a lot with those girls that he was. I have to feel like that was a low key sex trafficking situation. To be honest with that, you. that looked it real illegal. It did. They he had gun bags, and I was like, "Girl, uh, Quan, you ain't never told a lies, bitch. Grown ass women and bunk beds, girl." I was like, "Somebody needs to call the police on that." With because, these um, prison mattresses. Like, like you're rich, honey. Why you got boogers on your walls? Like mm-hmm. I don't understand that. This is like one more dormitory of filth. Mm-hmm. Oh, can we talk about Encore? Y'all watch Encore? I don't. I've Wait. watched some of it. I'm. I, I've. I've gotten tired of it after a while. Yo, Keely needs. I hate her. Keely, <laughs> get on my nerves. From PLW, right? Yeah. yeah, those girls from Cherish get on my nerves. Yes, the Cherish girls. Oh my god, Pam still get on my nerves. The only thing I like, I didn't watch it, but the, I, I do live for Nivea. I have a, a really a newfound love and respect for her. So hopefully they're treating her right. Oh, she snapped. She's out the house. She left. Oh wow. I don't blame her. She needed to go. If that's the case, then because just hearing that little interview she did with Candy. Just talking about her life and everything she's been through, like those could be triggers for that girl. That girl don't need to live in those dark places anymore. Yeah, she snapped, and I feel like the way she she snapped so hard, like I feel like she would have busted them girls in their face, like everybody in the house. I have no doubt about it. 
while playing laundromat in the background. Hello. <laughs> Don't know what happened. Got people steady asking. <laughs> How you gonna sleep mad one day? The next thing is on so what, what show what show do you guys watch? What were you guys watching? <sighs> like any show? Yeah, it don't matter. I don't really dabble in the reality stuff anymore. I'm more of a Netflix Prime, Disney. I just got finished watching the whole collection of Star Wars. You know I'm a nerd child, so oh, yeah. I'd be into all kinds of supernatural shit. I just got finished watching season three of Charmer, which was trash, by the way. Ooh. Wait, the new Charmed or the original Charmed? The new Charmed, honey. Why These would you girls. watch that? That, whole that shit is horrible. Is terrible. I just, let me tell you why. I, That's a disgrace to the it, legacy. It really is. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. It, it's just... And you know what, what? What I hate about it the most is they took storylines and character references, stripped them down, and intertwined them throughout this entire new blood. And I hated that. Really? Like, they did. Like if you really pay attention to the first season, second, and this third one they just released, and think back to all because I watched the original. That's my girls, Piper, Phoebe, Prue, Honey, and Miss Page, Honey. Hello, God. Yeah, Those yeah. are the original charm ones, Honey. Okay. If you look at that and then look at this, you'll be like, oh, they took a lot from them. They stole a lot from them to make the show. Mm. And they touch on a lot of bullshit, too, that I really don't like. You know, political stances and all these different things, which I'm here for, but the original Charm had a wonderful way of putting that in there. But it was trash, though. It's trash. Nothing will ever hold a candle to the original Charmed ones. You guys watch watch Who Killed Sarah? Who? Who killed Sarah? No. Well, anybody could have killed her because wasn't she hoeing? No, it's on Netflix. <laughs> no, that's on my list, though. Have you I guys been watching any of the um, New American Horror Stories on uh, Hulu? I have watched those. I do. I like those, actually. I, don't oh, have it. Them, I heard it was good, though. I heard you're touching on alien shit, so... Yeah, it's it's really good. Like it's different stories. Like it's a compilation of stories, so you get like a new story every week. Oh, okay. Like Tales from the Crypt back in the day. Is my girl Sarah Paulson in there? In this one, no. So like this one is kind of separate from the from the regular series. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so, these like, are people this one got all brand new people stories. in it. Well, okay. the people who made the show are just the ones producing it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I miss Shameless. I used to love Shameless. I love Shameless. That was my show. They trashed the last two seasons, though. They really did. Those that last two seasons, they really. You can tell they don't get. They didn't give a fuck. Shit's yeah, was really good. I don't care what nobody says. I love Frank on Shameless. Okay. Do you, do you guys like the Circle? What's that cast? is my show. I want to go on there so bad. They're casting Are they? Netflixreality.com Yes, ma'am. What show is that? The Circle is like a catfish type of show. Like, not really, but it's like an ensemble cast, and they're all separated. They can only communicate through, like, text message. They, they, can't, they can't tell if they're being catfished or not, and they could possibly be catfished. But you eliminate each other by ranking each other, and whoever is the most popular person like wins at the end of the series, like a hundred thousand dollars. I'm happy you said that. You said NetflixReality.com. Got it. Mm-hmm. They're casting for a lot right now on, on Netflix, so I'm down for pause. They doing a lot of reality shows. I see Netflix and Prime. Mm-hmm. I get down. I live for that one show on Netflix called um, Selling Sunset. The little white girls out there in L.A. Uh, them homes and shit. That shit was so good. <laughs> yes. That shit was so good. I was getting my life, honey. I said, ooh, this is better than Real Housewives. These are some catty-ass, destructive-ass bitches. Child, you know what I've been been watching? It's an old-ass show, though. It doesn't come on anymore. It's called Parking Wars. Oh, I used to watch that. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm so in love with it. <laughs> It's so crazy. Those people getting tickets and shit. They be so mad. They be over it. So upset. <laughs> I used to watch. Just like I used to watch that um, Orange Wars. I used to watch um, the tow truck one. Where they used to tow people shit. South Beach tow. 
I think so. That's what it was called. Oh, but I heard South Beach Toe was scripted and not and not real. Like that's unlike Park. Oh yeah, South Beach. Toe. I heard that. I stopped watching. Because you can tell once you pay attention, you can start to tell that it's like this would never happen in real life. I will whoop y'all ass, bitch, if y'all ever treated me this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they be going off. I think mean, what else did I watch recently? I'm about to say there's so much content out, but people aren't watching that much. There's so much that maybe there's too much content. They've had no choice. People got unsettled last year when they, we all had to sit our ass down. We consumed so much media, so much movies and TV that there's nothing left right now. Everything's boring because we don't watch it all. Yep. Like, even movies now have to reschedule things out because they're like, damn, bitch, like, they're already done with this. And then they canceled a lot of, like, secondary seasons that were supposed to, you know, continue on in order to fit the need for other popular shows. So, we'll see. Thank God yeah, for, like, I, Disney Plus and shit, because, child. Yeah, okay, what's that show on Disney Plus that everybody was watching? I never had a chance to finish it. What was it about? Uh, okay, they were, like, a superhero couple, but they were disguised. WandaVision? There you go. How, how was the ending of that? Was it good? It was really good. It was good. I liked it. Damn, I got so close to the ending, but I didn't finish. I gotta finish. You know, they're part of the um, Avengers. That's the continuation of what happened after Endgame. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just really good. And um, what's the one? Captain America, the, the Hawk bitch, or whatever his name is. <laughs> Hawkeye. Yes. Oh, wait. Winter Soldier and the motherfucking Falcon. Yeah, that was good, too. That was pretty good. I, did I, didn't, watch the, I didn't watch the Endgame. You know what it is about these superhero movies? They be so long. Yeah, they do be really long. I'd be like, girl, get to the point. Come on, right? Like, what the fuck is going but on? It does send you on a wonderful journey, though. Girl, yes, sends me on one. I love it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Marvel and DC and shit. So. I like magic, like, I just love powers and magic. Like, Hello. Shit. Okay, did you ever get the man? It's really no point. There was the show called October Faction on Netflix. Mm-mm. You ever got it today? It was only one season. They're supposed to do a season two, but they canceled it. It was really good. Because yeah. Netflix, I love them particularly because they're now exploring more black gay situation and giving us our lead roles and things like that. So there's a black gay kid in there who has like superpowers and his sister does too. It was really cute though. Yeah, Netflix like, is trying to keep up. Oh. You know, Disney Plus is on their neck. Well, yeah. now that they have a rights to a Disney Plus has a rights to a lot of material that a lot of these other girls don't have rights to, so that's why they're winning. What happened to it's, that one show um, with that little boy and he had powers? His name was like Leon or Dion. Oh, or Raising Dion. That was produced yes. and directed by um, what's the guy who played Killmonger and uh, Michael B. Jordan? Mm. That was produced and directed by him. They're kind of they're supposed to come out with a second season. I want to see this. Like, I've been waiting. It's a good show. I loved it. It was beautifully made. Yeah. I loved it. I did like it a lot, too. But I was like, damn, bitch, stop giving powers to these kids. I need some powers, bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of this crusty-ass life, bitch. I'm tired of working. Okay. Shit, give me some powers. Hell. Okay, you got powers. Do you guys do background acting? Yes. Who? Me? Everybody. On the, anybody on the panel? Yeah. What is that? What is background acting? What is that? When you're like an extra in the movie or in a movie or in a scene, you're in the background. I've always wanted to do that, but no, I've never, acting was never my, go, you know, I never really got into the whole acting thing, but I would love to try. Yeah, I want to get back into it. I'm just waiting for this pandemic to go away because that paycheck was really good. Oh, I could dope. be a stand in, I could be corpse number one, you know, or okay. something. Shit, they done gave, um, I, I think Laverne Cox done got signed up to do a show now, right? On Prime. She plays oh. like a, a secret agent or some shit like oh, that. Oh, yes. No, yes, 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 yes. And she was um, whooping some ass. Yeah. Um, so, that was, uh, gosh, I want to say I just fucking saw that recently. It just came out recently, right? I don't know. I think it's on Prime, Amazon Prime. 
Or Hulu, I forget, but I, I saw got, a little clip of it. She got kicked by some strong bitch. <laughs> Something. I'm just trying to play the scene back. Like, what was yeah, it? Cute, though. I see a lot more of us, you know, our spectrum being accepted in the spaces that we once were allowed in. So I feel like people will be more comfortable now, you know, trying out for different roles. And, and plus, I'm tired of seeing straight people playing gay roles because it's like, girl, there's plenty right. of us to the around, bitch. Mm-hmm. Plenty of us. Tyler Perry, get the fuck out of the way, bitch. Rachel, you're in LA. Do you not do You don't go on like casting calls or anything? I mean, I've done um, some background work and I had like a little speaking role for like a film school, like they're doing like a short film. I've done some stuff, nothing major. Are you a member of SAC or of SAC of SACFRA? No, I've always wondered about that. What do you mean you wonder about? What do you wonder about it? No, I, I'm not. But I've always wondered about like getting into that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I think you have to pay like two thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. But I was thinking about doing that because once you do that, that's how you get your 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 speaking lines, and you could you know you could become like a cop. And, and, and say like two lines because the, the more lines you say, the more money you get. Okay. So I just gotta pay two thousand dollars. <laughs> I believe so. Oh my god. Okay. No I wouldn't mind writing and developing a show. I always had a good writing skills. I would love to. Oh yeah. I have this really good idea for a show called "And All the Queens." Just like taking different people from different avenues of the LGBT spectrum, best friends growing up. Almost like a better version of Noah's Ark. Huh, hello. Okay. Bitch. Just do some shit for us. I just want to see more of us. Like two warm yeah. food, we need a remake with real with real drag queens. Not some I love that movie. Queens. That's my blue book. I love that. Blueprint, my bad. I love that yeah. show. Yes, Chi Chi. Honey, little poor little bad Latin boy in drag. Why is the poor little Latin boy in drag crying? Noxie? <laughs> Noxie? Why is the poor little Latin boy in drag crying? I mean, they're chunking bottles at that bitch. I said, no God, honey. <laughs> no man. And may Robin Williams rest in peace. Okay. Yes, and Patrick Swayze. Yeah, but you know what? I live for those actors who did do that, especially during the 90s, you know. Oh, Definitely. I know they were called all kinds of names back then for doing that shit. Uh-huh. Especially Wesley Snipes. Right. Wesley Snipes ate that shit up. Honey, let me tell you something. I was here for that. That's what made me not scared. I was like, I'm going to walk up into these old farmlands. I ain't going to find me a little white <laughs> dusty trade. You yeah. know. And then I slowly <laughs> realized, girl, that this is the KKK, girl. Let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Quan left? All right. I am screaming, not the KKK. <laughs> Honey, that was a good movie. I've seen it probably like a dozen times in my life. Mm. Quan left? Yeah, Quan left. I think, yeah, I think he'll, he'll probably be back if we're still on him. You know, people just drop down sometimes without even realizing. Well, you know, you just did that a little moment ago. You were like, oh shit. Yeah. And especially when you're using your phone. It's, these buttons are so small. I got some fat ass fingers, child. Mm-hmm. So. These motherfuckers are going to press the wrong button. But you are right, though. We do need more gay shows that are not like the drama, not not reality based, like legit gay shows. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, where's our friends? Like, yeah. Sex in the City. I would like to see Or that even that. like, one of the things I did like about this season of The Charmed that I watched, that they introduced a trans witch. Oh, shut mm-hmm. up. That was cute, and plus, you know, one of the sisters is a lesbian in this in this version of Charmed. Oh wait, so you're a nerd. Know. You're a nerd. How do you feel about Robin coming out as bisexual? Um, I'm not surprised because I knew there was a reason Batman took him in. Hello. Yes, ma'am. He robbing that pussy. <laughs> Baby, he is grooming him. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I think now it's like it's for it's for t- it's for the wrong reasons to announce these characters this way because it's like why couldn't y'all do that back then in the inception of the creation because I don't think people realize there's a lot of LGBT superheroes that are not being spotlighted or being named that way like Captain Marvel was a lesbian you know you 
and even some black LGBT superheroes were, you know, not spotlighted a lot. So I'm not surprised, but I think what's it for? Are you because there's clout in the LGBT community right now? I mean, hmm. what's it for? And, and if this, uh, and no, which version of Robin? Because you know, there's different versions of these superheroes depending on what platform you're on. Uh, it's in the new DC comic or some some shit like that. that was, it was trending earlier. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's it's not like on a TV show or nothing. Let me no, I don't believe so. Let me. And that's the problem too. It's gonna be in a comic book, but will they feature it in live action or cartoon version? Are we gonna start seeing these superheroes have boyfriends and kiss and kiss? Because you don't mind letting us see those through the spandex girl and that nice ass and abs and uh. the beautiful dick prints. But are you going to show us man on man action? Yes, man. You love to sh- exploit women that way. You know, the, the bad woman, they just redid. She's a lesbian. So it's like, okay, girl, you don't mind doing it for the women, but what about us? Yeah. In the words of Brandy. Which I never understood in Hollywood because there's so many gay, gay people in Hollywood. So I'm like, I don't understand that. It's it's the it's the um the public the viewers mm-hmm. is what they they cater to that to them. I know, but I feel like that's dumb. Like if you control the movies and you control what people watch, just do it any fucking way. I wouldn't care. It can happen. Like I would love to see Superman drive his Man of Steel dick inside of Batman every blue moon. Oh. That'd be so nice. His cave, I mean, his bat cave. Yeah. <laughs> Take him How dare you? Batman is definitely the top in that situation. Take him to the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, yeah. okay. The staff range of the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give him the Kal El, honey. Okay, the Kal El D. We guess. Oh, come! So, <laughs> Batman, he, Superman. I feel like they made Superman too strong. Like in the Batman versus Superman, I'm like, please. But who would be the top and who would be the bottom? Superman, of course. Nothing can think. penetrate his skin. Think about that. But he got a hole, though. Okay. I mean, can you penetrate that hole? If you can't penetrate the skin, <laughs> how can you penetrate that hole? <laughs> Ooh, you fucking right. Okay. He would make he would make for a hard bottom. <laughs> uh, <power> Shit. <laughs> Batman, he's dealing with all kinds of trauma and issues, which makes him for a perfect bottom. But I feel like if he bottoms for Superman, he'll fucking die. I mean, you ask for it. You gotta take that dick. <laughs> mm-hmm. You gotta take those laser beams of death, honey. Oh, uh, then again, he could Superman could be a bottom because his his mouth does blow a hefty fucking <laughs> See, I could see Superman topping Flash. I don't know about Batman. Mm. I, I bet the Flash, Flash will fuck you like a thousand times in under a second. Like a rabbit. I'm here for it. Energize it, buddy. Keep me going, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then Superman can go ahead. We can do a threesome. He can just go ahead and get the Starbucks because I'm going to need three shots of espresso after that, honey. And they could all nut on my fucking face. Well, I don't know about yeah. that, but I'll let that. Because imagine if his power is that good, if he busts a nut, would that nut fly your ass to space? Ooh, it probably just go through my fucking skull. Who's your favorite superhero? Uh, Across the board, or you want me to just one superhero? Yeah, like who's like the. Mine's is Batman. Superman is mine. I'm gagging. Okay. Hey, Clark. <laughs> Always been my favorite. Storm, I love Storm. Jean Grey, Captain uh, Marvel. I love yeah. Wolverine. I Doctor think Batman Strange. because he got money. So like, well, okay, that didn't make sense. I was thinking more like, who would I be in a relationship with? So my mind was already in the gutter. But um, <laughs> yeah, Superman, I guess, because he's fucking all powerful and shit. Yeah, Superman is very, he's always been right one of our tops, but I do live for like Doctor Strange, Wanda from WandaVision. Mm. Um, there's a lot of other characters they don't expound on that I really don't like that much because they made them very weak. But um, yeah, definitely Superman is my top. Can Superman go invisible? No. That's the one power. If I could have a superhero power, it's either that or teleportation, one of those, one of those two powers. 
I mean, do you need to teleport when you're fast as light? No, not really. No. You know, you I'm saying if I had to choose, if I had to choose, it would be either oh, going, God. going invis- you know, invincible, like nobody could see me, but I'm in the room, or I can just teleport to another country, like I could be in Mexico right now, you know. But the invisibility thing, so they've had multiple characters throughout different superhero genres, right? So I've never seen one where they're completely. So you have to be naked a lot of times in order to be, because if you wear clothes, your clothes for some reason can't be invisible with you. Really? Even Wonder Woman? Don't 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 she be invisible a lot? I'm not tripping. No. I mean, her her comic book version, oh. she was able to do something like that. But really, it's really her deflecting light. Hmm. If that means anything, so. And I think Batman has an invisible cloak where he just like, puts it on and he's like invisible. I could be I, wrong. I, I thought don't. that was Harry Potter. I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah, he does the cloak of invisibility. Yes, man. Oh, and he can take that motherfucking cloak, and we can go fuck anywhere we like in public. I would really, if I had, if I really wanted it like that, Professor Xavier's power, imagine being able to invade and control the minds of any and every one. Ooh. Trade, bow down, you raggedy thugs. Okay. Hmm. S- Come S- yonder, S- Odell Beckham. I'm ready for you. Come through, <laughs> Trey Song. I'm ready for you. Mind All you, I said that. Them. I said that in my head. I said, watch you summon the Trey to eat his ass or some shit. <laughs> Let me tell you. Hmm, bow down, honey, to my glory, because I'm going to mm-hmm. utilize this for everything. I'm going to milk that cow literally for everything it's worth. Okay. Okay. All right, Star Trek or Star Wars? Which Star Trek, though? Uh, the, the, the original, the 80s. The, Ooh, the... Star Wars, man. Mm. I was a Star Trek Voyager fan with Captain Catherine Janeway. Is not that the 80s, though? But that's it, right? I, I love it. <laughs> you no. Know, yes. That was more like late 90s, early 2000s. It had like, like fucking eight, nine seasons. That shit was... Okay, so time. maybe that's what I'm talking about. The, the, the Professor Xavier, he was on that show, right? No, Professor Xavier is an X Man. No, I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about the character. I'm talking about the oh, actor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was in the original um, Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's what he was in. Okay, I'm talking about that one versus Star Wars. So you pick Star Wars. I will pick Star Wars just because I recently finished Star Wars and I fell in love with it. Yeah, definitely. I did enjoy Star Trek though, but I enjoyed the Voyager one better because that was a female lead, honey, and they just did it better, in my opinion. All right, Pinky or Pinky in the Brain or Dexter's Laboratory? Ooh, Dexter. Fairly Odd Parents or SpongeBob SquarePants? Fairly Odd Parents. My job, I heard SpongeBob was gay. That's gay. Yeah, I was going to say, probably SpongeBob, but you say what? Fairly Odd Parents? That was a key, too. Yeah, I got my life with that show. I like SpongeBob, but I was like, mm, girl, I'm kind of like over this whole like sponge living in the sea, a squirrel living under the sea, a starfish that was dumb as rocks. Like, I just. And Mr. Krabby Patty, you're a fucking. How are you going to. The secret to your thing is crab, and you're a crab. You're a goddamn. What do they call those things that eat their own kind? Like. Oh, <laughs> a, uh, a fucking hamster? No, a yeah. Hannibal Lecter, motherfucker. Yeah, a fucking cannibal. Like. Cannibal. That just didn't make sense. And then the driving teacher's a fat ass whale. I'm just like, no, I'm good. I mean, this show just didn't make any sense to me. I live for Dexter. I love Dexter's laboratory. That was DD no. That was my shit. Encourage the cowardly dog. That was my show too. That's I had to grow on me. That had to grow on me. I didn't understand that first. I just live for the randomness of it all. It just used to kill me. I was like, okay, girl. I was a Dragon Ball Z fan, too. I don't know if y'all are. Yes. I, like cat I, I like Cat Dog. I like Cat Dog. I love Cat Dog. That was my show, too. Hey, Arnold. Cousin Skeeter. Okay. That was when I first started lusting after Robert, whatever his name. I don't know his whole name, but the actor. Richard Robert, whatever his I know, name I know, is. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I follow him on Instagram. Bitch, he is fine as a motherfucker to this day, honey. Ooh, right. he is so fine. Ooh. Remember, he was in that movie where Usher lighted up and then he got killed at the end? Oh, yeah. That was so sad. Robert Richard, Ray, uh, Rachel. Um, he played on One on One, too, as the boyfriend of Kyla Pratt. Oh, I don't think I 
with Flex uh, Alexander. He played the black version of that stripper movie. What's that fucking stripper movie called? Damn. Oh, Chocolate City. Yeah, but what's the white version called? Oh, Magic, Magic Mike. Mike. There you go. He played the black version, Chocolate City. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Channing Tatum could definitely get it. Okay. That is a fine ass white boy. Oh my god, when he was in bondage on his knees with his ass out in that one movie? Oh. Oh, um. The End of the World or something? Yes. That was a good movie, too. That was a good movie. And Channing Tatum sucked his ass out, ready to get fucked? Oh my god, my world. What? I did not see. What movie was that? Oh my god. It was called End of the World, I think. Yeah, like something. With with Seth, Seth Rogen. I saw that movie. Wasn't Rihanna in that movie? Yeah, but she slapped the shit out of that white boy. Honey. Well, I didn't see that. I didn't see that part of it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he was in there. Remember when they were trying to find their way through and they were battling those other factions to try to to get through the ass? And uh, I'm gonna have to watch it again. Channing Tatum was like in that little bondage gear, and he oh, submitted. He submitted to the children, honey. Maybe he wanted. <laughs> he wanted Okay. I love a good bondage gear. Gas Quan is back. I told you. I have a sensation. Hey, as soon as we mention a bondage gear, honey, Quan. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Y'all know <laughs> what? <laughs> that's my back call. But that's what I'm saying, too, though. Even him, like, in his white privilege and his hetero privilege, like, no one called him a faggot for that shit, you know? Right. Oh, my God. Yes. Exactly. No one talked about him. Even when he did that singing show, dressed up like a woman. Who? Um, Channing Tatum. Remember he did that uh, sing-off? Whatever they call it. He did Beyonce. Shit? Yeah, did no one called Beyonce? him. Yeah, I think he did. He did, he did. No and one called him out. Came out. And she came out. Oh, yeah, I remember that. But what do you guys think about there. what do you guys think about American Horror Story? It was good. I haven't I seen it. this one or the one previously, but I watched all the way up until Apocalypse. My and favorite I season is the, I like the witch, the witch, the third season. The Coven, that was my favorite. Season. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite too. Gabby, Gabby Cinebag definitely reprised herself because I loved every bit of her in that. Okay. But my favorite was that prissy white girl who turned the bus over for them boys trying to rape her child. Oh, <laughs> I, I loved her, honey. Mama did not play no games. <laughs> okay, she said not this bitch. She was such a Every bitch, but I still liked her. Mama didn't play. And I love Sarah Paulson. I'm sorry. Like, I just... The, her acting... All of these people deserve the awards and accolades, but Sarah Paulson is so dimensional. And yeah, her and Evan. Her game. and Evan. Who's that? Which one is that? Evan Peters, the white boy who always the, plays. The, he plays the crazy character. Like he 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 had a call yeah. for a hand in one season. Yeah. Oh yeah, he plays Silver, the guy from X Men too. That as an actor, so I know you're talking about. Yeah, he's a good actor. Wait, he's an X Men. Yeah, he plays um mm-hmm. Wanda's brother. Oh, on the on the Owen Wanda Vision. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And he played in a few of the X-Men movies, too, as a younger version of Silver Surfer. Or Silver, whatever his name is. Yeah, he's a cute white boy. He don't age at all, really. He's very handsome. He Evan Peters. I bet he has a huge dick. I, I, I bet. Uh, like, I do. I think so. Like, I don't get that. He very much like him. those tweets that have the huge fucking, like... These white boys are coming up, honey. Did I tell you? These little nerdy crackers are running around yeah. here with, with fucking third legs, bitch. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and hollow me out, honey. Okay. Because I'm here for all of it. Because I haven't had white cream since I was little. It's I've had so one. funny that you say that because I have not had white dick in a minute, but this one guy wanted to take me on a date and he was white and he showed me like some of the dick pics. I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're coming up. They got ass now. They so would you guys, now. would you guys, would you guys date white people or just fuck them? If it was the right, if you had a little white chocolate in you, 
Like, yes. Yeah. Like, you have to have a swag. You can't be some, like... Like, Mark Zuckerberg could never. You know? Oh, no. No, no, you know, like, you have to have the in-between, like, a certain type of swag for me. Like a Channing Tatum, basically. I could fuck with that. Oh, my God. Speaking yeah. of white people, how do you feel about all these white celebrities coming out saying they don't shower? What the fuck is that uh, about? All I know is death to them all. Um, <laughs> send them bitches into a bleach bath with Fabuloso for fragrance. Ooh. I'm over it. I'm not surprised, though. White people I'm have not always... <laughs> I'm not surprised either, because they, they always... Uh, to me, like, I've, I've smelled people's... Uh, white people's scalp, bitch, and it smells like a fucking wet dog. They don't wash or rinse. Like... <laughs> They don't, they, don't, they don't know nothing about lotion. I had a white friend many years ago say, oh, why do you always have lotion with you? I said, girl, just because you're pale as fuck, you also need lotion. It's about moisturization. That's what it's about. Okay. You got to clean yourself. Um, I did a video talking about Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher's old rusty ball ass. And I told, and I said this, they said it's the only cleanest is when there's dirt. They don't want to wash the natural oils off. But bitch, we don't understand our sweat and our pores release toxins. Yes, they may be natural oils, but they're also natural toxins. So you have to clean those okay. off. You have to exfoliate your skin. And how you replenish those natural oils is by using other natural oils like cocoa butter, bitch, or motherfucking mango butter, or other natural things that are going to moisturize your skin. Their logic is stupid. <clears throat> it's not even logical, it's crying out loud. It's, it's stupid. It's nasty. Because now the fetish that I used to have for Ashton Kutcher is gone. Because now that I know that your balls reek of an oil field, I no longer want that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm not surprised because he was the one who played on Brokeback Mountain shoving his dick into a bottom who just ate beans. Okay, I'm not yeah. trying to suck no motherfucking white dick and get uh, type 1 fucking herpes. Because it's very real. I don't want your three-day filth being dumped into my mouth or my ass or even your skin touching me because you can get scabies now from those types of dirty motherfuckers, and I don't want that shit. I don't want that hot, musty, white ass to um, try and penetrate me and I can smell your fucking a-hole. And I'm on the other side of the body. Bitch, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And that's a problem, too. These pussy-ass motherfuckers don't... A lot of men don't even rinse their asshole. Now that I know that that's been a problem, you won't even wash your balls or your armpits or anything else like that. Like, now, and then you're raising your kids like that. Now you're breeding another generation of nasty motherfuckers. Okay. That's just horrible. It's wrong teaching. I just can't believe they're so bold about it. Like, they're so out loud and proud. Like, yes, we don't shower. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's the weirdest thing to even stand in unity on. It's like, girl. <laughs> like, I expect y'all white people to stand together. Stand in unity up there. They're so proud about it. It's the weirdest thing. I just like, what? <laughs> it's dirty and it's nasty. <laughs> You heard the rock. The rock. The rock came out. The rock came out. And made a statement. He's like, just for the record, I take showers three times a day. <laughs> he better. Okay. okay. With all that muscle. He better. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Uh huh. I, I hope it's good. Yeah. Period. He can get it though. The rock. Ooh. But he gave me small dick energy. No shade. It's a horrible way to live. And plus, y'all have unlimited resources. Like, y'all got five, ten million dollar homes with two showers and all this. You're not even using them. <laughs> You're wasting your fucking money, bitch. <laughs> the fuck? They got four showers in a pool and don't get in, in any of it. You know, at least, I mean, I had a white person many years say, I just use the pool to bathe and I'm like, the chlorine will clean it. I said, what the hell are you talking about, bitch? The chlorine will clean it. Girl, y'all some nasty motherfuckers. I am over this life, child. Y'all can keep it, honey. Y'all stole my ancestors and brought us over here for this? <laughs> Girl, please. <laughs> Send us. Go ahead. I'll go back home. I feel like the stupidest people get rich. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, why, Lord? I don't understand. It. Why? They think it's part of that like clean, vegan life. I used to work with this girl in Atlanta 
who used to never use deodorant. She said it was nasty. She had these fucking hairs growing out of her that I thought were like mold spores. And then she would tell me that she would use her earwax. She didn't believe in cleaning her ears. And the only time she did was like once every couple of months to where she could make her own candles Ew. from her own earwax. I said, girl, you're just a man. That's just an excuse to be a nasty ass cracker, honey. <laughs> Send that shit on somewhere else, honey. Oh. I'm half white, and I'm so glad I never claimed the other side of me, because I'm like, girl, I cannot get with these white people, because, girl, y'all will not <laughs> make me feel some type of way about myself, girl. Oh, I take... Okay. You better ask my husband, child. I take about three showers a day, girl. I don't play. <clears throat> it's I mean, hot I... down here in Florida. If I get a sweat we're dropping down the crack of my ass, I'm in the goddamn shower. I didn't really realize how how dirty white people some some white people were not all but some until you know I saw that show what's it called Hoarders. Oh, mm. oh. man, I can't watch that show. That gives me like anxiety. I, I can't sleep. It. I love I'll it. Like, I have like I have like a panic attack. I will literally bleach my home after I've already bleached it just by watching that show. Yes, that's a good show to clean to. Like, yo, this lady had cats in her refrigerator. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah she did. She had cats in the refrigerator. I mean, there were dead cats. Yes. Yeah. It's what, horrible. Like, the bitch had what? Yeah. Where did she put her food? On the counter. Girl, I knew this old white lady. She was also a hoarder, and she had a dead bird in a Ziploc bag in her freezer, like. I don't think people need to realize like germs, like microbes, they are living things. They <laughs> grow and they grow and they grow until they consume your dirty ass bitch. And next thing you know, you're talking to Jesus. What happened, girl? You're dead because of your own fucking failures, bitch. Just to sweep your fucking kitchen. I saw this one where a rat and a roach were chasing a fucking cat in this lady's home and her grandson was trying to help her filter through all the trash in her fucking home. That's disgusting. That's the, I'm surprised. First of all, let's talk about them and let's talk about these fat bitches on 600 pound life. How can the human body even go through these experiences without dying first? Like, I just don't get it, honey. These people are a mess. I'm so There's happy no you mentioned that. People. I'm so happy you mentioned that show because that's where I was going. I was going to be like, I, like they'd be announcing their death. Like one of them just died like two days ago. Oh wow! Yeah, she was thirty years old. She was on the she was on the new season last year. I forgot her name. I was like, are we really surprised? What? Right. You know what sucked? Um, I heard the story. A cat was telling me about the story. This lady lost all the weight, did the program, and then immediately after her accomplishment, she died of a heart attack. And it's just like, girl, like I don't. First of all, how can you consume that much food? I saw a bitch who had 10 large pizzas, then she was frying chicken in her fucking bed. And I'm like, girl, what the <laughs> fuck? What? And then these bitches actually have husbands and wives who will literally drag them to the backyard to shower them in the goddamn yard hose. That is real love, girl. Shout out to y'all because, girl, some of us can't find a man that that's damn loyal, girl. And plus all of these enablers... That husband's cussing you out on the camera in the confessional while he's bringing you 10 different chickens from 10 different places that sell chicken. It's disgusting. It's deplorable. That just made me depressed. How a 600 pound bitch got a man and I can't get a good morning text? <laughs> what the fuck am I doing wrong? It's the disability check. Don't they get like disability? Aren't they the disabled? It makes me wonder how can you afford this food because even the disability check ain't that much. Um, okay. And you can't use food stamps at hot places. So how are you affording all of this? KFC is not cheap, bitch. <laughs> depending on where you at, wait. Depending on where where you at in Cali, the, the they they take food stamps out here. Oh, at the restaurants. At some of them, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Oh wow, that's new. Yeah, down here you can't even get a hot sub at Publix child with a goddamn ABT card. You got to get a cold sub. Yeah, food stamps don't give you cold food in New York. I mean, hot food in New York. You can't get hot food. The only time they did allow that was at the height of the pandemic. That was the only time they allowed that. 
But other in the hurricane season, when it was really bad down here, they let us do that because bitches didn't have fucking microwaves and shit working, you know. But uh, it's horrible, and they're in the, and plus most of their spouses are in shape too. You notice that? Which again oh. makes no sense to me. Yeah. Do it's they horrible. have sex? I hope not. <laughs> I don't even want a hand job, girl. Go ahead and put those sausage fingers away, girl. I don't even want those. Like, get that away from me. There was one bitch who killed her baby because she rolled over him while she was sleeping, and she didn't know Shut that he was until, until three days later. Three. Yeah, and another bitch found out she was pregnant while she was giving labor. She just thought it was stomach pains from the food she had ate. I said, like, oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I said, y'all are a mess. And is this to help people or exploit them? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know Hopefully what story is to help people. I don't know what story is more ridiculous. The fact that she laid on her baby or the fact that she didn't know she was having a baby. I don't know. Oh, child. <laughs> it's the laid on the baby. Because y'all remember that show, um, I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant? I remember. I never watched it, though. I do remember that show, though. It was actually, it was all about, like, females who didn't know that they were pregnant until they were, like, giving birth. I've heard things like that. Even the non-fat people that were giving birth, they didn't know that they were mm-hmm. pregnant. I'm just like, girl, you don't know you got a person growing in your fucking body, honey? Like, yeah, how do you not like, know? It's, it's like there... medical conditions and, and and shit where, like, they they just don't know. It must be like that medical condition with the people who who don't feel pain. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. I forgot the term for it, but there I've are people who, who don't feel pain at all. And I'm just like, girl, I wish I was a bottom. I would love that feature because I'm tired of feeling them dicks. <laughs> that first 10 <laughs> minutes of sex hurts, bitch. <clears throat> but okay. after then, you can That's pop it right in, honey, and take me. <laughs> See that's the key. But as soon as I get off here, I'm about to binge. I'm about to binge watch fucking um, hoarders. I love that show. All I want to do is throw stuff at the TV at those nasty ass bitches, <laughs> and I feel bad for their animals too. I'm like, girl, I know your animals. Like, bitch, I know it. I eat my own turds, but bitch, you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them dogs, just like homeless people who drag their dog with them everywhere. Like, girl, don't you realize the dog could do better without you? Okay. Hmm. I'm a hoarder too, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a hoarder like that. In other words, like I'm a hoarder of like old documents or old photos. You know what I mean? But it's not. My house is not filled with it. You know what I mean? You don't have 800 year old newspapers piled up in your living room, child. You know, no. or shit that you bought at the thrift store when you were a little kid. <laughs> no, but I do have a shirt. I do have a tank top from a 2007 that I still have. I mean, that's fine. You don't have like, you know how people, I knew this one Haitian dude down here who he has three fridges in his damn house, three dinette sets in his house. I'm like, girl, that's hoarder behavior. The whole point of new furniture is to get rid of the old furniture. They just don't like to get rid of shit. How do you guys feel about collecting your friends? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, let me explain. Let me, yeah, let me explain. <laughs> There's this YouTuber. He's like an old guy. And in back of him, he has like seven to eight urns. I think he's really popular on here, too. I forgot his name. Not Timothy Blaine. Uh, is that his name? I doubt it. I was just, that's the only older YouTuber that I yes. know. Yes. Does, does he wear glasses? He wears glasses and he has like all these statues in his house. Yes, I think that's him. Look, look, look behind him sometimes. He'd be having mad urns. Oh wow! Did his friends like? Is that like? Was that like in their will to leave themselves? I don't know if they're his friends or his family. That's interesting to me. I'm like, damn, how many how many people died a year? Like, what is going on? Well, he had a tragic life too. He grew up in the height of the AIDS epidemic and shit like that. So I'm quite sure that that is uh, probably people that had you know back then those people were disowned by their families and shit. If we refer to polls. They had nowhere to, you know, their family probably didn't want them around, so he probably kept them. I mean... <sighs> well, well, that if makes sense. It's, okay. If it's in that way, I can understand it, but if it's on some, like, creepy-ass shit, then I don't know, girl. 
I mean, I, I, I understand it, but I don't because once you're gone, you're gone. And I love my friends dearly, but honey, I'm not storing you. I'm going to throw you in the ocean, plant you in a tree, you know. I mean, yeah, set me free. Don't put me on your counter, bitch. Because <laughs> I'm going to come <laughs> back out of that dust and whoop your ass. Like, don't keep me around. Let me go, girl. That's the whole point. <laughs> if you paid for the <laughs> urn, I understand. Yeah. Wash that urn out and turn it into a candy dish. <laughs> Put your coffee in there. Put your flour and sugar in that bitch. But dump me out. Throw me over into the river, girl. Don't hold me hostage in this house. Yeah, I used to feel so bad because I left my sister's ashes. Oh lord, I left them underneath the bathroom sink where um, I used to I used to live at, and I forgot I forgot about it, you know, because we were moving out. You know, a lot happens when you move. Right. Right. And I completely forgot her ashes. Never, never recovered them. Remember again? Oh wow! Yeah, but you learn. I let it go. You know what I mean. I'm like, shit, girl. I was gonna, I was gonna put you in the ocean anyway, girl. So. You know. Do you think? Because I'm respectful. Like, if I would have been the moving person, <clears throat> I would have either tried to contact you or did the respectful thing and just like release the ashes. I don't know what they did because, to be honest with you, like. First of all, I didn't even know how it worked. I thought they, the funeral people were going to give us like a, um, a urn, anyways. But she mm -hmm. came in a cardboard, a cardboard box in a can. Yeah, they make you, they make you buy your own. Yeah. So they I don't. Maybe, maybe the person probably thought it was like dust or something. Like they, they, they probably didn't even know it was like a remains in there. So. Cause oh. I didn't get the, I didn't get the urn yet. I literally like, cause I didn't want to deal with her death, so I literally just put it in this where I couldn't see it. You know. Right. And I. Literally forgot it was even there. So, <laughs> oh wow! Tragic. I'm sorry though. Like I'm really am sorry about that. Oh, it's fine. My mom was over me for about three years. So. Oh, I, I ain't gonna lie. I would be too. Like, what the hell? First of all, why the hell did you have my sister, my daughter, underneath that goddamn sink in the bathroom? Right in the first. Whoa. <laughs> That would have been the main question, but I couldn't, know, pull her, I couldn't pull her anywhere else. I would see it. So I was like, let me, because I never go underneath the bathroom sink. Never. There's nothing really. I, you know. I had a close friend of mine. Um, actually, his guardian at the time he passed away, and he gave us uh, our my brother, uh, our friends' uh, ashes. They put it in some like moonstone. I thought it was really a cute idea. To where they separated his ashes amongst his closest friends, and they infused some of his ashes into these like stones. And so my brother has it like posted up in his living room on his little mantle. It's real. So I said, "Girl, I'm a fabulous ass bitch. So if I go burn my ass, put me, put different pieces of me into jewelry and gold, so y'all hoes can carry me everywhere you go, bitch. Hello. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'm a rich bitch by then. 24 karat gold rings and necklaces. Yes, uh, there has to be a way for us to start like a group where we just like send each other money. Like to accumulate, like everybody gets rich. You know what I mean? Like, like what, what's it called? What is that called when people do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, like like a pyramid scheme. Like, every, <laughs> like 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 every month, like ten people will send one person a hundred dollars, and then in the next, you know, then the next person gets it, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. I heard about that um, at my life when I used to work for the school district. Those bitches used to have like a pot, like ten of us would get together each pay period. We each would put in like a fifty to a hundred dollars. One person would be selected to get all that pot, and then the pot would just keep going like that. Yeah, like I like shit. Like, they built a wealth. Like, the fuck? Yeah. You have to find consistent people because, child, right. we still run into a bunch of shit with people. Oh, girl, my check's a little short this week, girl. I can't put in. Or it's like, okay, girl, you broke, bitch. <laughs> we understand, though, girl. <laughs> I understand. That broke bitch was me, by the way. <laughs> I told them girls, I can't do it this week, honey, because mama's light bill is on a payment arrangement, honey. <laughs> Go ahead and get that out of the red. Yeah. Oh. I had to call off a few times last week. Look. <laughs> Where's the getting all these text messages? Bitch, where you at? The pod is here. To 
So put it in the pot. Now we used to do that though. We also do play lot group lottery too. Used to love that we all would put in like twenty dollars a piece and we would all just buy a bunch of lottery tickets. We never won shit, but it increases your chances of winning something. What do you guys think about people still having cable? Like, do y'all still have cable? I have a nigger rig old Xfinity box that I get free cable on. Amen. Now I just pay for Wi Fi. Yeah, I don't see it for cable. But shout out to Smart TVs. Just because it's certain shit I like to watch live. And I don't want to wait for it. I just, between Netflix and all the, the streaming services, I done got so bathed in grandiose fucking ideals. I don't do commercials no more. Commercials are for the poor. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> commercials are for the poor, honey. So I don't, I don't get down with commercials. But I do still, like certain things I do still watch. But with smart TV creations, you can easily just put up your goddamn streaming service and call it a day. Yes, like I have not had cable since 2013. Oh wow! Yeah, I said goodbye. And with Roku and all these different places, you really don't need it. You can literally get reality TV or the things that only come on cable on those devices as well. So right. I love broken. This is a website brokensilence.net and then brokensilence.one for the movies. Period. Free. All free. HD. And uh, soaptv.com. This Soap. Is a good one. SoapTV.com. Let me, let me put that in right now. <laughs> so, yeah, my brother just turned me on to that, honey. We're watching all the new shit, and it's in good, clear view, too. None of that old bootleg ass, you know, shit seeing bit bitches walking around in a damn movie theater. But it didn't come up for me. So you're going to have to send me the link when we get off here because it's not coming up. It says by the do- dan.com, by domain, SoapTV.com. SoapTV, okay. If I didn't say it right, I'll ask my brother again just to be double checked. But he did tell me it was Soap TV. Yeah, I like shit like that. There was also a website called CouchTV.com one time, a long time ago. Hmm. Are you guys there? The Zeus? The Zeus Network? I'm not. And that's the thing, too. Like, all of these people, even with the streaming, sir, luckily I have friends. The only thing I pay for is Amazon Prime. Everything else is through friends as logins. Thank you, Jesus. It, it'll add up to what it will you what it costs now to have cable. Right. They want you to buy Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, Netflix, Prime, Hulu. I'm like, girl, I ain't got all the money in the world for this shit. Okay. okay. Child, and ain't shit on Paramount Plus. No shade. Okay, it just came out too, so I highly doubt there's anything on there to begin with. But yeah, there's only one good show. I think it's Paramount. What's that? The the one with Jennifer Anderson. Oh no, I I I canceled that. That's a girl. I'll see y'all next. I'm surprised she's good in anything, to be honest. Yeah, it's a it's like a it's behind the scenes of like a daytime talk show. It was really good. I watched it. it was good. Okay. Remember that daytime show that Jennifer Williams what was it Jennifer Williams played in? They only had one season, but it was really good. I think we're talking about the same thing, Jennifer Aniston. Though was it Jennifer Aniston? Is she white? No, she's black. Oh no, 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 no. Vanessa Williams was it Vanessa? Yeah, Vanessa Williams. Because it was kind of like based off the view, right? Like, kind of, sort of. Yes, I love that show. I thought that was a movie, though. I thought that was a movie. It was a show, but they for some reason they canceled it. I think it was on Lifetime. I think. Mm. Was it Lifetime or VH1? Maybe VH1. I think it was VH1. It was a cute show, though. They only gave it one season. I was like, girl, but y'all gave Ugly Betty a thousand and one seasons, and that shit was trash. <laughs> I said, "Girl, that that is weird. How like some shit? Well, it's probably just because our preference, but fuck, it just doesn't seem like it doesn't compute though. Like that didn't compute with me. Um, what else? Like Seinfeld? That shit didn't compute compute with me. Like why was that shit? Seinfeld was trash. Yes, and everybody loves Raymond was trash." Oh, I like that show. I was gonna say I like. <laughs> I just no like the grandparents. Yeah, I know, and rest in peace to both of them. They both died. Yeah, they're both gone. Oh, well, I like the grandmother. She was funny as hell. 
She played in some other movies too that I really like. Oh, YB, they said your show was called Daytime Divas. That's what it was called. Okay. Yeah, people are still with us this time of day. Shout out to y'all, honey. <laughs> okay. M- mind you, um, do, uh, damn, what was I say? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Damn, I hate when that happens. <laughs> it must have not have been important. I mean, so, yeah. Well, it is 6.30 in the morning, so all of us are probably loopy as hell. Okay. No, but it has something to do with what we were just talking about. Fuck. <clears throat> the daytime talk show. I don't know, but I only have Netflix. I have Netflix, Paramount Plus, and um, what else? We got one more thing. Oh, Zeus! I have Zeus. I need to get into some of the other stuff because it sucks too. It's like, damn! If they only have one show that I'm interested in, I don't feel like paying for the subscription. Right. You know, and plus now they're making downloads even more difficult to do because I used to download shows and movies, but now it's so damn hard. They keep flagging the girl. I'm like, girl, fuck y'all. I don't want to pay for this shit. <laughs> free as me, bitch. But you know they have now, don't they have the, the deals where you can like um, get a month free? I don't know. A month? I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, I need more than a month to decide, you know, what's the team. No, I'm saying like if you only subscribe for like one one show, you could get you, you could go um get the month free, and then as soon as you're done with the show, and so, you know, so they don't charge you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I know they did that with me with P Valley, and I was so damn mad. As soon as P Valley was over, that's when they started charging me. I said, "Girl, cancel this, girl, honey. We'll wait until <laughs> y'all hoes come back out for the next season." Okay. Because <clears throat> I'm gonna get my P Valley. In. That's another good show that I feel like needs to hurry the fuck up. Yeah, that's what I do, and that's why I have like so many emails. I got so many emails because I was doing that shit a lot. I was like, boop, 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 boop. Get that free money. Start and cancel. And now Netflix is trying to do this thing where they have an algorithm searching for like people who are sharing the same account. Like, girl, don't fuck oh, my yes. shit up, bitch. Because y'all hoes. When y'all hoes first started, y'all hoes was charging bitches seven dollars. Now it's fucking damn near twenty dollars a month for your fucking streaming service. So, bitch, don't get mad because I have five relatives attached to my shit. <laughs> That's like, uh, girl, Q lets me borrow his login for uh, Netflix, but I gotta sign out every time a, a family member needs it. Oh wow! Ooh. Let's see, uh-uh. oh, he must have that one because you know there's different tiers. Netflix has different tiers now, so if it's like. Eight dollars is only for one person use, and then like yeah. you can only create one profile, and then you'll pay another tier to have multiple profiles. It's just like, girl, y'all charging the damn tiers, so that means you obviously allow people to share the account, you stupid motherfuckers. Yeah, I just need to buy my own. <sighs> oh, it's about to be seven in the morning. My bae's about to leave. I'm over it. Oh, uh, yeah, he has to go into the office today, and I'm not happy about it. I hate that. Mm. I just stay home with me. And let's cut over. That's it. Okay. Okay. Here, yeah. Cost to play with the boss. You, you gonna set him up? Okay. Y'all can't just be laid up all day, every day. Okay. Let that man go to the office. I mean, it's COVID out here. Okay, and it's Miss Delta. Okay. So <laughs> it's Miss Delta. She doesn't sure. around. Yeah. <sighs> I wonder how many Delta Airline stocks must have plummeted, girl, <laughs> after this shit. I'm like, why do they have to name it after us, bitch? Okay. <laughs> we already trashing the girls and killing everybody on this motherfucker anyway. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Do you guys think they're going to shut down the country again? They should have been did that. We wouldn't be in this mess right now. Okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. I, I don't like. I don't miss Trump as the president. I really don't. He was horrible. However, he was paying the girls. Okay, you get a Trump check. You get a Trump check. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, but I could use several different, you know, stimulus checks, girl. Like, come on through with those. <sighs> Joe Biden is Joe Biden is being dumb stingy. He's like, I don't know. Mm-mm. He's too busy trying to please his cohorts. 
all those promises he made to the black and brown people, he knows it's like, oh shit, they're going to step on me if I don't do this, but the white people ain't going to release them funds either. And purse strings are still very tight. But I find it funny that you are approving this um, what do they call that? The, for the railroads and the, the construction bill and all that shit. It's just like, what good is any of that if the people are still suffering? Yo, fuck the roads and all that shit right now. That's a, what did he say? It was a hundred billion dollar thing that he just signed, girl. You could feed half of the fucking world with that money. Right. Get that shit out of here. Fuck these roads right now. Bitch, because it ain't nothing going to happen. They gonna, <laughs> these cities and states are going to pocket that money. I'm still going to be driving through these fat ass potholes, bitch, on my way to work. Dude. So go ahead and fill our bellies. But I will say this: America does have to step our construction up. Like, have you guys seen Tokyo? Like, what? Like, it's, well, it's different. Yeah, like this three D cat now. Like, it's so yeah. realistic. It's the coolest shit ever. Well, when you have a country that has most of the world's population that lives on that side of the world, so you have the human bodies to be able to do that, and plus they teach proper education in their systems. Over here, we're very layman and very. Uh, what's the word Neanderthal like over here when it comes to our education system? Yeah, they think we're stupid. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and it's crazy when you look at us compared to the rest. Even Nigeria, have you seen their cities? They're fucking top notch. Africa has a lot. Of, that's what I hate that when they advertise Africa, it's all the poor shit. But I'm like, you don't understand. Africa is very technologically advanced, and their fucking their main cities are beautiful as fuck. Just right. like you said with Tokyo and even fucking uh, Abu Dhabi, wherever that place is over there in the Middle East, there, them bitches are coming up because they invest in their people and their people invest back into their communities. If yeah, everyone's like, making money, it's no problem to put in to go build a new fucking building. You're like, like Dubai. Poor, Dubai is beautiful. Yes. Ooh, yes. Very beautiful, but they're still strict, girl. You can't go over there and do shit. No, they, heard, they, es- they, es- they escort over there. They what? They escort over there. <clears throat> I'm surprised because they don't even let couples kiss. Women still, if you're a foreigner, you go over there, you have to follow all of their rules or they will fucking get you together. Yeah, I found, you know, I was doing some dig. I was doing some digging the other day, you know. <laughs> yes. And there's this one person on Instagram who's always like just living life, you know, God bless them. And I'm just like, but they never show where they work or what they do for a living. And mm. I, I was doing digging, and they're on this escort website, and they're always in Dubai. Ooh. Oh. Oh, God. Do I know this boy? person? No, no, I don't think you guys know this person. No. I think we do. No, I would, I would definitely just say it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't follow anybody who takes trips like that, so that's mm-hmm. cute. I was like, why is he it's always so in Dubai? Like, like you know, and mind you at the nice resorts. I'm like, okay, but where's your work? What are you doing? Like, what's happening? <laughs> well, you do know the Middle East has a wonderful history. They love to lie. They have a wonderful history of where they call boy exchanges. They love boy on boy action over there. They hate to admit it, mm-hmm. but they love that shit. There's an underground situation that they do amongst the rich and powerful where they do boy trades. It's really on some crazy ass like pedophile shit because they take a lot of underage young boys and they put them up against each other. Like if this rich person has a rich boy and whoever like wins and they're like aesthetic or whatever, that rich person ends up winning that person's boy. What? They tra- they, they, yeah, they trade off like that. It's been going on for centuries over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wrote a report on them when I was in college for my sociology class. But how do they even? How do they? How do they even get the kids? Like I'm so confused. A sex trafficking. trafficking. It's big over there. It's big over there. Okay, I never. Okay, hold on. I never understood how sex trafficking works. So like, I don't understand. Like, so you see a kid, you snatched him up, and then like, what the fuck? Like, what? They just had it over here in St. Louis. I ran a cute little story about it recently, where they had these two African dudes who were in this neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri. And they were about to snatch these kids from the goddamn um, school bus stop. And luckily, the neighbors saw and they whooped their motherfucking ass child and got their ass together. But it's big. About 500,000 kids a year go missing. Imagine where those mm-hmm. kids end up. 
But how are they tra- how are they transporting the kids? Like how is that happening? Do you know how look at Jeffrey Epstein and his sorry ass when you're rich and All you powerful, need is to find the plane. That's it. You don't even add them to the manifest. That stuff really right. happens. No, but I'm saying, okay, so you have a private, like, the kid's not going to scream. Like, how are you getting this kid on this private They're plane? drugging them. They're shooting them up with heroin. That's mainly how it's done. Drugging them. Oh, no. Yeah, it's really disgusting. What I heard was Especially that... Especially when they're, like, you guys, heard that, you guys heard that Wayfair article? You guys saw that Wayfair thing? I... Didn't hear, but I know no. they're going through some trouble, but I didn't know exactly why. It was supposedly like on the website, like if you go to buy like a dresser or something, the dresser mm. would be listed as a person who's missing, and then the dresser would be like five thousand dollars for the dresser. Oh, so really, instead of it being a dresser, it's a person, right? Oh, wow. oh, it's like black market shit, right? But only the people that were in the know that were on the search for that would know that. Would know that, right? Oh wow, that's crazy. There's many ways they've been doing this shit for years and years and years. So I'm quite sure they have a sophisticated way of doing things. Remember last year when the Black Lives Matter movement was at, at its height? There was a lot under the guise of that. There was a lot of snatching of kids, and they were finding these vans that were super suited out with soundproof fucking uh, walls and shit like that inside of these vans, undercover like cubbies where they would hide the kids and shit like that like it's gotten to the point where this is on some like crazy ass fucking shit and these poor kids and these parents that have to suffer the loss of their children not realizing what's happening to them in some godforsaken land it's really sad but i'm saying what possesses somebody to do like why do you wake up and say hey i want a child today like what <laughs> these are some sick motherfuckers some people are innate, innately evil Predators. they're just born that way it's na- and social control too. I know in was it the Philippines a couple years back there was a story written about these two brothers that were snatched from their parents when they were little. They trained them for a couple years to become soldiers in their little rebel army, and in order to test their loyalty, they took those boys back to their home and forced them to kill their parents. So they're also Ooh. snatching kids not just for sex, but they're training the boys to be soldiers in their army. But my thing is, okay, for, for the people who snatch the children for sex, what do they do when the kids get older? It's, you know that Stockholm Syndrome shit? It's embedded in them. It's they don't run after a while. They're so conditioned to do this. No, what I'm saying is they want they want kids, right? So I'm saying when this kid is now 21, what do you, like, they're not a kid anymore. Like, what for they the do? girls, I heard a story that they take them to the deserts and shoot them in the head. Once they become on, once they're not sexually satisfying anymore, they look beautiful anymore. Once they run, they drive them out, honey. They take them to the deserts or throw them in rivers and shit like that in the oceans and stuff. That's what I heard. Oh my God. Where are you hearing this shit from? This is crazy. Back when I was really into the college life, I did a bunch of research papers on um, these situations. And the things that I would just discover was so fucking nasty and deplorable. It's not, it's really horrible. The Middle East is trash with their way of thinking. Even I love the motherland of Africa, but they have a lot of fuck shit going on there too when it comes to child sex trafficking. You hear a lot of times they're snatching those kids from the schools, all that kind of shit. That Oprah Winfrey bullshit, that's exactly what was going on. Those rebels were coming in, snatching up those little girls. And they do that Mm -hmm. shit. That's why I feel bad for third world countries. That's why I be I hate America, but at the same time, child, this is one of the safest places to be, girl. Even though they're snatching our children too, but bitch, over there, there's no laws over there that really protect them like that. Right. And then when you have high-ranking individuals like we see again with Jeffrey Epstein and these judges and these political figures, that's that power and pool. That's how they're getting out of the countries. When you have the fucking a judge that has the pool at the goddamn import export shipping yard or whatever ain't nobody finna ask no questions when a powerful person like that is throwing them a hundred thousand dollars cash and bitch i have the authority to do this too a lot of these police okay. officers are in that a lot of high-ranking individuals even in the military you know that's how they used to smuggle in drugs to the u.s back in the day what makes you think they're not smuggling children but you know what i knew this was true because okay you guys know the name of that movie um it's very it was very popular um, it was about it was it was about this. It wasn't like um, but they were sex trafficking adults though. They they would get adults to like kill them and rip off their balls and 
Oh. But it would be in a strange island. Damn, what's the name of the fucking movie? You, you guys would know the movie. But I was like, this is too, I was like, it's too well done. Like, the director knew too much. Like, you know. <laughs> that was his experience, honey. Huh. They do ride-alongs, too. Like, they insert, like, people. You know how they did with the whole food and uh, the, the animal treatments and stuff? They'll send, like, a spy in there with, like, a spy camera. They have some people that will actually walk you through how these things happen. And it's really fucked up. And I'm just like, well, you watched this. You shot this on your camera. Why hasn't the authorities been contacted so these kids can be saved? I just don't. I don't know, girl. This world is... That's why I always say this is the real hell. Hell exists here on Earth. It's not you guys nice. don't. Re- you guys don't remember that movie? Hey, Shante, Elba. Anybody in the comments? Do you guys remember that movie? Like, what? Let me look, Google that shit. Was um. Sex trafficking name. Um. Was Ashley Judd in that? Oh, I don't know. That's a, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's not it's familiar. I think it's a hostel. It's a hostel. Oh, that was a that's oh. what made me not want to travel outside of this country. I think it was hostel, <laughs> right? Because girl, they were out here. You go on vacation out there to fucking Dominican Republic, girl. Next thing you know, they're harvesting your fucking organs, bitch. That's what it was, okay. hostel. Yeah, I'm good. Mm-mm. Mind you, those things is real. Like, okay, I didn't believe in the black market until I went to I went with my friend. She drove me out somewhere. Long story short, we're in the middle of the woods in this house. I walk into this motherfucking house, bitch, guns, cocaine everywhere. Okay, so oh, wow. So I'm sitting there, right, and I'm looking at her like, bitch, I will kill you. Get me the fuck out of here. But then we start playing um, PlayStation and Xbox or whatever. And I, I asked the guy, I'm just like, where are you getting all these drugs from? He's like, the black market. And I thought he was bullshit until he pulled out an envelope with filled with drugs in it that he that he gets mailed to him from the black market. Yeah, the black market is real. And but that's crazy. Like you can really buy anything you want on the black market. That's crazy. And where can we locate mm-hmm. this black market? Ooh. You said what, Rachel? Oh, Rachel trying to go to jail. She said, Where can we locate the black market? <laughs> you don't want to do that, Rachel. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was told I, I was told how to do it. You have to have a certain server that knocks out your um your IP address so that the government can't track you and all this all this stuff. It's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. Lawrence TV says hostel is real. I live in Germany and they kidnap people and take you to Poland. Okay, Lawrence, but what do they do once you get into Poland? Right. And why and why are they take me all the way to Poland? Because you know, I guess they don't want to shit where they live. I guess. I never wanted to go to Germany anyway. No shit. <laughs> that's just a European country I just don't trust. It's no shade to the Germans. It's just <laughs> ever since Hitler, I just I've been good on the Germans. Like I'm good. That's crazy to me. Like, yeah, I don't get down with it. They got some good ass sausage, but other than that, okay. <laughs> I don't even trust that. I might find some blue hair, <laughs> blue eyes, and blonde hair Hello. in that bitch. I'm dead. And so are they. Ooh. Oh. Well, I, I never understood the whole trafficking of organs, though. Like, I just thought, okay, what are you going to do with this organ? Like, I don't get it. Like, with what? You going to sell, sell it. it. To do what with it? Okay, I sell it. Now what? Okay. No. You going to sell it? You going to make like... some money off of it? Somebody somebody out there, Hello? mama need need, need some, some heart. Yeah, Hello? Liver, a kidney. And they don't want to do it through, through a regular hospital, so I'll give you 50 grand. Give me a heart. They'll have some little black market doctor put it in there, okay. and bang them. Shante said, "Don't end up in Ka- <laughs> Kazakhstan. What what happens over there, girl? What happens over there? Give me the tea, girl. Give me the tea." Mm-hmm. Isn't that the organ donation outweighs the actual um, amount of organs that are available? You know what I'm saying? So it's like it becomes a black market. 
situation. I just think it's a horrible practice and people need to get their shit together. They had a movie <laughs> about stuff like that. Total it's, recall. The world is crazy. The world is going to hell. They 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 need to blow Earth up and just start over. There was a movie um, they made. I forgot what it was called. Something Recall. And it was like in the future. I think not that one. I know what you're talking about oh, the dream shit. But it was uh-huh. one I forgot what they call it with uh, Forrest Whitaker and some that white man, Mister Judd, whatever his name is. They uh, worked for this a, re- a repo. That's what it was called, repo. And what they would do is they worked for this rich company who would lease out organs and if whoever was the had the most money they would get they would get that organ if they couldn't make their payment like a car payment or a mortgage payment they would recall that organ and by hook or crook they getting that bitch back and it's just like girl that's kind of <laughs> but fucked you can't up. reuse it you can't it's or you ain't supposed to i don't think no you're definitely not supposed to especially certain How valuable gonna... organs it's horrible. I ain't gonna put a kidney in somebody and take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You know, uh, you remember Cynthia Bailey from Real Housewives of Atlanta? Yeah. You remember her friend K- K- Kai, the guy that was always with her, like her designer? Uh huh. He had his boyfriend. I don't know if you remember that season of Housewives where he talked about it briefly. His boyfriend was a model. And he was dra- traveling through, I think, to Vegas from somewhere. I guess that's, I never drove over there. So I don't know. There's like some desolate road you have to get through to get to Vegas or something. And they ended up finding his car and him. They found him later on, but his organs were missing. Something oh, like they, that. They, I've heard about that in Vegas, that they will slip something up in your drink and honey, take out an organ or two. I don't have time for it. That's why I always travel with the things that bring peace. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And mind you, I don't. I, I I pour my own drinks. Like I don't have time for nobody else to pour my shit. And now there's this. I forget if it's a woman who made these line of like things you could put over your cups. Now they're really cute. I saw a little commercial for that a couple days ago, actually. Like, I'm drunk before I get to the club, okay? I'm good. Okay. A pre-game, I mean, ain't nobody trying to pay all that money for them damn drinks in that club. Like, you can buy a whole bottle for what one of them drinks costs. Okay. You might as well get pre-gamed at the house. And plus, if you put something in my, it better be strong, because, bitch, I, I'm, I have tolerance. If you're going to drug me, you better drug right. me good, honey, because, bitch, if I see the forest through the trees on your ass, I'm gonna wear you the fuck out. No, but there are these videos on 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 Twitter. There's a dark. There's a dark Twitter, by the way, you guys. Like dark. Like, so there's dirty Twitter for well, sex fiends, and, then and there's, there's dark Twitter. There's dark, dark, like black, dark, twisted shit on Twitter, and I report these pages all the time. And um, how did you find dark Twitter? I go through people likes. Mm. Uh, oh, you one of those hoes. Yeah, just to see. What, I'm interested to see what people like. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, that's oh, why I stop. That's why I stop liking stuff on Twitter. And then you find out what people like, and it's like <laughs> they like. Um, well, I landed on an account. It's a it's, it's a sleep account. They're like in um, Japan somewhere, either Japan or China. I don't know somewhere over there, and they're putting these people to sleep, like drugging them hard to sleep, and then they do whatever they want to them. Oh wow! And it's on Twitter, like I. Yo, know, they smack them, they spit on them, they 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 do they tie them up. It's the craziest shit. What is that called? Um GHB. They sub them some G. Okay. Uh, TTV be everywhere, child. Y'all just It's so sad though. Like like I saw this one video, the person was just like they were and mind you, the girls be in on it, right? This is how it was. This is a, this is this was the setup. They went to a restaurant, right? And the wait the waitress came up, gave the gave the guy a drink. He drank the drink and then he was knocked the fuck out. And then the other guy picked him up and took him to like a whole a private like room or whatever. And just did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. Oh my god. Wow. 
See, I'm so glad I've never been one to just be frolicking in the in the hay like that because uh uh-uh, I'm already a whore in a lot of ways. I don't have time to be forced to be a whore. <laughs> I mean, no God. But let me ask you guys, what do you think they get out of because these people even though they're sleeping, they look dead. What do you think they get out of that? Like they look like you're fucking a corpse. It's the craziest it's like thing. Necrophilia. Yes, but they're alive. It's so weird. Control. You want to feel like they're in control? So they make you lose control so you're not in control and they are. Um, That's the weirdest shit ever. I just don't That's kind of why I'm glad I've always been a girl of a, of a certain thickness, you know? Because... <laughs> God only knows if I was a hot tamale bitch, what would happen to me? I mean, I am a hot tamale. I'm just saying, like, if I was like the fantasy of fantasies. Uh, I just, I'm just glad I've always had an independence and a ferocious nature about myself because I will <laughs> back slap the life force out of a bitch. <clears throat> you will have no choice but to drug me. <laughs> <laughs> you will have no choice because when I'm done wearing your ass out, bitch, you're, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to wish, honey, because first of all, it better not be some cute trade because I may just let it happen, okay? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, but you ain't finna drug me to put me to sleep to what, what? I'm sure there's a lot of girls out in review that would wish that upon me. Let's just drug that bitch and get him to sleep and whoop his motherfucking ass. But good luck. Yeah, I have, Like I said, I have tolerance. Good. I have heavy tolerance, so a lot of things I did in my past that I'm surprised I lived through, girl, but that just let me know I got being a big girl helps with my tolerance level. I think people, we need to, we need to focus on the mental health in this world. Like, it's weird. Like, people are getting married to bridges. They're in love with the Eiffel Tower. Like, it's just weird. Shit is getting weird. They actually, in some places, you're allowed to marry dolls. <laughs> Yeah. Not well, you know what? If that makes you happy and keeps you from doing harm, go ahead, girl. Do you? We bind you, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> from doing harm against yourself and harm against others. We bind you, Nancy. <laughs> we'll take care of If that's going to keep you in your house and out of people's business, go ahead. Do Quad, no. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be happy, girl. I feel good. like <laughs> something was done to a population of people back then. That's why we have a lot. And I hate, I'm not disrespecting certain communities, but that's why we have a lot of dwarfism. That's why we have a lot of kids that are more special needs now because there's something that's been tainted in the bloodlines and the genetics of it all. There's something crippling human uh, evolution and development. And we have to figure out what that is because there's a, and a lot of that, that mental shit, these people that are getting off of beating sleeping people for crying out loud. I hate to laugh, but that is so funny to me, you know, like, (laughs) but then you get out of beating a sleeping person and hopefully they don't die in the process, but it's just like, (laughs) you know, like, cause your body has to, when you're, when you're awake, your body has a natural sense to, to, to tighten when it's about to be faced with something. So that's how it protects itself. So if you're sleeping, your body is limp and it's it's having that type of abuse. I can only imagine like what happens when you wake up and get reanimated. Like those injuries must be extremely severe. It's horrible. Mental health and these, these slow ass retarded bitches are running rampant through the streets we got to put a stop to it. But I don't. But that's what I think that this is the earth's hell. Those are the wardens of hell. Those are demons. Oh, my God. But could you imagine when you're waking up? You're like, wait, my butthole feels funny. Like, it's. That lit- happened to me before. Mm. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. What? I was I was a, when I mean I had been there and done that. I'm glad I got it all out of my system as a young bitch. Cause so you I think so, so, you, so you think somebody touched you while you were sleeping? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. One time I had this guy um, fuck me while I was sleeping. And I woke up to getting fucked. And I'm not going to lie, that shit felt good. Um, but it was a boyfriend. It wasn't like a, a stranger. It was a boyfriend. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was a whole experience. 
People do that is me. crazy to me. I was in Atlanta for my 23rd birthday. I used to live up there. And um, I was drunk as hell in a straight club. And I know my tolerance. And, you know, it was a hood club. So the solo cups, child, they didn't have the classic cups. And I just knew I was like probably four drinks into pink margaritas. And I was done for. I don't remember the whole night at all. All right, I woke up and I just <laughs> I felt like someone took advantage of me. But, you know. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at Quan when he said, "He said, how the fuck you? How the fuck you find that? <laughs> go and do likes, nigga. Go and do likes." <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, "How you see? Your ass is nosy. Don't go through my likes on Twitter." No, it's crazy because dirty Twitter is really dirty. Like that's where I'm like, "Okay, there's a dark Twitter now." Because I can only imagine how filthy that is. It's worse. Shit, it's the worst. I actually, and I hate to even say this live. Um, because it's really disgusting. I was scrolling through dirty Twitter one day and there was this account that was written in like Chinese letters and or Ch- Asian, whatever you call that shit, child. Sorry if I'm offending the community girl, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, there were these people doing things to. Hold on, who was that? I'm sorry, can what? you hear me? Yeah, doing things to what? Yeah, doing things to animals. I've seen that. You gotta report those accounts. Let me tell you. you I did. I sure did. I reported the hell out of that bitch. I said, "Girl." So then you know. So then you know. That's what I'm talking. That's the dark Twitter that I'm talking about. Well, you know, there's a sex dirty Twitter, and then there's a. I didn't know that it was a dark, dark Twitter, like for slapping bitches while they're sleeping and drugging people Mm -hmm. and stuff. But this is like just for the sex. I'm just like, hold on. How do these accounts make it through? Like, because Instagram and Facebook could ne- would never allow that kind of content. Be- and YouTube yeah. would never allow that kind of content to be posted. Twitter does need to have some reins put on them because the shit they allow to be posted is despicable. And yes. you discover the real filth of humanity in those moments. And it's like, wow. These these guys were fucking a horse. Yeah. Oh my- wait, wait. And, they, and they were jacking off the horse, too. Oh, my God. That shit is on Twitter. It's all over Twitter. Yeah, just, that's just nasty. So it, fucking it's way. like what he said. It's like you saw the Chinese letters, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It be those accounts. Chinese people. They're Ooh. disgusting. I'm so sorry. I no, mean, yeah. hey, I mean, those Chinese, I'm not talking about all Chinese, all those Chinese, particular yeah. Chinese people, they're disgusting. Like, I can't. Yeah, those are the accounts that you see the sleeping people on. I mean, you gotta should have kept scrolling. You should you would have saw some sleep people. <laughs> I was so disgusted. Let me tell you something. When I saw them stroking the horse, the horse had a heart on, honey. I'm dead. Apparently, they give them uh, like Viagra versions of whatever horses can have or whatever. Because obviously, a horse ain't getting hard for no human. So they had to have given the horse something to enhance it to make it feel that way. Cause you know horses have huge ass dicks, girl. They're the, them bitches right. will kill you. Yeah, you remember that white guy who got killed by it? He was getting fucked by the horse, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. the horse nutted in him, and he died. He died. Yeah, they said it didn't know if it was from the girth of the dick or if it was the nut that was toxic. I said, "Girl, does it matter? It's nasty as fuck. <laughs> either way, you, either way you put it, girl. These people are disgusting. Girl, that is too much." And I said he deserved it. What makes you yeah. wake up and say, I want horse dick in my ass today? Like, what are we talking about? I can't. There's actually Uh-oh. a black boy. They just charged him for that recently. Um, He was posting stuff. He was having sex with a horse. A little black boy. I said, a black boy? Girl, you giving us a bad name. Sit your ass down somewhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they for the Chinese and white people, girl. Yes, okay. Very nice. I said, wow. That must mean you can't get no play. What's I'd rather beat my dick all my life than have sex with an animal. Okay. No, people are really out there attracted to these to these things. They're attracted to animals. Like like Shantae's Elba said, um, she saw a woman marry the Eiffel Tower. Like people are just out of control. Mm. How are you gonna it's, marry the Eiffel Tower? That's happening. It's on YouTube. There's a whole video about it. Like what? Yeah. Now you can like buy stars and shit and planets and streets and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, girl, these that's this is what people want us to do is to get away from the real issues of life. So they they filter us with all of this bullshit, this crazy nonsense stuff. 
And it's just like, that's not paving the way to human evolution. That's probably why the aliens said, girl, we ain't gonna show these people shit. <laughs> these are some retarded motherfuckers. They're gonna use our technology to kill I'm themselves. Fucking dead. <laughs> You know, like, they're like crazy. Uh-oh. That's probably why they kidnap white people only because they want to study those stupid ass brains and be like, girl, what the fuck <laughs> they got really going on? Because y'all hoes are out here marrying buildings and shit. Y'all slapping people when they sleep, girl. Like, y'all got too much going on. That's why they don't kidnap black people or brown people, girl. It's only the white people that had these encounters because they're trying to study those crazy motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to understand we come in peace but we don't know now because we might have to blow you motherfuckers out of the sky girl because y'all doing too much <laughs> not the aliens are afraid I have that shit they better be afraid because I'm afraid shit <laughs> okay why be do, do you think there are aliens living amongst us but like in human form we are the aliens Oh, God. I believe in there's a uh, for years. If you notice when they do the uh, abductions, I believe that there is a hybrid race of aliens that live amongst us because of those abductions. I do believe that we are closely related to them. They are probably our ancestors. But another theory I have too is that we could potentially they could potentially be us in our ultimate evolutionary form in the future. Because if you notice, aliens, I don't think, come from space. They come from an alternate dimension. And I think that dimension is set in the future. Oh, that'd, that'd be cool if that's the case. Because mind you, they don't come to hurt. If you think about it, they could have wiped us out a long time ago. So right. I feel like, and plus, if you look at the ancient Indians, they have a close relationship with them. And they claim, and even in ancient Africa, there's a tribe over there that closely relates them to being our ancestors. So if we take all that into account, it could be right. And if you look at the way they come to Earth, I feel like they need Earth as their as its natural resource to help them in whatever world they come from. That's probably why they're so hell bent on protecting us from our own destruction. Like nuclear plants, if you ever notice that's where they pop up the most. They've actually stopped a lot of nuclear wars that have happened in our that could have potentially happened in our life, but their presence ended up making those situations null and void. So I think they need us. I think in some way we're related to them. And if anything, I think that we are designed by them. No, I don't I don't know much about aliens. When did you when did you first discover aliens were real? Um when I looked at the pyramids. No human being could have ever made those. No technology, especially primitive technology of the time, we could have never been able to accomplish those feats. Stonehenge, a lot of those other major structures, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, a lot of the seven wonders of the world could not have been created by our hands alone. And if you look at the precision of the cuts and the designs of everything, that's machinery that we never even had during that time period. So, or even if you look at the religious aspect of it all, Adam and Eden coming in a garden, to me, I look at that garden as a representation of a lab. There's a lot of things. I have a video I'm gonna be doing soon about breaking down the true thoughts and how I feel about what's going on. Just based on some research and some document docu- uh, documentaries that have been coming out in the past several years. There's a lot of breathtaking evidence that show that this could be very real. So you believe in Area 51? I believe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some bitches here on Earth already look like motherfucking aliens, girl. Or they're fucking Hello. Church, I don't know. <laughs> Hello. I believe there's, there's a, a lot. Um... Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say because uh, Area Fifty One. There's a new documentary. I love a, um, a a a documentary. There's a new one on Netflix talking about like the aliens and the U.S. government and the studies they've done and all of this stuff. I just um, finished. I gotta it the watch other day. it. But it seems to be pretty good. It's really good. I just finished it the other day. Oh, what's it the, what's it called? It's called Declassified UFOs. Declassified. Mm-hmm. And they're like going through all the alien, well, not all of it, but what and they the want to tell. The special thing about this documentary is based on facts. It's not based on some weird idea or an assumption that the other documentaries usually go into. 
This one is based on facts. We're talking about evidence that has been declassified from not just our government, but all the other governments of the world as well. Different experiences, hand r- r- things that we haven't heard of in 20, 30, 50 years because they wanted to bury, the government wanted to bury the, this evidence so people wouldn't lose their fucking shit realizing that we are not alone in this world, in this universe. Because imagine what alien presence does, what it upsets the balance of religious beliefs, it upsets the balance of power in the political atmosphere, it upsets the balance for humanity, period. Mm. And they don't want that because that means they lose control. And if we, they lose control, they lose everything. If you realize that aliens are real, would you care about your company? <laughs> Would you care? Would you care to know that these things are very real? You wouldn't care about the everyday life that society makes you worry about. Your nine to five, how you gonna pay your bills? Your kids going to school? The economy still being rocking steady? No one's gonna give a fuck anymore because now their mind is focused on some real reality type of shit instead of the shit that the world wants us to think about, which makes us stressed out and worried. There's a lot of things that go into that. But it's interesting. Get into some of that stuff, child. It's very, yeah. it's, it's a the lot. The information is out there. The information yeah. is out there. My cousin said that he that he, that um he sees aliens sometimes, but he also did smoke a lot of meth. So I'm just thinking <laughs> maybe he was fucking high as fuck. Right. But. Well, you know, ancient um, Indians, even Africans, Haitians. And a lot of other tribes around the world, when they do peyote or different drugs, or um, what's the other one they use? Uh, Oscoya, whatever it's called. Uh, mm-hmm. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Yeah. Yes, Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Those traditionally are used so they can commune with the supernatural or different things in different dimensions. Because you have to be in a certain mind frame and frequency to be able to see those things and to comprehend mm-hmm. what's happening to you. So. I wouldn't discount his, you know, understanding. It may have been meth, you know, but <laughs> you know, he may be telling the truth. Maybe. Even like they've linked Bigfoot and fairies and mermaids to all kinds of UFO situations as well. Like this world, we're not the first ones here. And that's the hu- that's the fucked up hubris of humanity is thinking that we are the first and we'll be the last. It's not the case. <laughs> there are other things out there that predate our own existence. So wait, so do you guys you guys believe in ghosts too? Like ghosts? I believe in spirits, not ghosts. I believe in spirits. Yeah, yeah. same. I what's believe the, spirits linger. I believe that spirits linger until they have found what they need to find. Ghosts are negative forces, in my opinion. I look at them as negativity. Spirits to me are just the residual energies of the physical that have left. If that makes any sense. It sounds ghost-like, but ghosts like of our haunting nature, which to me signifies a negative a negative energy. I don't really believe in that. Because yeah, people say they you know they've seen you know dead people before or spirits or whatever. It's like hmm, interesting. I have. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. I, it's uh, you have to create a whole new panel for this one, man. Right? <laughs> this is going down. This is a <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? You, what do you mean, you guys? What do you mean you've seen one? Like, what do you like? What do you mean? I have had spiritual like moments. I've seen dark figures when I was a little boy. I used to always see these dark figures, like at my window sill, with, like hooded figures. Um, mm. I never knew what they meant. They never. I never got a bad vibe from them. You know, I've talked about my trauma before. I felt like they were protecting me. You know, that's how I always felt. Um, I felt presences like you know how people get those chills and shit like I felt like shit walk by me things in the dark like I, I believe in all that I believe in Bigfoot I believe all that shit exists <laughs> okay girl as you guys started talking uh, about that you were the cast started girl y'all it's morning time and I'm looking over my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> girl, girl. I used to hate watching all saw mysteries by myself Cats I don't like too. ghost stories. Like that shit scares me out. So Quan, when did you when did you see one? You said you saw one too. I've seen them a lot. I've seen them a lot when I was a kid. Um, mm-hmm. 
Demon. And then even as an adult, when I got into like spiritual practices and stuff. But what I do you see? Like, how did how, how do they look to you? Like what do you see? It I mean they, it it comes all in, in different forms. Um like I know I've I've seen what what I believe is an angel because when I was I was once in, in this car accident. Um and literally I was on the freeway, the the car in front of me randomly slammed on their brakes. The car behind me hit me, so it was, it was like a pile up. And I just saw these like giant wings like wrap around my car. Um and like wrap around me. And like literally I was the only person that didn't have a cut, a scratch, not a pull of muscle, not a nothing on me. Everybody oh, wow. else was like off in the ambulances, and I was just like, "Okay, girl, so where's my ride so I could go home?" Oh wow, um, God is good. Like I've had stuff like that, or like I've had stuff where I've just like, where I've been in like a med, where I've been like in a meditative state, and I could like feel the presence of whether it's just like it's that frequency, sort of spirit. About. yeah. It's just the frequency. Like I like I think spirits aren't just like I feel like love is a spirit and peace mm-hmm. is a spirit. And like you can tap into all of those things. Like like everything on earth or everything in this in this plane of existence, we're all just energy. And if you can tap into other frequencies, you can really unlock what this universe is really about. Amen. That's the truth. Or you could do some acid and you can see it that way too. <laughs> <laughs> if you hey have guys, a I have to run. My ship is ending and these girls are showing up to get me the fuck up out of here because I know this Wi-Fi is going to cut off as soon as I walk out this door. Well, that's fine. We're all getting off. Um, to everybody watching, thank you guys so much for staying. Like six hours, you guys. That's fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me. This was one. We got to do this again, though, because I love this. Sorry to the replay gang. <laughs> Don't love it. Wow. Man, we talked about everything, honey. They're going to love it. Okay. This is a key. Oh, my God. All right. Good morning. Well, I was going to say good night, but good morning, you guys. <laughs> it's good morning. I'm gonna take me a nap. Less than never stress, honey. Take care, guys. Thank you. All right, I'm going to end the broadcast, you guys. I'll talk to everybody later. Bye. All right, bye. 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 Bye.